Everyone, welcome to the new episode of Critical Role. Uh, this evening, we luckily have Ashley Johnson back in as her character Pike. Unfortunately, uh, Laura, Laura Bailey will be gone for most of the game, possibly. She might come in because she's busy recording a show with Will Wheaton. It's going to be a great show, but we miss her until she shows up. Um, however, we shall see what the next chapter has in store in just a moment. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get you situated with the character backgrounds. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw. A goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ale. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse, Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. His disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. It was the kindness of a gnome cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches, <laughs> or, or accompanying Scadlin to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating, petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dorei, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways. It wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like that, her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader to be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, 
Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the females swoon. <coughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind. I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member as it's rather boring. However, one day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months I would frequent the chamber and learned of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries, and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later, I devised a ruse and managed to convince the city council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragon born, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky, and, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journeyed back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash, pressing the townspeople for answers. They learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, 
Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Singorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief while Vex kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw. A goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ill. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the wood, Welcome back. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Pike's video ready yet. I'm working on it this My week. My bad. <laughs> this week got away from me and actually got to me a little late, but we'll have it up next week, don't worry. Um, however, we are happy to have Ashley with us. Yeah. Uh, Yay! 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 Pike. Yeah, she's, she's come down from her, her BAFTA cloud, and <laughs> which was amazing. Congratulations again. Thank you, so yeah, as a heads up too, uh, if you want to do any quick announcements real fast, I think you had an announcement you want to make. It's my mom's birthday today. Yay! Yay. Hi, Hi, Happy birthday, birthday, Ashley's mom! Yay! Her name's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, birthday Nancy. Nancy. You're totally watching this right now. I think so. Is she watching? She probably is. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Um, uh, also, for those who are Hearthstone players, the new Blackrock Mountain expansion came out today, uh, in which I voice Nefarian and Ragnaros. So. Uh, my vanilla while yeah. playing self from back in the day is nerding out over that. So yeah. enjoy that. Uh, yeah. Anyone have anything else they want to announce to talk about? Are we good to start? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. It's <laughs> good. It's Mom. Oh, right. Actually, I have something. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, related, I, I, I leveled uh, my uh, undead holy priest to 64 last night on Warcraft. Oh, boy. We're just about a thousand happy Con birthday Congrats. The so there's oh, wow. There you go. Level 64. <laughs> Okay. So you're you're like just barely into Burning Crusade. Oh good yeah, good man. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I've got one too. Oh boy. Right. My brother, who also works in video games, uh, gave a talk at GDC this year, and it just went online. And not now, oh. but later, you should watch uh, Alex Jaffe. Uh, Alex Jaffe's talk on metagame balancing. It's really really fun. It's it's fabulous, and you will learn a lot. It's there you go, it's Alex Jaffe. Awesome. Look it up. Brilliant. All right, guys. So getting to the game at hand. So, a little overview for the story. Um, the party has been sent to the city of Craghammer through a friend of theirs named uh, Arcanist uh, Alora Vysorin. She's uh, a good friend of hers and a folk hero throughout the land known as Lady Kima of Vord, who's a halfling paladin of Bahamut, has gone missing. She went on a vision quest as part of a pilgrimage she's been on for the past year and sensed a dark evil brewing far beneath the city of Craghammer, disappeared into the city and hasn't been seen for weeks. So Arcanist uh, Alora asked the party, hired them essentially, to go and see her whereabouts. 
Upon getting to Craghammer, they interacted with some of the local characters, eventually found theirself uh, talking to Lord Nostock Gracefine, who owns the mines uh, and runs the mines at the very bottom of Craghammer proper. Uh, after a brief encounter with a mutated abomination of a Naga creature, they were then hired by Lord Nostock to go into the mines, find out whatever is creating these abominations, destroy whatever is the source of them, and he will pay well and also pay for each creature head that is brought to him individually. Uh, after getting into the mines, a few battles ensued with some of the local denizens, a couple of Umber Hulks uh, that were <laughs> turned into snails and uh, other interesting circumstances. <laughs> uh, the party then found what looked to be an entirely abandoned goblin city and a series of goblinoid corpses, many of which had bored holes in their skull uh, in various states of decay. Uh, they found a long bridge across an open chasm. Upon traversing it, uh, Scanlan went invisible and found what looked like a Duragar war camp, which were like ashy-skinned evil dwarves that lived deep underground. Uh, watched a dwarf get executed by what appeared to be some sort of strange alien alienoid creature that was revealed to be an illithid or a mind flayer, and being that is psychic and uh, consumes brains. Oh, the mind um, flayer. Brains. Yeah. Upon returning, the party had a plan to lead them off of an illusionary cliff that went pretty well, ended up taking out a, a significant portion of the charging army at the time. Uh, Vax here, however, got stunned in the way across by the one mind flayer, nearly fell, however, was saved by Tiberius at the last moment. Um, nearly lost their magic carpet, but was retrieved. They then, after a brief... Wait, you still have the magic carpet, right? Yeah, it we got, got, got recovered. It, it got, got recovered. It's okay. Fairly. Um, <laughs> Thanks to <the> song. <laughs> uh, after a brief discussion, uh, Keyleth and uh, Vex decided they didn't want to listen to anyone's bullshit and hijacked the magic carpet, flew down into the chasm below <laughs> and discovered behind uh, one of the underground waterfalls some sort of a... Uh, uh, a mind flayer who was cast out from the society, covered in rags, kind of a, a twisted physical form, and after a very tense discussion, seemed to befriend it under the guise of uh, mutually agreed retribution against those that are oppressive to this whole chasm area. Clarence. Clarota. Um, Clarota. <laughs> I don't think he'll take kindly to Clarence. However, <laughs> this this is where we left off the previous game. So. Um, oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> As you guys have gathered up and you finish your luxurious song to try and ease his oh, yeah. uh, torn form, he finishes <laughs> tapping his toe in spite of himself, looks about the rest of the group and says, once again, not vocally, but speaking directly into your mind through a horrifying whispered voice that you cannot even close your ears to get rid of. I think it's best we rest out of sight. And he points across the chasm to the war camp that is looming across the way. Uh, and he begins to dart off towards the abandoned goblinoid village. <laughs> I, I feel. I guess we should follow then. I guess. Yes, that's wise. I think that's a great idea. We follow. No. Nothing can go. <laughs> um, as you guys make your way in toward the goblinoid village, you can see uh, Clarota, who is genuinely hovering about a foot off the ground and kind of just coasting around in a, a very creepy way, uh, finds one tent, opens it up and looks inside. Here, here we can talk. <laughs> Darts inside. Hmm. We follow. We do follow, yes. Uh, as you're following... Oh, crap. oh god, we're dead. Why? why? <laughs> <laughs> we're just Already dead. touching his dice. We didn't. We're gonna die. Yep. <laughs> as you're following towards the center of this town, you see in the distance a small light moving back from the direction where you first saw that Duragar camp, where Grog was uh, assaulted. Oh, I don't recall that. Oh. <sighs> Look, back the way we came, there's some sort of uh, light up ahead. Um, oh, that can't be good. Stay with Clarota. Uh, I'm going to go take a look. Scan come on. I'm coming with. Okay. Both of you guys roll stealth? Yeah. Stealth? I'll stay outside the tent if somebody wants to ask him how to get a Magneto helmet in that case. <laughs> it's just a roll? Oh, I'll talk to him. Not, not great. Not great. Nine! <laughs> 29. All right. It's a number. So, uh, as you so offici officially <laughs> vanish into the ether and the surrounding darkness, uh, Scanlan, who still has that song stuck in his head from earlier, <laughs> his <laughs> slow jam is just... Un abstractedly humming to himself without realizing mm. it, calling a little bit of attention, uh, at which point you begin to hear some footsteps in the distance that come to an immediate halt. 
um, grabs Scanlon, put my hand over his mouth, and say, quiet, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's a ner- nervous habit, I'm sorry. <laughs> but with great power comes great responsibility. It's just, just, it's a gift I have to share with the world. <laughs> later, later. Okay. Save, it for, save it for the mind flow. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so with him tucked under my arm like a football, uh, start to creep further. <laughs> And try to make out, um, now there, if there's light coming from the lantern, I can see in the dim light, thanks to oh, Daddy's blood. So, uh, I'm gonna try to figure out what, what it is exactly that I'm seeing. Go make perception check. Yes. I also have low light vision. You can make perception check with disadvantage, because you're under his arm. Perception check? Ooh. Oh, nope. <laughs> Do I have any <laughs> advantage on that? No. Nope. 11. All right. <laughs> Uh, actually, directly looking in the direction of that Durgar camp earlier, you can see behind a pillar that's kind of blocking your view, it's obstructing your view of the actual camp proper, you can see some movement in the light. You hear some shuffling, what sounds like plate. Um, and you hear a, a voice just kind of muttering to itself. A familiar female gnomish voice. Hi! Mm. Hey, guys! <laughs> 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 Jeez, where have you been? Oh man, I've had quite a time. I, I, I've missed you guys terribly and, and a lot has happened. And I'm sure for you guys as well. Not uh, so much. No? I click my thing. Stanley, what the hell's going on? Don't worry, it's a friend. We'll, we'll bring her back soon. Mm. Okay, well, there's, you know, there's a mind flare here. Mm. Keep him busy. He likes slow mm. jams. Right. Right, you guys right. As you guys take a look at uh, Pike, you notice she's fully armored, but dirty. She's got sweat across her face. It looks like she may have had a couple of scuffles in the way through here. And uh, it's kind of a wild look to her eyes. Oh my uh, god. But gen- genuinely relieved to see you. Um, Pike, you've managed to come down here through the front of the mines, which the path for the most part been clear. You've followed what details you can after asking around and discovering that the rest of your party had ventured below without you. Um, you've followed the tracks best you can and are glad that you at least chose the right path and ran into them before you ran into something far more dangerous. Um, what you were inspecting was this campsite that appeared to have been abandoned. Um, what caught your eye was against the stone wall right above the, s- the ring of stones that formed the fire itself. There is a giant symbol carved into the stone that is a protective sigil of Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon, which is a religious symbol of protection used in different divine rituals. Yes, we were looking at that, we couldn't make heads or tails of it. Have you ever seen that before? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make a religion check. Are you sure? <laughs> Think about it, just for a moment longer. <laughs> well, give me, actually, let me rethink on this. I think maybe, uh... So wait, are we all reunited? Oh, it's a natural twin! <laughs> oh, welcome back, Pike! Yes. Your first roll? <laughs> are we all reunited? You just that? forgot. Yes. Just forgot. I yes. just, you know what? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it... You you clutch your holy symbol uh, instinctually mm-hmm. as you reach up and kind of run your fingers along the stonework, kind of tracing the carving across the stone. Mm-hmm. As you do, your eyes close and you feel the the warmth of Saren Ray's presence fill your mind for a second. And for a split mm-hmm. moment, you can see uh, a well-armored, very driven female halfling with hair pulled back into tight brown braids, uh, a kind of dark green cloak thrown over one shoulder who is currently carving that symbol into the stone. Uh, you're seeing Lady Kima of Ward as the one who left the symbol uh, to protect her campsite as she laid up camp here. You don't know how long ago this transpired, but this was definitely left by her in this tunnel. What is it? Um, <laughs> it was left by a... Uh a woman. Lady Kima, the one we're trying to find. Lady, yes, Lady Kima. How did you know that? I, she, me and Pike are like... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's so great to see you. It's you really look fantastic, by I the way. I don't feel fantastic. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> Give me a hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> Ooh, you smell a little. <laughs> I like it, though. It's, it's it works. Somehow it works on you. <laughs> we're, we're in a, a, a very complicated situation. A lot has happened to us. Uh, we uh, found uh, sort of a war camp down here, and there is um, sort of a, uh, I don't know, a being, I don't know what to call it. He's got a little of this going on, and he um, speaks and lashes out through his mind. We fought uh, a huge force down here, and then we ended up falling down into a cavern, and then Keyleth and my sister 
found another one. What are they called? They're called illithids. Illithids. Yes, yes. And and uh, we found a rogue one, and we may team up with him or her to go back and get revenge and maybe kick some ass in the camp. This just happened. He seems extremely dangerous. However, the forces we faced in the other illithid seem maybe worse. So that's where so we're. So welcome at. back. Great. Come, Sounds let's like rejoin our time. friends, shall we? Okay, let's let's go kick some ass. Okay. <clears throat> so we, we trot back over to the uh, gob- dead goblin village. All right, you make your way back to the tent that was originally scattered out. The rest of the party is there waiting as uh, Korota is awkwardly sitting in the far end, just kind of looking out as all of you slowly approach and enter the tent. Not speaking, just reactionary and keeping a watch on all of you. I turn to Korota and I'm like, ooh, that's our friend Pike. She's a good ally. <laughs> Hello, Pike! <coughs> Hello, everybody. <gasps> Boo! Hello! Hi! Uh, sometimes you, we hug where as allies. Corrupta. Where have you been? Well, I, I... I had quite a time. I, when we were up on the... Um, on the tower, I, I, I noticed something and I, I... I felt I, I had to leave because I started to have a vision. Ooh. Oh, those are fun. And I feel like I should talk to you guys about this later, just mm. because. It's I, personal. What is your name? I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm Pike. It's very nice to meet you. Okay, you get a better look as you approach this entity. Uh, see? It, you, you see what looks like a very tall, thin, gaunt-looking humanoid with a hood over the head. As you approach, you get a better look at the facial features. Smooth, kind of dull, bluish-purple skin, uh, these sunken creepy yellowish green eyes and instead of where a mouth or nose would be you see four kind of slightly twitching tentacles barely obscuring what looks like a round lamprey like toothed maw pike this is clarota we've just met can i shake his hand you read do you want to reach your hand out yes (laughs) there is no physical response the hand is not extended but you hear in the middle of your mind at full volume a creepy whispered voice go, Are you to be one of our allies as well? Yes, of course. Very well. She may stay. Thank you very much, Clara. I take my yes. hand and scratch back of my head. <laughs> 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 and then I, um, I, I take I Pike and I kind of mm. pull her out of the tent really quick. Mm. And I'm mm. like, Girl talk. Okay, he's like a mind flayer, and we found him in a hole under a waterfall. But he's cool, but he <coughs> wants vengeance. Is that the thing is covering so he can't be... He's like outcast. Yeah. Okay. But um, he's going to help us fight all of his <coughs> like tribe who um, hates us. Clarosa. Well, cool. Okay, Wait, do now we know for sure he's helping us? Yes. Um, yeah. Can you sure. help yeah. us understand yeah. Yeah. your kind, your history how you've come to be here and who this individual is that is fucking with your shit. (laughs) (laughs) Proverbial statement, I like that. At which point, Clorota's eyes narrow and you can feel just the general mood and energy at the inside of the tent grows dark. It grows mildly uh, tense and suddenly you feel this, this, this presence of voice once again fill your mind as Clorota says, Seven years since I discovered my curse. My form was struck with the brand of the arcane. And these fouled arts proved difficult to conceal. My brethren could sense my impurity, my deviation, and cast me out. I was severed from the elder brain and chased on threat of death should I return. I wandered these tunnels in squalor, feeding on what paltry filth I could ensnare, and fleeing from the ones I could not face alone. In my wandering, I discovered a Duragar stronghold with a magma pool and it proved to be a decent source of sustenance for 
sometime. Picking off the occasional straggler. Suddenly, a great battle took place. And it appeared something had sieged the stronghold. Reading the surface thoughts of the deep dwarfs I encountered in the following weeks, I found a shift of power. Whatever had taken this hold had now demanded fealty of them. And they accepted when faced with annihilation. This entity that took the Durgar by force they called Kavar. I caught no sight of it. But the fear I could sense from within these dwarves was so primal, so great, that I knew to keep a distance to be safe. Not but four months ago, one of my estranged people was captured by these ash skins and brought within the obsidian walls for what I assumed was interrogation. Long after, the bulk of the Doragar people marched back through the long, deep tunnels that led to my people's colony and attacked. Strangely, before much bloodshed could occur, which I only assumed was the next step in this onslaught, the fighting stopped, and the colony allowed the ash skins to waltz directly into the temple, unharmed, unchallenged, where our elder brain resides. It wasn't until after I discovered whomever this Kavan is, they themselves infiltrated the temple and somehow took the Elder Brain under their own control. I watched as my people had their will robbed of them. And they took the will of all the others that lived and breathed in these tunnels. Now, a terrible army is forged of both factions, and they walk under the banner of this Kavar. Since this, I fled back to the higher tunnels and scrounged for materials so I could shield myself from the iron grip influence of the now enslaved Elder Brain. It took me weeks, but I am confident I am safe from its influence, for now. Is that, is that the thing that you wear upon your head? As it pulls the hood back, you see once again this kind of haphazard metallic cluster of, of patches of metal and iron, this dull kind of blue metallic glow that you can only now see once he's sitting in near pitch darkness, as he reaches up and runs his finger along it. Yeah. This, this I feel can protect me, but I think, I think there are a way to change the tides of this circumstance. I, I feel, I feel that if I could somehow free my people from the influence of Kavarn, release its hold on our hive mind, my people would allow me to rejoin the colony to be one again with my family, my brethren. I have a few questions, is that all right? Yes. You and your brethren, without this, do you think as one? We think as individuals, but the hive mind connects us all. The hive mind gives us knowledge, history, Direction. It is the source of our family. So, if one individual of your family sees something, the entire hive sees the same, is that correct? 
Oh dear, that's no good. <laughs> and you mentioned the arcane being uh, a stigma upon you. At which point it turns its gaze away and kind of slinks down into its form slightly. What do your brethren uh, put their faith in, if not the arcane? Put the faith in the arts of the mind. Mm. Both understanding, uh, manipulating, controlling, and devouring. Karota, <laughs> we have already allied ourselves with you, as we have already agreed. Then you will help me free my people to and be family again, to as belong. As we, as, we, as we said, yes. <laughs> but uh, the thing you wear on your head, it would make us all the more uh, equipped to take on this task uh, as against such powerful mind creatures as, such as yourself. I, I know my way around a, a couple of arcane things, but nothing of the mind control sorts. And if someone like me to be influenced, it would be very bad for our group. Yeah. Even yourself, perhaps. I would, it would do well for at least maybe show us how you built it and yeah, you I'll get what I'm getting at, right? I would, I would like friends. a steel beanie as well. Basically, what? where do we get one of those? <laughs> <laughs> it would take weeks to build another. Weeks. I would like to take a look at it, if possible, and see if it makes sense. I'm a builder. Maybe we can figure take out it. something a little bit more, you know, jerry-rigged and If we were all design, hidden, I don't if we were all hidden, we would have a distinct advantage. I have a very large bronze pot in the bag of holding. Could I wear that on me noggin? If you like. It oh. It gives you a look in response. It says, This protects me from the influence of the hive mind. My pre-existing connection. Hmm. We, sh we don't need to Could yeah. we be hidden from them? We Would there be a way to, to cloak ourselves from their understanding? Mm. Protect our minds. hidden from the other. Uh, sight is the mind. Sight. Oh. Uh, the elder brain is a collection of the once living mind layers of my people. Mm. I have one more question, and we have allied ourselves to you. That's true, but I'm curious to know. Uh, hopefully, our goals intertwine, and we want the same thing, but once that is achieved, and it will be. What happens then for the Illithid? Do you return to your home below? Do you, your people harbor any ambition to move upward into Craghammer? He kind of looks to the side and says, mm. Our ambition is to pursue the continuation of our knowledge seeking. We have no interest in the surface. We only wish to spread our dominion here below. Expand our great city of Yogvoil. I'm sorry, what was the Yog Yog that name? Yogvoil. 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 Sounds like a lovely town. Yogvoil. It's beautiful. I, I feel that we could come to an arrangement. I do as well. We would require of you, at the very least, safe passage once we have helped you reunite with your people, for ourselves and for a friend of ours who's lost in the darkness, who we are here to retrieve. <coughs> for this deed of freeing my people from this Insidious presence that is Kavarn. Freeing all of our people. And I believe this could be arranged. Scanlan, does he speak true? Uh, <laughs> let's find out. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just see if I can detect any lies. And Go ahead and make an insight check. What am I just adding to this? Insight. Oh. 13. Okay. <laughs> Wait. I'm not an insight person. Oh, can I? Oh. 
Was she over here? Yeah. What, did, what okay. are you doing? She's rolled He's twice. Assist. Assisting, assisting? <laughs> <laughs> All of your twenties. Um, Slave for the assist, unfortunately, because he's already rolled. Yep. But can she um, um, suss him out? Best you can tell those who are looking into it. No, um, he seems to be speaking from a point of desperation and intent, as he has no other option. And he is genuinely, you can see it in the way he talks and the way he speaks about his family. He's a little crazy. The isolation has put him to a point where he wants to return to his people and will do whatever it takes to get back with them. However, he also seems to be, in a weird way that you can read, appreciative that you're willing to help, and seems to be, on his part, genuine. Good. As a note, uh, music's not playing. I don't know if there's a reason for that. Did they say? Did uh, he say that his eyes, the flayer's eyes, are what put people in trance, or their minds? Yeah, the eyes, the eyes. That's how so they if get we you. wear helmets, it's not going to help them. No, the helmet is, is what right? separates yeah, him from his nice. hive mind. It wouldn't yeah. help well, us at all. I still wear the big bronze pot on my head. You put the pot on your head. It's, it's on clunky. My whole vent. Yeah, you cannot <laughs> see with the pot on your no, head. No, but I'm protected from the flames. Can you bore, can you bore two like <laughs> ghost holes right, in it? Like, like, I don't oh. need it. I have incredible warriors. Do their do their powers work with reflection? No, they fall off the cliff. Very light. But if we approach, if we approach them from with using a reflective surface to, to view them, can they peer into our minds through a reflected surface? If they know you're there, you're in sight. They can read into you. Oh, okay. so it's you mine. Are yeah, they can read our minds. They don't if have to. If you are push. unknown to them, if you are hidden, hmm. they cannot sense you. Okay. But if they know you are there, they can peer. Is there any way to be hidden for us? Be hidden from sight. Be hidden from knowledge. Be hidden from them. Mm. Uh, Hide. Hide. Clarence. Oh, uh, sorry. Clarota. How about Clay? Um, I don't think he'd like that. Clarota. Clarota. Sorry, Clarota. Um, I, I just have one quick question. Why would you want to rejoin your colony after they've banished you? Why it's not leave? I have nowhere to go. They are my essence, my connection. I long to return. I, it is the way of my people. I understand this curse I hold. I spite myself. I look upon this disease and spit mud. Perhaps with this deed, they can overlook it. You're not diseased, you're special. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, Question, she's Corrupt. precious. No, nothing of my culture. You presume Don't to match. I think we do understand your desires, though. And we can align ours with yours. Yep. So let us speak of specifics, Clarota. Strategy. Strategy. Uh, number one, that assortment of uh, of dwarves and uh, and some of your friends and ogres over there on the other side of the chasm, is that something that we need to face headlong, or can we maybe surpass them finding trying to find uh, Kavarn or this temple that you speak of? We may. If you wish, a stronghold is far below. The magma leads the way. However, if I know what I've seen, their general resides in that camp. Hmm. I know no way within the stronghold without the front of their army. Hmm. Perhaps the general can be Prize for information. Mm. You bring him to me. Bring him to you. You won't be accompanying us on any <coughs> adventure, or I will be coming. Um, but we have to fetch him. And his uh, the general is in that uh, that that where you were. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right. So I we have to go over. <coughs> yeah. 
Okay. Wait, did you say something about a temple, or did I completely misunderstand? Uh, there is a temple in our city. Yes. And uh, where my people reside, that is where the Elder Brain sits. Well, right now we're we have to get there eventually, but first step is this smaller force across the chasm. <laughs> yes, we gotta put the beat down. <laughs> now, well yes, said, Croc. Uh, um, and you said there was a big army front guarding this general? Of Duragar? Well, the general's no, right, right across the go. Right across the chasm. Oh, he's just right across the way? The, the army is there. Yeah. The bulk of their army currently is divided between that oh. and the stronghold below. Percy shot this them. one, I think. Yes, I did. Yes, I think did. it's important to point out that this, your kin, this general, is aware of at least three of us, of my dragonborn friend and uh, the singer over here and myself. Mm. <laughs> I don't think he knows about me. Mm. No, he's not going to oh, Just us, then. Uh, yes, uh, I don't uh, even know if he saw me. But they saw my funny cards. That's true. <laughs> it could be just me, then. <clears throat> um... Oh, I cast press digitation on Pike and clean her up, real quick. <coughs> you look lovely. <laughs> How do you think she was all dirty. your kin will I react to that? What will their response Sorry. be if they know that outsiders have come? If they've seen just me at this moment, plus a few illusions? They will be prepared. So you must find another way in. You must think how. Oh. To not be seen. Think. <laughs> Don't worry, Croc. You will hear figure it out. You've <laughs> never, ever in your life, ever heard someone else chuckle inside your brain. <laughs> but you hear within the center of yours. <laughs> Think. Yes. Oh, <laughs> echoes in the pot. <laughs> 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 and I start laughing to myself. <laughs> And can I assume that you would have already given us any advice by now if you knew a way? Are we stuck with our own resources? I've only watched from a distance. Me getting too close was too dangerous. I only read surface thoughts. If I would seen, it would be nothing. I would be destroyed. So. No back doors, no secret entrances that you know of into the camp anywhere near this general. Fuck. <laughs> What's in the bottom of the crevasse? It's water and magma. Yeah, can we pick up the little Loch Ness monster and throw it at him or something? <clears throat> oh yes, down below uh, in the waters, our, f our allies Vex and uh, somebody uh, <laughs> <laughs> found some. Uh, saw some creatures under the water snatching uh, snatching <laughs> bodies as they fell. Kiva. Yes. yes! Yes, I forgot who went. Her Pike. Majesty Kaelith. Pike's Hi. beauty Hi. distracted me. You shouldn't have cleaned her up so nice. I'm sorry. Wait. Wait, where, where, Anyway, where there were some we creatures down below in the waters. Are those anything that we could use, or should we just avoid them? You see it like actually hisses for a second as oh. soon as you mention this. It goes, no, avoid. That creature is older than all of us. Oh. You reside there in ancient mines. One that should be mm. kept the day and never left. Do so you mean a loss in Its eyes narrow once again, not quite mm. understanding the words you use. It's seemingly a, amused. It's a gnome thing. As a brief aside, too, uh, check the connection on my iPad. I'm playing music fine, and the connection's in the iPad. I don't quite know where it's losing its connection, but I think we'll need some music. Um, yes. All right, so let's review our options, shall we're we? We're gonna charge we it can there. Well, we can't charge. Oh. There's, a, there's a chasm. How did that go with the little brain part? Not too well. The chasm is oh. a problem. How about the master switch for a while? The master switch? It's the, the, the entire chasm. colony of mind flayers. Um, we could see. fly in, right? Yes, the bridge is gone. We have so we to can fly in death room above. But we can, can somehow. I don't know if I can. Well, we can figure out a way. Okay. Enough of us can turn into flying things well, to we, get you there. We also we have a flying carpet. We could repair the bridge if we had to. At least put a rope across. I think. I think. Or we could disguise ourselves somehow. I think I know where we need to go. What? Really? Um, really? really? Get out of the city! <laughs> Please, do um, tell. I so, hold on, tech support. Is we 
Don't toy with our emotions. You just so, got that. so you guys haven't gone to the war camp. We have. We have. We've been there. Yeah. We've been there and we've quickly well, retreated. Scanlan took a poke about. Uh, he pooped himself out of sight and then had a look around. And then we returned to the edge of it and I kind of flipped the bird at them and taunted them a little. But we, most of us haven't been been in. Have you I've been, been to in. the lake? The water the lake. Lake. in the water. Lake? No, there's no... What? There's a lake? Well, isn't that where that we thing were. is? Yeah, at the bottom of the crevasse. Right? Yes, no, under there... the bridge. Is that a lake? No, that was so rushing no. water. That's not underground. Mm. The area after the big, big drop that yes. was at the bottom, there was a lake of water. Oh, oh okay. And there was a waterfall coming out of the oh. natural. And the oh. ogres were getting sucked under by something. Yeah. So we had, we didn't go down. Is there something under the lake? Creepy. Well, I just. I don't know if I should be talking about this again, but. We could, we could go away from him for a second. Okay. He yes. would probably hear the thoughts inside your mind, I think. Clorus is totally fine to talk about. Earmuffs. <laughs> He's amazing. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. Why are we questioning him so much? Well, shall I share a vision I, I have? I think so, Pike. I think at okay. this point we well, should just um, move forward. In this vision that I had, uh, I, I, I was pulled down toward the mines, uh, into the tunnels below where the dwarves were working. Through the lake? Well, past the goblinoid creatures and past a great underground lake. Mm. Uh, past a jagged onyx colored fortress framed in molten rock. Uh, past a field of broken glass and bone. Have you seen any of this? Nothing no. on it. Those last things sound terrible. No, the lake is the... Yes, that all sounds shitty. <laughs> the last <laughs> thing we've seen is the lake, and we didn't go too close to it because a couple of ogres fell in from above, and they disappeared yeah, like something Yeah, but we didn't have grabbing. him fly down there and get like a close look. No, we haven't We haven't had a look around. I wonder if there's like a... I can cast water breathing on all of us. Why don't we send one, like Mars Rover over here and have him go check it out? I mean, no. I can always turn into like a whale. That's not, well, I don't. Angle perhaps, but the water breathing sounds good to me. I feel like a head-on. Isn't there something in the water? Run into the camp is a bad it. idea. I pull out my empty yes. bottle, my empty bottle, and I go, and I have this. Yes, he's got a bottle. Plus, we've killed a fucking dragon. I know it's not an easy <clears throat> task to accomplish, uh, but. We're pretty badass. I think we might have a good chance. So wait, is going through the lake gonna get us through to the general? Well, we, do don't we need to know. do that first. We haven't been down to the water surface. Maybe yes. Like another... What's the best case scenario? What we come up behind them? It's still gonna be a fight. But maybe there's a different vantage point instead of like. Well, we can fly over them. That seems like a pretty good attack point. Some of us can fly over them. Well, we can all figure out to where all of us can fly over them. I'm, I'm more concerned Marshall about us cloaking ourselves. There's a, Even if we're there's flying, there's an ancient still death us. thing down he there. He might die. I didn't say it was foolproof. I don't know, man. I mean, our options are... are volunteering you. Our options Wait, are... what's going can, on? We can vote on it, although we all know Keyleth is just going to go fucking do whatever she wants, but... Our options are... <laughs> that was one time. <laughs> just the one time. Uh, Never to be forgotten. Our <laughs> options are a headlong <laughs> advance into the middle of their camp. And that's a big fucking force. Or a, some sort of disguise is the stream, distraction. Tiberius. Is the stream down, by the way? It goes down every two hours and 17 minutes. It's been doing that for... It comes right back up. All right, so let us know when it's back up. Two hours and 17 minutes? That sounds like lost. Tiberius. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Amityville <laughs> Twitch what? Go fly, like, all the way down to the water surface. Like... Michael J. Where's Fox that? in Back to the Future 2 no. and check Seems out like if there's any other tunnels that we haven't seen or is ways to go. Is this the same one that you bended? Or is, this, or is that what we're talking about? I think we, so. We didn't go down to the water surface though, did we? Well, we went over top of it and kind of looked I down. See we oh, we did? We went all the way down When I was like yeah. bending the water back, we were kind of in that area, right? That was that area, but the lake. Yeah, we're talking about. smart. But there's also the whole... I think we're overlooking something as well. What if... I mean... Can you freeze it? Figure it out. Do you out. guys want to like put me down in a rope and I can just like run around? 
and just see if there's any openings. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I have a lot of armor. Go fishing with you. I have a lot of go fishing. Well, yeah. no, just like halfway, and then I can like run around <laughs> and see if there's any like, tunnels. Oh, well, some of us can fly, so we're okay. I mean, I can attempt to try and like drain the lake a little bit. And Keela said that she can cast uh, water breathing. We can help us breathe underneath. We have the two surface. underwater breathing spells. Control water is a level five spell. I, I, I realize that. But remember, we're slow as balls. You were having water. trouble, if I recall, just getting the waterfall out of the way to create. I mean, it was amazing. I managed but to get it. Like, if something goes I know wrong, you fucking saved the day, but it. we're talking about. A lake. Yeah, Lake Superior. It is not yeah. just a lake. There is a death monster in there. Right. Right. Is there if we go under the water, on? we're dead. Can we stand on it. Some anything. If we want to fight it, or are we going to be well, fighting we, it we, in we the water? We can all have water, water breathing. Yeah, but we'll be can. slow. We and we'll be, be underwater where there's a death monster. Yeah, I'm not worried about but that. There's, but there's there's fifty to a hundred fucking creeps up top. Well then let's come up with a good plan. Maybe there's like hidden stairs or something like in Indiana Jones. Can you like fly the know. water and like fry the guy right. in the water with Hold the on. There's only 26 people up there. Yeah, I mean on our, I've on our last count. Stuff? Is that bef before the ones we killed or on? Those After. are the ones we saw though. No. That's the ones that how do we know how far back the camp goes? How many I've, are in I've the gate all behind it? Oh, that information no, no, from him you when lightning. Scanlon went. Can't you? That's the number. Oh, yeah. the water? I mean, I can like, I can make like a giant whirlpool. Wait yeah. a second, wait a second, Cast wait a second. white squall or whatever. Clarota, you've been listening to our thoughts for the last ten minutes. <laughs> and what clear thoughts they have <laughs> been. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? What resides in that lake is something you wish not to temper with. Yeah, it ain't your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fucking hell. It clouds the water with its own filth. You find yourself unable to breathe air. Uh, didn't that happen it's already? It's mind it takes. Have you seen it? Yes. It's big. Yeah, right. It's, it's like that big space you got flushed out. Is it like a many armed situation? <laughs> <laughs> One could say yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. Well, um, so, so we can face Cthulhu or Cth yeah. little Cthulhu minions seems to be our choice. Well, okay. Clarota. Why don't I have lightning, I swear. Can't you fry the water can first we try and the see if it hurts We can it. fly overhead and just lightning the shit yeah, out of them. Do that, please. Because maybe there's a way that we f there's a tunnel and we come up behind them or whatever. That Otherwise, illithid took out my brain from like a hundred feet. You know what? No, no, no. Wait, wait, if I may. When I was you there, may. I saw the uh, the main, the, the general, uh, control all of them instantly yep. when he was about to make a sacrifice or feed or whatever he was doing. Yep. No offense. Uh, he, he instantly had all of their command. If we could somehow get to him and cut off that connection, distract him, influence him somehow to command them to all jump in the lake, for instance. That Gannon. would get rid of the, of the lot of them all at once. Can you make me invisible? I can get you there. I can make you unseeable, but not invisible. What? May I? <laughs> What's the difference? I can make you a fly. May, may I <laughs> examine, without removing, may I examine your device? What about like Oh shit! Make a persuasion roll. Oh man, Percy. what's he saying? What's he saying? What? Percy. What's he doing? He's asking to. Sixteen. Touch his head. Okay. What's, what's he doing? What's he? Touching the head. He glares at you and says, "Our agreement does not include this interaction. It may be the key to returning you to your people." Tiberius. Yes. Would you go? I won't touch. I will lake. just look. I would. <laughs> I'm reading my book, will you? What? No, I want you to read a book. It kind of bows its head, but does not move closer. And just lightly shows you an element of it. Can I understand how it functions? Best you can tell. Uh, it looks like a skull cap that's been kind of decently made for what it is, but it's a little, you see some of the hammer marks on it, um, or some whatever is put together. Um, it appears to be a very simple piece of metallic material. Oh, so it's uh, magic. Weeks. It looks like it has some sort of Weeks. enchantment of probably what's causing the effect. It's not any like Weeks mechanical away. device that causes it. <laughs> so there'd be no way to build something to create a feedback loop. 
I see what you're getting I wanna, at. I want to try and see if there's any way that I can take a look at this and figure out a way to build some sort of feedback we system. We need to build a coconut radio. You don't even have a, a laboratory. That's what you <laughs> want. <laughs> he wants a coconut radio. With, uh, I love coconuts. You have never interacted with anything psionic based what before. <laughs> um, the time to research that and the materials needed to do it would take months. Mm. Plan two. Yeah. It's a fairly shitty situation. Plan two. While all this is going on. Is if they can't see. <laughs> what if we blind them? Can't do it. How? Like with uh, some sort of interference? With a really bright light. Oh, I love doing light things. <laughs> like what if they are so blind they can't, can't actually see us coming? I believe Pike and I both have access to spells like that. I assume I that would so. make us pretty blind as well. Not mm, if... Not necessarily. Not if we wear our can sunglasses. I, can, I attempt, <laughs> can I attempt to build sunglasses? Uh, How would we wait for it before I we have build optics. sunglasses? You could probably make a couple with the materials you have on hand. You are limited when it comes to resources as you are currently halfway underground. Even better. Max could show his ass. That's a pretty white That's light. That's pretty close <laughs> ones to get. He's pale as shit. When I go to the beach, I don't tan. But I wait, I thought we established that they, they don't need visual contact to influence us. They just need to be able to be aware. Once of they have mind. visual contact, they can influence us. But they need to make that visual contact in the first place. The dark and deep dwarves. They hate light. So I think it'll stun them long enough for us to get across. If we could cr perhaps put some light spells on the back and the front of our shields so that we are guarded from it. And uh, if you could make a pair for our friend here, that would help him out, I assume. Wait, that's not a bad idea. Pike, can we temporarily enchant the magic carpet as like a spotlight as we fly over? It's like a light like a little portable yeah. death ray. We've seen you surrounded in radiant light before. Do you think you could do that for the carpet? If I, I mean, I have... Um, we should have daylight. Is it going where's, my, where's, my, where's my book? Where's my player's handbook? Yeah. And Clarota, while they're figuring that out, if we remain to be hidden or blind our opponents as we approach your kin, will not know our thoughts till they see us? Hey, yes. They need to look into you by knowing you're there. Can I fight one of your kin with a blindfold on? Perhaps. I thought if they could see you, you were... Close. Not your eyes. The mind eye that you possess. How close can one be before it actually affects... Say a hundred feet it caught my friend in midair. Our last uh, run in. Is it the range about? It's about the distance. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. You may not. You may not know the answer to this. I don't doubt your knowledge and wisdom, but I happen to have a uh, ring of mind shielding. Will that aid me in any way? Bam! Boom! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you some assistance light? to a psionic influence would be a big. Yeah. Okay. Page number. Daylight. We have a plan. Oh. 2.30. 2.30. It wouldn't be hard to get hold of some pitch down here, some tar, to burn? No. If you can be invisible, and you have a ring of mind shielding, and you can carry a bucket of pitch to that motherfucker, you can splash it on its face cover its eyes, and it's helpless. My god, what Or I could hang that, that big brass pot on its head. Well, <laughs> well I'm wearing that. Uh, yes, <laughs> but it could take it off, possibly, if you smear so wait, sticky shit Wait, I just eyes, have to blind it? Then it can't control it. Well, I happen to have a blindness it. spell. It <laughs> may still try, but to be blind, it would be very difficult for it to pry into your mind. Could it still control the others, though? Probably. Okay. That is a permanent enslavement. So you want me but to go in there, solo, invisible, no. and try to blind this Not thing? Not yep. solo. I'm in! I, yes. like, I like your idea of turning me into a fly. <laughs> you and I go in. And we've got light spells. Mm -hmm. 
I want to take, I I can take a look cast at his daylight eyes. Look up and do on a perception check. our magic on target. Onto an object. Yeah. And what his like, and flesh is. I can cast it onto my shield, and then on the carpet, and, and on the carpet double. Uh, yes. I have to take a nap, though. Uh, that could <laughs> so be I done. 13. What's that? 13? Okay. Huh? But that Here's could get us in close. Black. Scanlay and I could get in closer and blind it. And I can stab it in his head. I mean, technically, I can also turn into something fly fly and come and back you guys up if someone else wants to take the carpet. Okay. No. We can all get there. I'll take We can all get there. I can cast daylight on your helmet. On your pot helmet. Really? Yeah. You'll be. I'm game with. All right. I'll be like a lighthouse. At the very least, it'll be a distraction for the crush team. Crush They'll be busy dealing with us. <laughs> yes. be the cover of John Carpenter's The Thing. That's a good yeah. idea. Yes. Well, what is it? Two fronts. Y- yes, yes, two fronts. What is it? Someone you and I separate from the group. They go in shining like a beacon. You and I in. Okay. And while the Illithid is focused on them, we go in, you blind him, and I stab him in his maw. That means it's pretty good. That's a suicide. Good. I like it. Let's do it. Well, what else are we going to do? This is a great plan. plan. I'm behind the Surgical. Plan. Special yes. ops. Hey, wait. <laughs> Seal Team 6. What, what does Vex have to say about this? Vex, you mean? Vex. Vex, my sister Vex. Yes, that one. That's a good question. Oh, Vex, Vex. you look so tired. <laughs> Vex, your sister, seems genuinely perturbed by the circumstance, yes. but looks to you and says, Look, I found them. You deal with the situation. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> she's she's so like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, let's do, well, let's do it. I gave up trying to understand um, her years ago. Do you know what time it is? Feeling a bit nappy, I think. <laughs> Your hair looks fine. Feel well, I'm fine. Wait, shh, shh, shh. You hear me rest, then rest. Okay. Time of day has no bearing down here. I have to rest so I can, yes. and I'm, I'm going to read yes. up on this daylight spell, yeah. so that me and you can both cast her. Yeah, we'll just take a nap and just get, you know, get all my rest our muscles and, yep. and get ready for the, for, the, for the fight. On this uh, chopping head spell. Yep, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to sing a little song to inspire a couple of my, my allies here if I can. Okay, I would recommend doing it after rest. Okay. The dice would go away after rest. while they rest. Okay, forget it. I go ahead and important. I, I mm. light an incense in our in our teepee and I make some flowers grow. And I'm like, mm, that's better. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> now it's nice. do a little bit of work on that first trick arrow. Mm. On the trap arrow. Okay. Just since I've got a little time to go. Go ahead and make a roll. Uh, that's uh What am I rolling? Your engineering or your uh, tinker's kit. Oh, it's just an intelligence roll, right? Uh, plus your Tinker's Kit proficiency. It's down underneath your skill. Um, your proficiency is at the very bottom left. Oh. Yeah, I don't have a number for that. You can add your proficiency modifier to the intelligence check. So add your intelligence modifier plus four. Oh, thank you. 17. All right, and so what are you trying to accomplish with this arrow again? I was just trying to make a entanglement arrow. It's, it's, a, it's a trapper's arrow. Okay. Uh, Polo arrow. You manage to work out what seems like a tanglefoot bag type detonation where if an arrow were fired, it would be a grapple check against the individual and probably give them penalties until they're able to break free of the yeah, grapple of the arrow. Cool. Um, so yeah, success on that one. Nice I'm going to be, gonna be hawk Laura out at some point. I've got a couple of them. In my yeah. All right, so Before that's I retire, Clarote, you said you wanted to speak with me later. Anything in particular? Or do you wish to save it for after the battle? Perhaps after. I just... I'm curious about the source of your arcane power. Oh, I'd be happy to discuss it. I could learn, I'd feel a great deal from you as well. Later. Anyway, later, of course. Yeah. I go in my books. <laughs> so, Koroto closes his eyes and kind of goes into a meditative stance. The rest of you, those who have spells to choose, go ahead and choose your spells accordingly for the next day. Rub it in. Well, luckily we have a soon. I'm sharpening my axe. Good, good. <laughs> It is good. I'm just doing my vocal warm ups. <laughs> All right. Me, 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 me. Quiet, quiet. Moto bene, moto bene, moto bene, moto bene, moto bene. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> 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 so, as you all have your evenings rest, um, 
Not very comfortable. Number one, you're in the middle of a tent of a goblinoid city. Second, just the general proximity of sleeping near an Illithid. You just have a general sense of unsettling dreams, imagery that is disturbing. Uh, Pike, you have many flashbacks to the vision you had and actually wake partway through the night in a cold sweat. As you wake up, you all kind of slowly come to, it's about four hours into the evening's rest, you hear a, feel a slight tremor, a familiar okay. tremor that you felt once before in this cavern. You'd feel the ground begin to vibrate and shake. You get up and look around. Uh, is, um, is Clay awake? <laughs> <laughs> Eyes are open, just sitting there. Karota, do you know what that rumbling is? There are many creatures that live in this rock. You're best to be still. Ooh, still. Still. Mm. Like, like, so, don't move. Vocal warm ups. Everyone make a stealth check. Oh! oh. oh. Nipples. Yes. Cooper. Yeah. Uh, we get advantage on that, right? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. 16. Nope. Uh, uh, 14. 19. 18. 20. One. One. <laughs> two natural ones? Yep. Oh, wait, wait, after no. her oh, after no. her two natural no. 20s. Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Well, I mean, well, well I'm new to armor. You you know? Wait, you both wrote natural ones. Natural ones. Those both count as two failures. Yeah. Fuck. Thankfully, the rest of your group all rolled pretty high, so it was four versus five. Yes. You guys just barely succeed. Oh. As you all hold hold still, barely breathe, the rumbling intensifies and goes on for a good minute, minute and a half before eventually it subsides. Aw. Thought we were gonna get a warm up. Fades into the distance. Rumbling is complete. Appears to be no issue. Okay. Clarota says, To me, these creatures, they pick up on movement in that sound. Wary. What creatures are you speaking of now? This is something. The rumbling the creatures. I'm, but what are they? Oh. Probably bubbles. I've only got glimpses. This is something worse yeah. than umber hulks. Well, I think larger. Yeah. Bubbles in the underdark. Mm. All right, we've all rested but up. Bubbles in the underdark. <laughs> no. Uh, I had a crazy dream that said if Geek and Sundry got to fourteen hundred followers, they would be some sort of a giveaway. Yes, oh, there are some. I had the same dream, Scott. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All visions of that. Yeah, guys, so, so you're aware, every 50 subscribers we get, we're giving away uh, an awesome Moon Sunday game package. So. Keep in my head, just one one. Oh, there you go. Well, congratulations. We already got a winner. We'll be putting those out for every 50 subscribers we get tonight. Uh, I'll be choosing one to win that awesome award oh. or wonderful package, so keep that in mind. Oh, I get you. Not yet. So, the plan is again, you and I stealth, the rest attack with light. Well, what's first? What's second? What happens? Yeah, what's well, first? I need to take a moment to find some... I'm going to look around and see if I can find any pitch uh, anywhere in the goblin camp. Okay. Is this plan Go ahead and make a survival check. Pitch. If my Actually, let's be investigation. Make investigation. investigation. Oh, I got the exact same number. Uh, oh. This is 12. 12? Okay. It takes about an hour. You manage to find, essentially, a few piles of rather disgusting, sticky goblinoid refuse that you imagine would probably stick and burn pretty well goblin, in a, a pitch-type way. Yeah, shit. you find just a whole bunch of goblin shit. Let's cook it up a little. <laughs> How do you feel about lacing uh, it with some, some gunpowder? I'll fire for you. Ooh. I feel pretty good. All about right. That. Goblin Great. Molotov cocktails? Yes. I like that. Goblin poop cocktail. So here's how I think this goes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think the team infuses the carpet and any shields or head pots they have with radiant light. They go in and make a big stink on the side of the camp. You and I go in. You're invisible. I'm a fly, flea, fly. mosquito, <laughs> dragonfly, whatever you'd like. Yes, let's say fly. Okay. We go in, find the illithid. And then we pop in. You yell, "Hey, Spanky!" Throw <laughs> the goblin shit in its face. Or I try to blind it with magic. Yes. Both. 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 Okay. We want us. We she want to increase our magic. odds. Sure. As soon as he's blind, mm -hmm. I go in for the kill. 
And then it's on us to deal with what happens after that. It's playtime. It's playtime. Yeah. Might I suggest one one other A yes. drink for that. Please do. Remember, there are some dwarves being held captive. Yes. Hey. We could make our way to them and release them. We don't need all of them, though. Just to cause further distraction or to get some allies on the inside? It's possible. They could be weary, frightened. Mind control. Seems unreliable, yes. Mind control. They're probably ready to fight, like me. <laughs> Grog, we understand. You want to bash some people. Your time to kill is coming. All right. Is there anyone else of our party who could help us with stealth or anything while we're over? Definitely not me. Okay. (laughs) As a note to Trevor, because you don't want to walk through, there is essentially a a shanty town, a tent city of of, of war tents um, with a few rock formations. Um, you also notice that, or you remember last time, the, there was the main square that had the raised platform, platform, yeah, and then there was the small stone barracks where it seemed both uh, the Mind Flayer and the Durgar General both went back so in. We got to go into the barracks. Well, that's where you saw at least they were last time we were that's in. That's our there. stalking point, I imagine. Well, there's two targets, so we got to get in and then get in. The main thing They're is to get targets. the Illithid because if he's out, nobody's. Then it's then they're all separate. He's he's playing chess with all his minions until we take him out. I right. Chess. So we all strike right on him. You two are going to take that um, <clears throat> little journey. Uh, the rest of us, what should we do? I have many options, and they're all fun. So, <clears throat> Percy, your sniper rifle. I should think that you could uh, want to post up and start taking out position. I'll do that at first, but then eventually I'm going to just have to jump into the fray. No, yes, I mean, of course, our onslaught to the rest of the camp that we're about to do, right? Make a bunch of noise, a bunch, bunch of light. How are you going to get Grog over there? Uh, well, I mean... Uh, uh, I'm going to put a giant sunlight beacon on his head, and I'm going to release him to the wild. Yes, but there's no bridge. We well, talked about it. Oh, how are we going to get him over there? We have an infinite amount yes. of rope. Yeah, yeah, but how, how do we get it over there? But Tiberius talked about making him light as a feather. Oh, you could fly me. Tricks. Oh yes, you can fly him, right? Yes, yeah, so you could fly him. Okay. Why don't we turn Take my pot into a lighthouse and then you fly me, me over and I'll do like a abominable snowman walk. <laughs> I like that. Clarota, is there anything oh, you can do like to help too. us in like this endeavor? Neck. I can I help us try and his mind with mine. But you have Swear to protect me from harm. You have our word that we will try. (laughs) And I will come. We must work swiftly. If we can overleap most of the city, get to that barrack, storm it, and take out the mind player through the sides. So. So let's okay. let's set down right in the middle of the thing. Right. Well, I was gonna say, can we set down to where two. we're it's all of us kind of backing you guys up, holding the fort down while you guys go? Well, we all have to. There's no bridge, so right. we all, we have, all to have to get there. I'm not worried about that. Get over together, get to get to the edge. Yes, but where are we going to make land? In the middle, in the middle of the shit, next to the barracks. I say we might as well go closest to the barracks as we can. Get. Okay, and that's, then you and I can get in the barracks. That's a good idea. If we. If we go as high as we can and just hug the ceiling of this motherfucker and then go down in the middle, and as we're going down, you turn me into a fly and go invisible. And that's when all hell breaks loose. I like that one. Okay. Let's do it. No time like the present. Let's fucking do it. Hands up if you're in. Buffing people like crazy. I, I start, I cast Dunk's You're gonna be buffing us like vampires. Like. There we go. Oh, oh, just we question to the dungeon one. master. Yes. I think my polymorph spell is a concentration like spell. It is, yes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm going solo. Do it! I can get you in. I can get. I can make you fly, but I can't be invisible at the same I will, time. St- I will. I will sneak through. All right. If Wait. Thing, if All shit right. goes south, I will peel off and join can the we help others. Him? All right. Well, if, I can. Pa- I can cast pass uh, without a trace on myself, and as long as we. Hug close to me. There's an area around me that's like a dark shadow, and we get like we get all stealthy. We're going in. We're just gonna have to Im- improvise that. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Oh, wait, 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 wait! <laughs> don't, don't go in yet. Let me, let me. Buck As a note, you said you were casting stone skin. Yes. Stone skin is concentration. The moment you cast another concentration spell, it goes away. Oh right. 
so I don't cast it yet. Right. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn, cast Jason's um, I would like to cast um, <laughs> <laughs> Bloodlust on myself. Bloodlust. Uh, right. I go ahead and I cast Enhance Ability on Vex. Vax. 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 Sorry, everybody does it. Our yeah. mother did it. I do it sometimes. Okay. To increase your dexterity? To increase your dexterity? What about so stealth? Essentially, you, you have advantage on dexterity, dexterity, yes. dexterity based checks, yeah. Which is your stealth, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to go ahead. Now let me keep track of all this. And then I'm going to go ahead and cast Daylight on Grog's helmet. <laughs> are we ready for this? Are we going? Yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's, let's do it. this. And, um, and I'm going to go ahead and cast Daylight on. Wait. What? What? Wait. We're trying to sneak over them before we land. Don't cast daylight on anything yet. Okay. okay. We don't want to be okay. bright, I'll shiny sun. <laughs> a I'll giant wait. flare coasting <laughs> over the city. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and cast pass without a trace on myself. Okay. All right. So that's preparation there. Oh, I'm gonna sing a little ditty to inspire Vax. I. Didn't see the Vax, cause he's so goddamn stealthy. Okay. Was that a high song? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that wondrous rendition allows you a D8 inspiration dice. Hold on to that. Uh, is, that is everybody finished? Vox yes. Machina. Let's do this Let's shit. Do this. Let's go. I right. turn into an eagle and I'll take the gnomes. All right. Scanlan. Uh, Pike is heavy with the plate mail, but still enough to carry with your giant eagle form. <laughs> Tiberius, Percy, and I are on the carpet, and Tiberius, are you casting? Are you going to help Grog fly across? Um, yeah. Feather fly. Fly, all right. At which point, uh, you feel the strange lifting sensation. For a second, your stomach kind of has butterflies, and you realize that you could just think forward and you drift forward. Think back, you drift back. <laughs> Think up, you drift up. Amazing. Don't puke in the helmet, though. That would be gross. <laughs> hey, can, can, am I light enough for him to take me? He can fly on his own. He can just will himself. Call for I'm him. talking about for him to carry me. Oh, from the carrier? Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Hey, I hop on your back. Right, let's go, Krog. <laughs> And so. I guess the rest of them are on the yeah. rug. So well, I can't see, so you've got to tell me. I start flying the wrong way. Uh, you're back up the other way. Well, 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 around here. Good. Okay. Okay. You okay. actually clutch Grog like by the sides of his segue. face and start steering <laughs> him <laughs> <laughs> like a vehicle. Wherever, wherever I move your hand, you just tilt that way. <laughs> are we all? Are we all? In flight now? They're all taken care of, yes. And the carpet? Right, wrong. <laughs> Tiberius, <laughs> Percy, and I are on the carpet. What, what about, what what about Vex? Is she with us? She's on the carpet. Is she uh, staying behind? Ve Vex, for the time being, because it's just easier to organize for this, uh, is coming on the carpet with you guys and is trying is preparing in case she is needed. Okay. <laughs> she's just quiet because she's feeling smug about, yeah. about last game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Be quiet. Just feel smug about being in another RPG right now. Um, all right, so she'll be back. I want to see what how you fly, Grog. It's really rickety. Bro, it's one arm in and one forward. <laughs> it, it's, you just think. You just think. How Grog begins you drifting. Do you propel yourself <laughs> otherwise? It's right. an awkward zigzag. Right. Do, you, do you think happy thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'm gonna kind of fly in the middle between Kurog and the carpet. That way, my pass without a trace encompasses everybody. Okay. Uh, all right. I ah. turn to Scanlan and say, Scanlan, we are probably going to die today. It has been an honor. It has been an honor. Oh, you won't if die only today. one of us will die. <laughs> By the way, Vax. and it won't be me. <laughs> well, we got up there. I can be invisible. <laughs> so now you're not listening. It'll just happen. What were you saying, Tiberius? No, Nothing! No, 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 don't, don't play it that way. What were you saying? <laughs> don't I was, play it that way. I was saying if you're all finished, I'll just make you invisible right before that happens. <laughs> you guys are all coasting over the chasm. Now you're over the top of the large bridge and the 200 foot wide uh, open hole in this tunnel that leads to the lake below. As you glance down, you can see 
just a little bit of a trickle from the soft red light that was deeper inside. You can see the small streams of lava that are just slowly pulling at the bottom on the outskirts of the lake proper. Uh, as you begin to make it to the other side, you can see tiny shapes moving in this very barely lit war camp of the Duragar. Um, as you're coasting over, and uh, uh, Kurota is along with you guys with his hood up, he kind of whispers into all your heads, says, Beware some of these armies, scary abominations created below within my city. I know not what to expect from them, so be wary. As this happens, everyone make a stealth check. Every, everyone, with because of the past that trace, everyone gets a plus 10 to their stealth check. Plus 10? Plus 10. Mm. Thanks to Keyleth. Thank God. Keyleth, however, you are carrying two gnomes. You have a disadvantage on it, even oh, with the no. plus 10. It's all right. Plus 10. Oh, my God. My God. Um, even with the plus 10? Okay, so... Uh, 18. 18. 15. 20, uh, uh, 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. What looks to be the beginnings of tunneling siege engines being constructed. What? Siege? Siege? Siege. siege. You can see giant wheeled carts with drills at the front, giant like auger bores that are being currently constructed. Um, you can see what looks like a series of weapons being stacked up and ready. You can see there is a preparation for some sort of an attack on the city above. Oh, As you guys continue to press ahead, there does not seem to be any reaction to your flying. Don't Let's say anything. It's close what? to the ceiling. Of this this can we cast the light? We can all, we can all talk to each other. Don't, don't forget. Whisper to I, each other. Why don't you shut up? shut up? It, yeah, that's I, so cool. Just wait till we get there. We cast the spell. Good blast. Do you guys make it it's towards so the center portion of the city? Roger, Roger, Roger. Oh, Roger. Die rolls. I know. Um, you can just start beginning to see the opening in the center of this war camp. There is a circle where there are no tents constructed. You can see what looks to be a small wooden platform, and there is a stone building that is of, you know, makeshift functional construction. Not pretty, but functional. Looks like a barracks or some sort of a large bunker uh, right on the northern side of that uh, opening, that center portion of the war camp. That would be what you saw both the general and the mind flayer head of this encampment go into last time you The were barracks? Here. Yes. With a roof? Uh, there is a roof to it. You don't know if there's any roof access, but there is a roof. Tiberius, can you turn me invisible now? Yeah, bro, bro, move up. No, no, wait, wait, yeah. Well, we're still in the air, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Don't, he's got to concentrate on that. Don't, he's sitting on the carpet. Yeah, but he's, he's keeping flying. him he's about, flying. He's keeping him uh, flying. I, I cast invisibility on you. That's when everything happens. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> No, it just no. falls from the air in the middle. So we, are we floating above? You guys are currently now. Should we floating sit? about 100 to 150 feet above the war camp? You do not appear to have been noticed yet. Get down there and wing it. Should we land on the roof or do we land right outside the, the oh. barracks door? What do we do? Yeah, do it. The, the roof, 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 roof. The roof. You guys want to stay up and we'll yeah, go down? Yeah, you go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we can start on the roof. That Just way, that gives it. us time. But to... I can't go invisible while you're flying. We need you to be invisible. You're a stealthy bastard. No, we land on the roof. We get it on there. And I cast invisibility on him. Then you go well, do your thing. We're running the risk of as we come down, he draw a guard going. So we would risk that anyway. That's true. E either way. I'm so down, scared we... right now. <laughs> <laughs> if we go okay, down really fast, the roof, it's hard to we, go to the map. Why don't we land on the roof and I'll lay f we all lay flat, except for the people that are going in, you cast invisibility. This is the exact conversation they had when they were about to go kill us. I still have, <laughs> we're going like a dark cloud. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> oh god. Uh, oh god. <laughs> is there enough weight for me to get on the carpet for this, this point? This is fucking stressful. Uh, <laughs> you can certainly try. There was a weight that we were not aware how much is on <laughs> Yes, I do. It's a thousand pounds. Uh, they don't know how much weight is on there total. Right. Uh, 
Everybody, how much do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't Just ask a woman no. I'm sorry, Your Highness, but I need to know. The, the idea is if I could step off on the carpet and uh, hang with you guys, uh, then Grog, you can float down to the, to the, uh, what do we call it? Um, <clears throat> take uh, Vax here, and uh, then I can, oh shit, I need to be near you to cast it. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just land on the roof. Let's just land on the roof. roof. We're going to go in. We're going to hit the roof. You turn me invisible. He turns him invisible. You guys light up the night. We're doing that And we just do it. We just got to go. We're lighting up now? Wait, wait, you light up on the roof? What's wrong? Let's Let's look for access first. Don't light up until we give the go sign. Yes, we we need to wait before we light up. If anyone takes notice, (laughs) then turn on the lights. Don't turn on the lights. Do not light up until you see the... Black or greens of their eyes. Or By the way, Clorota, Clorota, you have definitely picked the right people to <laughs> assist yes. you. Yeah, we're all uh, shit. You do not. There's no <laughs> verbal response, but you do just emotionally sense a slight hint of regret <laughs> 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 emanating from the mind flare. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go, let's go land on the roof. All right, let's do, do it. it. All right. Go. You guys descend, Sorry, the hawk, down, down. <laughs> I the eagle flies down, you go, as part of the landing, everyone make a secondary stealth check. Okay. All right. Do we, we still, still have plus 10? 10? Uh, you still have the spell. Oh, yes. Oh, that was cocked. So. Yeah. 20. Oh, 20. no. You're a terrible so. person. 30. Wow. 20. I'm like those boobies that With crash land right? when they you fall. Can, you roll with disadvantage? Well, I rolled a one. Okay. Uh, Two failures. That's uh, 15, uh, 20, 29. 23. 21. 28. Well, all that trace is the saving grace. Yes. Um, <laughs> a, a bit of a harsh landing from your perspective, but thankfully you have two small gnomes to break your fall. Ow! Ow. Drag them a little bit across the stonework on the top. Uh, it's not stonework, actually. Stonework. The bro- most of this whole thing is stonework. It looks like the roof of this is made of uh, like a thick, scavenged wood. Um, whether it was taken from the surface, from the mines itself, it is just wood planks that are all Let's keeping the, the roof of this. It's reclaimed. It's very nice. If if that thing sees us, though, <laughs> it could be game over. I still yeah, think we should finish. stick to the plan of blinding yeah, it. Yeah, do it. Yes. So mm. some of us need to go inside. Well, can you we? You and I. Yes. You and I. Yes. Yeah, the two Check go inside. Check out the, see what's And if shit goes down, about. we light it up. Yeah. I will. I will yes. fucking yell into my earring if shit goes down. Yeah, cool. You guys go crazy. Go. Good call. Okay. Go for it. We look around to, for any roof access Still roof entrance. Yeah. Okay. Come on, chip it down. Uh, looking around, there is no roof entrance. It looks like it is purely a functional roof for any sort of weathering that may have, you know, any rocks that may have tumbled. You do see there are a few small rocks and pieces of, of cavern that may have plummeted here. There's a small bowl. No chimneys. No chimneys. No nothing. There doesn't appear to be a like, fireplace or any sort of interior like that. Um, glancing over the sides, you can see that on the f- on the floor, yes. which you can't really tell if there's two floors or not. It looks tall, tall enough to have two floors, but you don't see a set of windows or anything that belies that to you. It may just be a really tall single floor, uh, but there are a couple of small window openings, one on each side of. The <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go around. Tiberius, could you uh, do me the favor of uh, making me disappear? Uh, yes, when I do this, though, it's going to be very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, where are my hands? <laughs> right? That's amazing. You immediately disappear from view. You okay. just currently visually do not exist. And you still have my butt. We're laying flat on the roof, right? Like, you, guys are, yeah. you guys are on the roof yeah, now, you're fine. Your fly spell vanishes, you, you feel your weight return to you for a second. For a split moment, you're a little sad because you were having fun. Oh. <laughs> is um, was it down so? We can see the window that we uh, we pick one of the sides. Of the, I don't know. Okay. West side. Okay. West um, side. Is the window? Is, an, is it a single pane? Is it a? Is it an openable window? Uh, as you glance over, it is. It is just an opening. There is no glass. Great. There is something blocking the way. Nothing. It is just. It is about roughly big enough to fit to fit a normal sized half elf or human. I take a uh, scan by the scruff. And swing him down. Oh, uh, I turn invisible. In. <laughs> okay. So as as you as, as you grab him and you're bringing him down, you cast invisibility on yourself. You both vanish now, and you, all the rest okay. of you are kind of like holding your breath, hoping that now that you don't know what's happening, it's going to go well. Yeah, and I'm scaling in after him. All right. Uh, go ahead and just make a acrobatics check. 
Please don't roll a one. Please don't drop me. Uh, 18. All right. Yeah, fine. <laughs> All right. You guys both, you, you gingerly scale down the wall. The stones, thankfully, are uh, just haphazardly put together where there's enough oh, grip space for you to come I down. have a climbing kit! We're in, we're in. Okay, it's a little late for that, but okay. Uh, so, uh, you lower him down, you bring him inside, you step down through the opening into the center of a hallway. Can I we can't talk to each other. Yes, we get a map, finally! And we can't signal each other, and we don't know where each other is. Yes, you can. I hold his hand. <laughs> we're holding hands, I'm leaning of way you down on the side. Of course you are. I'm holding his hand. Sam and I have done this before. Yeah. Matthew, oh, I, right. I use my earring. Okay. I'm not going to talk back to you, so whatever you say. Um, it, uh, just to remind you of how these particular things work. I love the scandal. I'm not page. actually talking right. right now. It's yeah, a little telepathic thing, so you can just talk to each other through okay. the rings. As the two of you. As the two of you step into this room, you look about you, and there are some ramshackle makeshift beds in the room, five to be exact, from right to left. This appears to be one portion of a barracks-type sleeping arrangement. Okay. I the beds are empty. They're kind of tossed. They're not like well-kept or anything. There's sheets kind of tossed about, and it smells awful in here, but okay. it... At first, I just heard Tiberius' voice in my head, so I'm going to test it out and think, Scanlan, can you hear me? Can I hear him? From... From, from, from his thoughts Tiberius only. He's whispering one. about... He's wearing one. From thoughts only, can I oh. hear him? Uh, no. I tug on his hand to keep going into the into the barracks. And I notice that his hand is weirdly cold and slow. Yeah, not weirdly. Mm. It's all right. You just learn to live with the stage fright. You never move past <laughs> it. Um, should we pause right now? You didn't bring your stuff. I didn't have it. Come on in. Go ahead. Look, my sister's here. <laughs> We'll make it work. We'll make it work. We'll bring you up to speed later. You're okay. on the roof of Osama bin Laden's house. Yes. <laughs> so, question for the DM. I'm invisible. Pretty much. Do I need to stealth? Do I stealth? Is that a stealth? There's still a stealth check you're invisible, but noise is still a factor. Okay. You just have a severe, you have, you have advantage on your stealth check. Right. So, I think we should probably stealth and start moving in. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. We, we tell each other. Beyond being invisible, both of you guys make yourself check. Stop telling me. Tell each other. I mean, I'm invisible, and I rolled a five. <laughs> you have an advantage. You roll twice. Oh. Yeah, because you're both invisible. Plus one. That's better. Thirteen. All right. Twenty-eight. All right. You both feel your stealth. Are you going into? There is one opening into a hallway here. Yeah. Do we have the? Anyone have a laser light? Yep. All right. Let's squeeze it together. Okay. The two ends. I press the little button. Together. Ah, there we go. Okay, so up, we're going to go down here. Down to this hole. And right, as um, you guys step out, you can see immediately there are two Duragar guards right by a door that leads to a central chamber. So we're going to go this way. All right. You and guys shift uh, to this side. You immediately see. Although you guys have different colored lights. Two more Duragar guards. Okay. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to, I'm inching up to the, I'm pulling Scanlan behind me, but I'm inching up to this door and just peeking through and seeing what I can see. Okay, looking inside, you can see these small symbols are like basically just redstone, the uh, the glowstone that lights the underground caverns here and a yes. large portion of uh, Craghammer are just embedded in the wall in a yes. small sconce. Um, peering through here, yes. you see one against the wall. You also see uh, along the edges here what looks to be racks of spears and pikes and hammers and various uh, war accoutrement and weapons just hanging and there's a set of armor over a, a small, just kind of a wooden uh, arrangement. It's a way that the armor itself is just being stored there. This looks to be like a fast grab armory. Okay. Um, I pull Scanlan by the hand and we enter into this room. This is so romantic. All right. <laughs> it's just like the day we met, Sam. <laughs> you guys enter? Quietly walking this way. Uh, What's past that? the door, that looks like the front door. That's the front door, it is currently closed though. We're gonna keep going this way. Oh man, we're doing our above, we're flanking! All right, <laughs> let's go out this way. Uh, there is one Duragar here. There doesn't appear to be a doorway or entrance to the central chamber on this side of the hallway. That's pretty good. Okay. I still have the pitch in a bucket, uh, the shit in a bucket in my hand, by yep. the way. 
I mean, we can take these guys. I'm not worried about that. But we can make noise. Yes. <laughs> How far apart do the, are the two Doragaha standing at that door? Right there? Yes. Uh, they're about five feet apart, just enough space, for, like one's on each side of the doorway. Okay. Uh, wait, uh, okay. Just, just wait, what are those red things right there? <laughs> those are the uh, small sconces with the uh, glowstone, okay. the redstone I mean, that lights the... So we're trying there. to get there. You have greater invisibility, mm -hmm. so you can attack and you can still be invisible. Okay. I pull... I pull a gold coin out of my pocket and throw it in this corner. Oh, of this the straight up ball. metal gear. Fuck yeah! <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and just coin. make a general oh, dexterity so we check. Yeah. Okay, and because of Keyleth, that advantage, correct? Yes. Yes. You should do. Okay. Okay, so and this is, what is this? Just a dex just add your dexterity, dexterity modifier to it, which modifier? I think is five. Okay, so that's a 17. All right. You Swinging sound. Both of the Duragar kind of look over. What's that? They look back <laughs> at each other. Both kind of grunt for a second. This one nods her head and begins walking over to inspect it. This one stays at its post. Must have been my imagination. <laughs> 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 All right. I pull Scanlan behind yeah. me and tiptoe right behind this uh, yeah, yeah, do it. asshole. Do it. Kept you waiting. Put it in him. And uh, take out my vocal blade and reach out and grab him by the hair and you, stick it in the back of his neck. You've got, you've got my dice. You've yes. got my dice. All right. So, as you reach up, you grasp the back of it. This really nasty, wiry, <laughs> thick Duragar hair. I'm so tense right now. You, <laughs> I'm so tense. You yank the head back and take the base of the blade. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Oh. Uh, is it a surprise roll? So you have advantage on the attack. Thank you. Okay, good. And I believe you have a bonus to if you get the attack. Uh, yes. Stealth, I get, sneak attack. Well, I get. Uh, yes, I get uh, advantage, but you can't triple up on advantage. I believe. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's right, book. What was that? that was to freak you out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just double checking here as part of your ability. Remember, every fifty subscribers gets a free <laughs> yellow. <yeah. laughs> Subscribe now, kids. <laughs> <laughs> if you Catching score a hit like against this. a creature that is surprised, it is a critical hit. That's the other thing I was going to mention. Oh, thank you. All right, so, so, oh, so this isn't a dexterity check. This is an this attack. This is an attack. This is an attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a twenty-six. Oh, man, that dead. is going to hit, and that is a critical hit. Go ahead and roll damage and sneak attack. Yeah. Okay. Die, die, die. Okay. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two plus seven is nine. That's nine. That's just that part. Okay. Six. Seven. Nine. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, Nineteen. Which is, the, what's double? The sneak attack damage? The sneak attack damage and the, and the dice damage. And the dice damage. Nineteen plus... This one is six. This guy's dead. Fifty-two. Oh! As you pull the head back, you can hear a slight... A slight guttle... Is about as much noise as can make it out before the blade just... Right out the front of his throat, blocking any passage of the air. Twist it. As you hold it, you twist the blade. He goes limp in your hand, but you catch it and keep holding it there so he doesn't make any noise. Can you, You're now can clutching you a easy, dead Duragar. Easy, easy. I just have a thought. I'm going to sit him back against the wall uh, and let him slide against it and just grab Scanlan and into the room. Into this room? Yes. Okay. You're Scanlan. I think you're so about to get a cost. He's still change. standing up, kind of. Why is, All right. why is he leading Scanlan? Uh, What's uh, happening? Third, third. I'm sorry. Uh, while I'm while I'm invisible, I look around for all, traps. Uh, I'm just gonna see if there's any trap right. trap doors. Trap. Go ahead and make a perception yeah, check. That's what that's what we do. Not great. I got a twenty-eight. Uh, nine. <laughs> You notice no traps. What you do notice, though, is there's a giant kind of war room table at the top of this raised platform. It's about uh, six feet up, and there's a stairway that leads up to it. You see at the table Shit. one of Balls. the Illithid Mind Flayers, okay. the Armored General that you saw before. General! And there are two other Duragar currently at the table. Okay. They're in the middle of an excuse no, discussion. No, no, no. Stay invisible. Do we see? 
We can't communicate. You guys have got seconds until yeah, another guard. We can't comes talk. Back. We can't talk. You hear so footsteps behind you. I put the bucket of shit into Scanlan's hands. What are you doing with I'm you? Gonna give him a little nudge, gentle little nudge. I I no. step forward into the room and I hurl it at the fucker's face. The general. Uh, and the, I'm the, the, the rolling mind behind face. him at the same time. <laughs> behind the illithid, ready to go. So, so you go up here as well? Yeah, oh yeah, behind him, behind him. Okay, so you dart up behind. Make a stealth check, both of you. Oh god. Oh, With god. advantage. Oh god, Robert's dead. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, do we get the plus 10 to stealth? No. Yeah. Plus no. advantage. Oh, thank god. 19. He I'm using uh, Scanlan's advantage, so 16, 29. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Um. You slink up behind, seemingly unnoticed. You, there's a slight twitch to the mind player's head for a second as you go ahead and take a big old bucket of shit and <laughs> sling it. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and make an attack roll. Just, just an uh, attack roll. Or, or it would be. Uh, you're not. You're not proficient with. You're, you're not proficient with goblin shit buckets, unfortunately. Um, so just go that ahead and roll a, a d20 crime. and add your dex, add your dexterity. Mark. Oh. Oh my my dexterity? What was it? strength is higher. Strength higher? No, no. Uh, oh, strength Strength is not higher for me. <laughs> oh, it is higher. So, 19. That's 19, alrighty. Oh. oh my god. You fling it as the invisibility spell wears off of you as part of the attack. You no. fling the bucket. A spray of thick, gooey, <laughs> goblin fecal matter goes streaking through the air as the illithid turns with its eyes wide to see you suddenly appear, and then suddenly see this entire batch of thick goblin shit just push <laughs> across its face. Suddenly you see its tentacles writhing as it goes, and as it screams, all of you hear in your head a scream. I'm stabbing, I'm stabbing! As, as, as it, I cast stone skin immediately. All right, as this happens, you start cast stone skin, you go in for the blade, the and you fuck? hear a counter voice in your mind. Fuck. Clarota, go. No. I cast Roll your attack. light on Grog's head! <laughs> your head comes to an extremely bright glow, all of you averting your gaze. This is stealth, right? Stealth for me? Uh, you, yes. Okay. No, you, no, you are invisible, oh, 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 okay. so... No, okay. Attack! Attack! attack. Like Kill him! 29! Yes. 29! <laughs> that definitely rolls to hit. You had surprise. Go ahead and roll. And it's a critical, right? I'm assassinating this It's a critical, technically, yep. Oh, yeah! Which way should I go down? Wait, are we going to, the, for the general? The illithid. The illithid. Yes, all. Yes, yes. All right. Should we go in? We don't know anything. So, roll damage on this. Roll my damage. Roll my damage. Oh, we can act on that. And I yeah. yeah. Stone skin, light rage. on its head, rage. going into a rage. Daylight on my shield. Daylight on your shield. I st- I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say for the purposes of this battle, there is no trinket here because trinket would not have fit right. across the way to get there. Okay. So Didn't just be you aware. Did you get an arrow? Uh, yes, and you have a, you have an, enra- an entrapment arrow now. Okay, I, I get ready for that. Okay. DM <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sixty-two and <laughs> oh! oh! sixty-two. Oh! 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 Literally. At, you Holy take shit. the blade and as it pierces the back. Oh, it's a poison one. But- Okay. <laughs> it pierces the back of its skull. You feel all the muscles in its neck tense in reaction to the blade, but the blade slips past. You can see a gout of purplish black blood begin to spill from its neck as it instinctually, instinctually reaches up and pulls the blade from the back of its head. Uh, what's, the, what's the DC on the poison? Uh, it's it's. I have no idea. Uh, Should be on the blade info. Poison dagger. Fuck. Poison dagger. No. I think it's, oh, it's uh, 15, it's 15. 15, okay. Uh, the poison does not seem to take effect, its body resists it. Uh, it is still alive, but it looks like, it's like clutching the back of its neck as it turns around looking at you, going, <laughs> you can see this blood spurting out of its mouth, and his eyes are now just burning with rage. All the rest of these Durgar are now reaching and pulling their weapons out. Everyone rolling his yes! <laughs> Natural 20! Oh, 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 oh shit! <laughs> Let's kill some bad guys! Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, 25 to 20? 20. 20. Natural 20. Yeah, but you have no bonuses. To, you should have a, your dex bonus. Oh, yeah, uh, that's a 25. 25, there we go. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you're probably going first, buddy. Yeah. All right, 20, 25 to 20, no one else? Oh, I think I got like a 21. What'd you roll? I rolled 16 plus 16. Yep, that'd be 21, yeah. 
All right. So. Uh, 19, anyone? 19! 19, nice. Uh, so. No. You're gonna wing it. 18, anyone? 18. Nice. I got 16. Yeah. I mean, do, you have like a, a, do you have like a picture or like a file anywhere saved? Of I your, got jack shit! Of your sheet? Uh, alright. We're in the war camp? We all landed on the top of their building. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, what's your? 14. Yeah, remember that 14. Oh, 16. 16. 16. 16. Alright, so yes. Tiberius. Scanlan. Uh, what was yours? Nine. Nine? Also nine. Oh, that's where we're at. Not Alright. <laughs> Pike and I are at a nine. Alright, top of the round is Vax with initiative. Nice. In the back of his head some more. I'm still invisible according to Tiberius' greater invisibility. No, 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 no. As, as soon as I, t- I, I catch strong uh, skin, okay. well, you were attacking. That's why I said this is all going to happen. Okay. You are now visible. Yep. Okay, but I'm not stealth. in the back of the head. <laughs> do I get, uh, for assassinate, do I get the critical still here, DM? Or? No. You've, okay. you've gotten the one hit. It is completely aware of you. It is not a surprise okay, so, attack. So, so that's a 28. It is, it is so aware of you. It has never been more aware of you in its life. <laughs> <laughs> I just rolled a 28. Okay, that yeah. definitely hits. And attacking with your offhand? Uh, oh, so this is my bonus attack? Yeah, you get the one attack and you get the bonus hand. Oh, okay, so which this just is... Okay, uh, this is fire. My fi- my flame tongue dagger. I got uh, two plus six is eight. 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 All right. All right. Uh, and your other attack? Are you doing your bonus attack, or do you? Just was that the bonus attack, or was that my main attack? No, this is your, this is your new combat round. That, that was your main was, attack. That's a nine, and here comes okay. my bonus attack. Okay, fourteen. Kill him. Twenty-four. Kill him. Twenty-four hits. Yes, yeah. Here comes Kill my keen dagger. Which is uh, an, is an eight. Eight damage? Yes. Okay. So the first strike, you swing across the flame tongue dagger. As it backs up, you put another gash across the front of its like neck and chest area. It reels back and it's looking at you with angry fury. You feel this coming shake, this like horrible force of severe retribution coming to your mind. And as you're bracing for it, you take your other blade, you see its mouth opens up with frustration and anger as its tentacles kind of curl back, ready to just go in for the grab and you place the blade squarely into that maw. You feel the scraping of its teeth across your knuckles, but it doesn't matter because That's whatever anger and oh. light was once in its face goes dark and dark. Yeah. As immediately it crumples to the ground, lifeless. <laughs> Pull the blade from the maw. Oh. Mind flare down. Yeah, that. All right, that, uh, he was next, but not anymore. Uh, as it falls to the ground, all the rest of the uh, Duragar immediately uh, have a reaction. Uh, we'll get to their turn in a second. Vex, you're up. <laughs> so you're on the roof up here right gotta now. You gotta get inside first. I get. We have to run down in. Run down. You're on. You're on a, a, a wooden roof surface. There. Uh, point you heard before. There are an entrance here and an entrance there. The windows are swinging down in the board. Unless like, well, unless Grog can just tear through the, the roof. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's wood. I'm you can hold initiative. Though. I guess yeah, I'll hold. I'll hold to see what the. Yeah. Hell is okay. Happening. All right. So you'll hold on that. All right. Uh, it is now. This dude's turn, the general. He, unaffected by this, it seems, just angrily leaps onto the table, runs across, and jumps down towards you. As he does, you see he, uh, his physical form seems to enlarge. Like his actual small dwarvish form it begins to swell, his muscles tense. And he's about the size of a normal person, if not a little bigger right now. He comes at you with this giant, black, jagged, metal, Warhammer oh, comes down to swing at you. As he comes down, you see it burst into flame. What? There's fire now surrounding the head of this Warhammer as it arcs towards you. What? Uh, all right. That is going to be a 20, 24 to hit. Oh, it hits, but I use uncanny dodge to try to swoop out of the way as best I can. All righty. You suffer. Once around. That would be 12 plus six fire damage, so I mean, 18 reduced so nine. to nine. You take nine Whoa. damage from the strike. All right, all right. It's going, as it, as it strikes down, it goes for a backswing to attack you a second time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is going to be a 15 versus AC. Nine. This time you just dodge, dodge completely out of the way. Dirge out of the way. Dirge. Uh, dirge. Dirge. Uh, <laughs> uh, Percy, you're up. Um, 
just in case I'm gonna I'm gonna push off and wait for Grog. So I'm holding holding my turn. Okay. Uh, Grog, your turn. Right, so we're on the roof of the thing, right? Correct, you are. I'm in a rage. I take uh, the pot still on my head, and I pick up my axe, and I draw one gigantic smash through the roof of the building. Go ahead and make a strength check. Oh, come, come on, oh, God. God, yeah. Now, come on. Now this you, is all you're good you for. Are yeah, really come on, Grog. This is all you're good for. Uh, 15. 15? Yeah. All right. What? Come on. What? Fifteen. Uh, you bring your axe up. You bring it down on top as hard as you can. Go ahead and roll axe damage. Is that a d12? It's a d12 plus your strength modifier. Plus two because you're raging. Do I get advantage on that? No. Oh, Seven? Plus two because you're raging. Nine. Nine damage. Okay. As you swing the axe down, slam! It hits the wood with the sheer weight of you there. And most of you guys climb to that point. The actual roof breaks open and splits oh, in a small space. You slide down in the process. I jump onto to, 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 to Grog's foot. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, go ahead, both of you make an acrobatics check. Oh, well, I wouldn't have had to do it. All right, well, I'm in the building. <laughs> uh, 21. Acrobatics check? Yeah. Okay. Pike, uh, you have disadvantage because you're in plate armor. Six. All right. So, Rob, you managed to <laughs> land on your feet. Pike, you actually plummet off and fall off to the side right there. Oh no. You are currently prone and from the fall, but you guys both drop down. You managed to reduce the damage, but you from the fall, you take eight points of fall damage. Okay. As you are now flat on your back, the wind knocked out of you for a minute. <gasps> Should we just Pike! Stay on the... I'm okay, I'm okay! I'm okay, thank God. All right, uh, that brings us now. Vex and Percy are the same. You first or should I go first? Uh, we'll go. We jump. Both jump down at the same time. Both jump down. Go ahead and make your acrobatics checks, guys. Twenty. Oh, I rolled really bad. What'd you roll? I rolled a two, but I added to my acrobatics. Yes, which is which you don't know. Which is like I bet. Right, your acrobatics is you're proficient in it, and you have a plus five dex. So that would bring it to eleven. Yes. Or no, a, thir- a twelve. Yes. Uh, Does it bring any power from the other room? <laughs> <laughs> you just barely land on your feet. You do take fall damage, but you don't fall prone. You take eight points of fall damage. Okay. Percy, you manage to land fine without any damage on your feet. <laughs> on the ground. Both of you kind of three-point landing, Avenger style. Do I have time to put get a shot off, or am I not? You do. That, that, that was your movement. Awesome. Um, so what's the deal? Wow. Um, I'm taking a second, and I see uh, that, that uh, Vax is getting attacked, and I'm going to just take a shot at the at the, uh, at that the guy with dual, the hammer. The, big, big the biggest thing I see. Do you, ha- do you have your glasses or, or your goggles on? Um, yeah, I actually have. Well, that's right. I have a helmet. So, yeah, I'm wearing the helmet. Okay. Cool. I'm cool with that. So, go for it. Do it, Star-Lord. <laughs> Oh, natural 20! Yeah. Against the general or against one of the Duragar? The, uh, the, the guy on the table attacking me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can just barely see him. The stairway's up there. Doesn't matter. If he, as long as but I, he has, partial cover, he, doesn't matter. Right, I know. And he does have. He has three quarters cover because of the distance, but you natural 20, so it doesn't matter. And I also. <laughs> I, I can ignore that. I ignore three quarter cover. You do, because. Uh, it's I'm awesome. Sniper. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's uh, double 1D. I should have. Gotten some bonuses on that. I'm an idiot. Um, plus five. And it's just double dice damage. Double dice damage, and then add your modifier. Yeah. That's Woo! nineteen points of damage to the general. Nice. Nice. <laughs> she gets shot in the back of the shoulder plate. You hear it ricochet, and a little bit of blood begins to streak off the back of his head. He looks over his shoulder with an angry grunt. You can see now this dwarf, who's still swelling in size, <laughs> kind of looks at you, an angry nostril glare. Um, you um, have w- your bow ready? Yeah, and I want to um, do lightning arrow on the guy attacking my brother. That guy there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Go ahead and roll to attack. Oh, I don't think I hit. What'd you roll? I yeah. rolled a four. A four. You had a plus eleven yeah. to hit. It's gonna be fifteen. Unfortunately, you miss. The arrow streaks past. Um, he. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the arrow just ended up striking the wall back here and. Poosh, Arcs okay. lightning throughout the wall. Unfortunately, it does I not. I hunters happen. mark him anyway, just for future stuff. Uh, you used your bone. used your bonus action to cast lightning arrow. Oh, so I get a regular attack now? Well, that was part of your regular attack. Like your next arrow, you fire. I get it. 
<laughs> You're going off book. This is cool. Yeah, I'm going I off book. Think. Let me double check real fast just to be sure. So I don't want to screw you out of a cool turn. That is mine. Uh, <laughs> next time, bring your sheep. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, it's a bonus action to cast lightning arrow. It's your next arrow you fire. However, you do have two attacks, so okay, you get to so shoot a second time. Yeah, okay. it just doesn't affect my lightning arrow. I roll fourteen. That does hit. Go okay. ahead and roll damage. It was one d ten plus. I think it was one d eight actually. Oh, for the long. Okay, yes, one d eight plus five for your dex, and then plus two for the bow. It's plus seven. Ten. Ten damage. All right. So the first arrow just whoosh, streaks off, hits the wall. As he's kind of staring at Percy, he looks towards you, and as he does the second arrow, shpoof, sticks into the plate, and he kind of looks at it, <laughs> and just snaps it off in the armor, uh, grabbing his two-handed sword, or the, sorry, not the, the, uh, the, the, the war hammer on the other hand. Uh, minis, it's confusing. Um, all right, that ends your turn. Grog, the light that is beaming from your helmet currently right now is filling up the room, and uh, it is extremely blight. Most, mo most of you guys can handle it. You see that all the Durgar at the table are like, Ugh! A bunch of Durgar can running in as well. As they run in, they're having to shield their eyes, but it's actually physically hurting them to be in that room right now. They're like, ah, keeping it at bay. Uh, this one attempts to run in. This one's kind of making its way over. Uh, these guys here, this one's going to go ahead and run over to here. This one's going to go ahead and come to Grog. These two are going to come up behind. Oh, yes. Okay. And uh, is, this one. Is that guy the general? That guy's the general, yes. Okay. This one's going to come up behind to you. All right. They have disadvantage on their attacks. Nice. Because of this, because of the light. So attack. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I'm so bright. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> attack against you. Yes. You're the brightest tool in the shed today. That is a 17 versus AC. You just dodge out of the way. Uh, next one, come out of this war pick against you, Grog. That is uh, 20 versus AC. That hits. That hits, all right. You take... You take eight points of damage as it slams you with its war peck in the chest. You can feel it kind of gets about a half an inch of depth into it, but you just kind of shrug it off and flex your muscles and it pops it that out of your torso. Uh, all right, the two against you. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be a 19 versus AC. Oh, That's yeah, that hits for sure. And a 17 versus AC. That hits. All right, so you take two hits. That's uh, 11 damage. Okay. And 13 damage as both of them start wailing you from behind with war picks. Exalia! Uh, I yell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is the one that's attacking you. Scanlan. Scanlan. That's going to be at the disadvantage. A uh, 15 versus armor class. 14. 14. It still strikes you. No. You take eight points of damage from the war pick, slamming you into over the shoulder. Ah, I'm so awesome, Pike! <laughs> <laughs> that ends their go. Tiberius, you're up. Uh, I'm, I'm still on the roof, right? Uh, you're still on the roof, yes. What can I see from where I, where, like if I go around, can, what, what can I see? You can there? you look through the hole and you can see pretty much the entire battlefield. You're just up here looking down through it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. You're currently the only one still up there. Yes, I think I'll stay right here. Thank you very much. Um, how tall is the roof? How high is it? Uh, like, oh, it's about... Uh, 25 feet up. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> uh, so, let me see here. Goodness, this is fun. Uh, you are technically, because I can do it. You're going to use one of the little lifties, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Bring the Finally! Fire. Bring the fire, Tiberius. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Toys. No, he's getting on toys. Oh, yeah. Come on, do something. I'm waiting for him to do something because it's so cool. I got him this for Christmas two years ago. <gasps> you are up here right now. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Three dimensional fighting. Toys, toys. <laughs> Is that visible? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet D and D rave. Um, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to. <clears throat> I see the two guards behind Vex. Yep. Right? Is that what's going on? Yep, right there. And then the one Dur guard in front of Grog. Is that what's going on too? Yep, right there. Great. I will cast. <clears throat> I cast Grand Columns under all three of those dudes and pin them <laughs> right up against the the roof um, with my columns. Clever girl. Okay. The the, the oh, pillars of it. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. But those pillars only go 15 feet up. No, they go to 25. 25. Oh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
That's why I always ask that question. All right. Yes. <clears throat> and they do, and it does sixty-six bludgeoning damage when it's pinned. Yep. Bye bye. If they don't make their save. All right. So, go ahead and what is your DC on that? Your spell DC. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. All right. All right. The hardiness of the Dorogar resilience gives them advantage on saves against spells. Um, they all make their saves. What? Um, but they are still up on these platforms now, raised above. <sighs> Jesus. Um, so what is, uh, does it do any damage if they make their saves? I don't read it right now, because we're, okay. we're, we're, we're Come on, iPhone, come on, iPhone. We're supposed to know everything. everything. iPhone 5. The fifth edition. What does it say? If it doesn't. I guess it doesn't. It doesn't okay. Say. Uh, so they are currently. What is this madness? Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm putting them. Oh, wait a minute. No. Well, I, I, you make this call. If a pillar is prevented from reaching its full height because of a ceiling or other obstacle, a creature on the pillar takes 66 bludgeoning damage and is restrained, pinched between the pillar and the obstacle. The restrained creature can use an action to make a strength or dexterity check against a spell save with their DC on excess. The creature is no longer okay. restrained and must either move off the pillar or fall off. So they still, it still happens, but they're not pinned by it. Gotcha. Okay, so go ahead and roll damage for all of them. Woo! Whew. Good to know. New spells that just got released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic. New Damn spells. Magic in the... Nah. Oh my god. So we'll say just keep the tabs on them. Awesome. Both of those are consistent. Oh, yeah. We're there. Awesome. No one okay. can tell us 27 no. damage. Exactly. 27 damage? No. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All three of the Durgar are crushed <laughs> to death against the ceiling. I did 27 damage to each one. Nice. To death? Just splat, splat, splat. Oh. They're all slamming the ceiling. You can see uh, limp mm. dwarf arms and legs now dangling out of these stone pillars that are now permanently embedding them into the ceiling. This is a crazy room. I go like this. Ha! I use <laughs> two. I use two of my uh, sorcerer points, and I cast Quicken Spell, and I look at the general, and I, because of my books I've been tinkering with, I cast Blight on his eyes. Okay. Because of water. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the and the DC is seventeen or something? Uh, yes. All right, natural twenty. So he makes his save. Oh, What's the attack of Blight? Oh. Uh, he takes 8d8 damage, and if he saves, he may take half that damage. <coughs> okay. Where was it? 10, 15, plus... They were all 8s, right? No, well, he eight, does all eight, of them in the device. But divides. you said half. 8d8. But eight. he rolls all oh, of them in the device. Yeah, I see. Uh, 15 plus, what is that? Uh, 10, 14, what is that? Your first one was... 29? 29. 29. Okay. So yeah. we'll say for that a uh, solid 14 points of damage. Two. All right, nice. gotcha. Nice. All right. No other effect than just the damage from the blight, right? Uh, yeah, because you made it safe. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Scanlan, you're up. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to, uh, yeah. God, there's so few people to kill now. <laughs> you did it all. Is it just us and the general? Wait, that guy behind you, though. Just you guys, the I can't general. Really see anything. There's yeah, a guy right behind you. Okay. Those guys got slammed, okay. and uh, he's gonna swipe at you. Like, yeah, yeah, he's dead. Okay, I'm gonna uh, cast. Dominate person on the general. <laughs> yeah, what does that do? Oh shit! No. <laughs> He's a power top. With advantage, you rolled a one and a two on the saving throw. Yes! Oh! Yes! That's ridiculous. And okay. I'm going to <laughs> dominate him and inform him. I can give him a command, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I can. I'm going to tell him to stand down and tell all of his allies to stand down. All right. He turns around, gives you a look, a strange look. Men, all of you, drop your weapons. Now, we are surrendering to our new infiltrators. He throws his uh, war hammer to the ground. Uh, the rest of them all kind of look around. <laughs> Go ahead, and uh, I'm going to have you make intimidation check on his behalf. Okay, on his behalf. Yes. Do I add mine? Uh, no, I'm adding. I'm just considering that. Uh, so you hold an eleven. Eleven. Okay. The three other Durgar look confused. Look at the dead mind flayer. Look at their general telling them to surrender, and they all kind of throw their weapons to the ground. 
and stand there, kind of with their arms to the side, kind of waiting for what's going to happen next. Uh, as you finish that, Clorota slowly oh, drifts yeah. Clorota, down. Clorota, thanks for all the fucking help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is just a minute. Um, this is going to be bad. I feel like he's going to... Clorota just kind of looks around, no, 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 assesses right. it, and you hear this voice in your mind go, I had my doubts, but well done. Thank you. So, uh, that ends that turn. Scanlan, do you want to move at all? You're going to stay where you are? I'm going to stay where I, Well, I'm going to move just a couple feet away from the guy right behind me, and okay. I'm going to, as my bonus action, might as well give Grog some dice, and also just tell everyone, remember, let's not kill the general. We need him for information. Probably if anyone tries to hit him, he'll snap out of it yeah. as well. Mm. That's it. All right. <laughs> Uh, I also take a little poo in my pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Small <laughs> kilo. <laughs> uh, there's still this is still a, a, a battle, even though I mean, yeah, 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 no combatants. And if you guys are deciding not to fight anymore, what, what what's your plan? <laughs> I come on down and I say, "Good work, guys. That was cool. That was great." Um, He's under my spell. Perhaps we should tie him up. That's what I was gonna say. I take, um, I cast Grasping Vine, and I just take a vine and I tie his hands behind his back and kind of grapple him. So that'll break the spell. But well, no, I'm not damaging it. him. I'm just hugging him. Uh, yeah, okay. hugging him with vine. With, with, with vine. Thoughts. All right, vine hugs. Uh. So, uh, as this is happening, you guys feel a familiar tremble. Oh no. Oh. Be quiet. In the ground. DM is out of his mind. Everyone make a stealth check. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, that's a 20. That is a 20. Oh. <laughs> this is the second time that's I've rolled a one. a 1 on my stealth check. Wow. I'm not 17 today. 18. 19. 14. 23. Pretty good overall. 2. 22. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's the rumble gets louder and louder, and you can see the door kind of looking around nervously. The and the rumbling kind of fades for a second. And with the cacophonous cracking sound, the stone floor beneath you splits open. No! Yeah. <laughs> right here. Uh, Percy, make an acrobatics check to try and avoid whatever is coming through. Whatever? Okay. It's a dragon! 18. It's a worm. All right, you managed to just pull out of the way. Yes! As a large... What the fuck? Oh! 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 A large, armored, four-legged creature comes bursting out of the ground around you. Oh, great. It's a rock butthole. <laughs> <laughs> you can this horrible, screeching... <laughs> Growl as this kind of hungry look in its eyes. I can I reactionary real quick take my grasping vine and just lift him and kind of put him in the corner to keep the general safe. Uh, unfortunately, no. Fuck. Is he rooted? Um, when that happens. Uh, he is currently rooted. Uh, he is considered grappled. Okay. I, I have a question. He's holding there. I was just trying Did to keep him safe. the potty break before. What potty break? Where are you? What? Yeah, no breaks tonight. No breaks. No breaks. Just go through. Yeah. 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 We're pushing through. Right. We're pushing through. We're pushing through. Right. We're pushing through. Yes. If you need a bottle. Exercise your kegels. <laughs> 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 if you really need to go, you can. When it's not your turn. No, it's fine. Okay. Just pee on, <laughs> pee on Ashley. It's okay. Suck it up. First yeah. <laughs> so, as this entity comes burrowing up from underneath the ground. Go get. Go get. Me too. It immediately makes a oh, damn strike it. against. <laughs> Guys, this is so exciting. And Laura has no idea what's going on. No clue! This is going to be a bite attack against you, Percy. Okay. That well, is. Alright, 24 versus armor class. Shit, why does it. Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that hits. Alright, <laughs> as you reactively. Attempt to move out of the way, this creature starts tearing out of the ground, gets its bearings, 
rears back, and this giant toothy maw comes clamping down onto your entire torso. You suffer 36 points of piercing damage. Oh, oh shit! 36? 36 points of piercing damage. That's going to end its turn. Shit. Pike, you're up. Okay, well. That hurt. Uh, I'm still prone. You are prone, you can use your movement to get back up. Okay, so I'll use my movement to get back up. And Alrighty. Then, um, do I also get an attack for doing that, or? Yeah, you still have your action, and your bonus action. That's just your move. A, okay. Um, I will, uh, I'm gonna use Guiding Bolt, and I'm gonna shoot that thing. All right, go ahead and roll for the attack. Okay. That's my girl. Come on, Pike. Does this guy appear to be messed up by the daylight at all? <gasps> okay. Uh, do I add anything? Uh, you, you add your spell attack modifier to your spell sheet. So top of your spell sheet. Sorry, guys. Oh, sweet. Okay, so... Uh, that would be 25. That definitely hits. Okay. So, guiding bolt, what's that do? Uh, so I roll... Where'd it go? I roll uh, 4d6. I roll 4d6. 4d6, go ahead and do that. Sixteen. Sixteen, all right. So, uh, you reach back, clutching your holy symbol, after you get back off the ground, release your hand as this suddenly flaring blast of divine energy comes cascading out of the front of your palm, blasting into the side of the face, nearly searing one of the eyes of the creature. It rears back, bringing one leg up instinctually. <laughs> slams the ground in the process. How you doing? That's disadvantage to your next attack. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, I'm I'm at uh, 38. Uh, it lands, puts its foot back on the ground, and kind of gears its attention towards you. It's looking angrily around the room for what should be its next meal. Uh, anything else you want to do? Um, can I give him a healing potion? Can I can I heal him? Uh, he's too uh, far away. You could use your bonus action if you want to use healing word. Okay, I'll use healing word. Okay, so yeah. go ahead and roll that for him. Okay. While you're doing that, uh, it brings us. All right, so. Clorota now gets its action. Yeah, Clorota. Clorota now looks wide-eyed seeing this happen. You hear a slight voice in the back of your head go, oh, this is complicated. <laughs> As it rears back, you hear the slight echoing screeching sound that just manages to skirt the outside of your mental capacity. You feel like if you were any closer or closer towards you, it would be a horrible ringing pain in your head. You're just peripheral to it. Uh, it makes its attack. Unfortunately, the exterior of the bullet and or its mind shielding is too strong. It seems to have no effect on the creature. Damn it. Uh, a bullet. A bullet is, is the entity. Bullet? Clarence. Uh, that ends his turn. Top of the round, Vax. Okay, I think. Where's the, where's the, uh, the laser? Here it is. Um, it looks like I have just enough squares to go one, two, three. Uh, who's this right here? That's a Duragar. Weapon on the ground, not armed right now. Can I get to here on a turn? I can't tell. Uh, what's your movement? Uh, it's 30 feet. 30 feet, you... Oh, I'll use my bonus action to click my haste boots together. Okay, then you can definitely do that. <laughs> okay, and since Percy is right up against it, I'm able to uh, deal sneak attack damage because there's another one of its foes. Exactly, my yes. It is, you don't get an advantage on the attack, but if you attack, okay. do hit. You can so I'm gonna try to strike him in his, his underbelly. All right. Uh, yeah, even the underbelly itself is heavily yeah, armored. You're having sure. to kind of gauge quickly where the plate is. 20. 20? Yes. 20 hits. Go ahead and roll with your sneak attack damage. So 20 hits. Okay. Oh, and it was... Uh, never mind. Uh, so three... Mm, mm, there we go. Three. Uh, 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 22. 22 damage? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Got it. Shoot. Cool. That brings us to... Alright, the general is going to attempt to make it saving throw. Oh, shit. You can do that? Every time he gets turned, he has a chance to break out of the... Well, um, and he does. Give a shit. Oh, he broke out? He broke out. <gasps> So he shrugs off the mental influence of the dominate spell. Oh. Um, no. However, he is not currently armed. He uses his. 
uh, movement or uses his action to pick up the warhammer. Fury and anger is in his eyes. He's still grappled. No, no, uh, he just broke out, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. from the grapple yeah. too? Yeah. He uses his whole turn to break out of the grapple and grab his weapon. That's all he can do. Uh, Where is he? Walls. Right there. To to fight but the bullet or to you have no turn idea. on it? Oh, we don't know. Yeah. No. He might team up with He could just now. be yeah. reacting to the bullet. Yeah. The flames know. and the hammer are out too, but it picks up the war hammer. It's yeah, yeah. cold black Davy steel Jones currently. Uh, let me see. That brings us to... Grog. Kitty! I would like to go into a frenzied rage and charge at Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> <laughs> you, leap, you leap off the higher platform, come rushing out with your axe in the air as you come down, using the full weight of your body to find the attack. Go ahead and roll your roll your three attacks. Alright, I'm on a 17. I mean, you have one dice from me. I've inspired you. Oh, pop it up, oh. Pop it up, pop it up. Grog, grog. Is it a 20 or is it a 1? Yeah, you get to add a d8 to an 20, attack roll. If, if you have a shitty attack roll, add a d8 to it. Okay. If you have a shitty 17. Grog! Smash right through his plate thingy! Okay. okay. 17. Uh, 19. Hits. All three attacks hit. Uh, yeah, that one hits. 16 yeah. plus 8. Roll. Yeah, so all three attacks hit. Roll damage for three hits. Yeah, so roll. Roll. As you come now, just slamming your great axe into the side of this armored beast, just over and over again, cleaving this nice little white section of its armor on the side. Nice fucking head over. <coughs> 14, uh, uh, 21, 21 again. Twenty-two, twenty-two, thirteen. Oh, so 22, 21, and fourteen. Whoa! Yes. <laughs> okay. I was yes. doing his math. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-one, twenty-two, and fourteen. You said fifty-seven. No, fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Yeah, uh, I don't want to do math and show you all up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's a level nine barbarian. So, Slammy, you can see a portion of its side armor splits, and you can see a little bit of that dark red, fleshy interior. Uh, it's a significant amount of damage and leave a nice little weak point in its armor. Uh, however, it still doesn't seem to be entirely phased by the damage and just kind of like shrugs at the damage and kind of glares at you for a second. One of his eyes that was focused on Percy and Keyleth now looks over at you, Jurassic Park style, with the T Rex up in the side of the vehicle. Um, uh, Vex. Um, I back up a little bit. Yeah, like that. All right. Um, and I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns on him. Okay. Um, sounds right. Nasty. So, uh, so I'm gonna shoot like a regular attack. So your bonus action to cast hail of thorns, and then you now make an attack with the arrow. Yeah, Go for right, it. Exactly. Uh, She's pointing at something up. Uh, You're adding eleven to it. Okay, good. Then uh, that'd be. I'm adding eleven. Eighteen. Mm-hmm. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Yes. So I was casting that as a level three spell. <laughs> okay. Um, I roll three d. That means I roll three d ten. Okay, against. Against 14, which is my, uh, oh, uh, is my spell level being Right. Good. Okay. Um, 3d10? Yeah, 1d10 for damage. Yep, go for it. Let's okay. get three tens, please. That's an eight side of dice. Yeah. That is an eight side of dice! There yeah. you go. Eight. Nine. 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 Yeah, too bad. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah. Nice! All right, go ahead and roll damage, double the dice, and add your modifier of seven. That arrow just went slow mo. <laughs> double the dice. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So what happens here is you yeah, you pull pull an arrow out as you whisper a couple of words under your breath. You see all these thorny spikes begin to shoot out the shaft of the arrow. You release it, and as it strikes in the front of its face, the arrow actually splinters, sending a bunch of these thorns all over its torso, piercing an inch or two into its armor with each blast of these thorns. It kind of rears back and tries to shake itself off. As it does, you get a little bit of a look as Grog backs away from it, shaking to see the wound he left. You take your secondary arrow, aim for the red soft spot, boom, slips right past the armored plating, doing the extra damage on the interior of its physical self. Awesome. Uh, That's your turn, I believe. That's all your actions. Uh, Percy, you're up. Okay, is my hand still stuck in its mouth? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like it to be. Uh, if you'd like to, yeah. You could, wow. le- could have left it there. So, do I have an advantage to hit if my gun is in its mouth? <laughs> <laughs> you are considered grappled if you leave your hand there. You can remain grappled for advantage on the attack roll. Done. Okay. <laughs> so I get to roll twice, right? Yep. Yes, you do. This is a whole new meaning to point blank. Oh, man. Come on. Uh, 11, 19. 
19, that'll hit. <laughs> okay, I spent some grit on this and okay. did some interesting modifiers. How much grit did you spend? Two points of grit. Okay, and this is the... Uh, for um, this is uh, the dead shot. Two okay. Or and I also uh, took a negative... Uh, a, I took a, a, a uh, negative five to hit for a plus ten damage to this shot. Okay. And I'm using my fire modifier. Okay. Not being an asshole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that's amazing. He's Samus yeah. blasting right now. Yes. Yeah. That's come on, come down. Ooh. 16, that's 20. 35 points of fire damage inside of its mouth. <laughs> so, your hand inside, you pull back and fire, knowing which barrel's next. You hear this dull <laughs> sound, and its eyes kind of pulse for a second with intense <laughs> fury and pain. Smoke just <laughs> billows out the sides of its mouth and its nostrils, and it begins to kind of shake its head, lifting you about a foot off the ground painfully, but you think it's worth the deal. <laughs> well done. Uh -huh. Thank Just you. Just turned him into a Texas oh, man. Saber, too. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that ends your turn. Thank you, Damn Gary it. Gygax, wherever you are. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, oh, the Durgar, currently seeing the situation and the change of tone, go and grab their weapons. <laughs> change of tone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shit got real. Yeah. Everybody knows uh, this Durgar is going to move up back to you, Scanlan, as it sees that you were the one that took over Dicks. the general. Now. Bring it. This one comes rushing in. Oh, don't they see the big thing? Bring a tank in the room. There's a bigger problem, bro. Opportunists, man. Uh, and rushes after you, actually. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? <laughs> All right, the attack against you, Scanlan. That is going to be a 17 versus AC. Yep. All right, this one is actually also physically growing in size as it comes towards you. Oh, it's getting hard. Oh, yeah. all of them. <laughs> uh, you suffer. All right. Round you always. 16 points of damage. That's such a bummer. As the war pick comes oh. slamming into your side. You can see it's coming, but you're just not fast okay, enough. It just hits you because your impact. You may have cracked mm. the rib. You're not sure. Uh, the one that's coming up against you yeah. rolls. That is going to be a 17 versus armor class. <laughs> You see it and just duck out of the way as its, its war pick slams into the stone wall next to you with a horrible screeching stone sound. Uh, hi, hi AC, Rogue, yo. All right, that ends their turn. Tiberius, you're up. I'm looking in, I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> I look at uh, where he made the crack in the in the armor. Where is that, is that on the head? Uh, that's in the head area right over here. Yeah. Right, awesome. Uh, I'm going to uh, kind of motion towards the mind flare and give a telepathic wink. It is on the ground. Yeah. I don't know, with one Are you like flirting okay. with it? All right, you make, you make a telepathic wink. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to cast telekinesis, and I'm going to pry open the metal. I'm not going to target the creature, I'm going to target the armor. The armor? And nice. mm. Interesting thought, okay. Let's see if it... And uh, nice. what, the 17 is the DC? Yes. This could be cool. All right, it fails. No. Um, so here's what happens. Uh, for the effect of this, um, it suffers, I'm gonna say it suffers about 2d6 points of damage from the tearing. Okay. So go ahead and roll that. Six damage. Okay, so six damage. However, you have effectively reduced its armor class by five. Yes! In doing so. You. <laughs> um, and I'm going to uh, spend two more uh, sorcery points. I'm do cooking spell again. And I'm going to uh, do... Uh, a, um, I'm gonna do a fireball right okay. in the hole. Go for it. And I'm going to use my meta magic wand to empower Fire the spell. In the hole. Fire in the hole. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go yeah. for it. Uh, yeah. Sure. So many dice. It's crazy. Uh, uh huh. Oh, that that hits. Yeah. I have a 19. Actually, yeah. I was about to say, does, does that crit? Does there a 19 crit? Or does no. 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 Okay. no, no I got Usually back. almost, almost like 20 is only thing. crit, except for, I think he has a uh, bonus I, I Critical no, roll, by the way. Not in the new rules. Name of the show. Oh, not in the new rules? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. You're, 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 you're good, and you're a fighter, which means eventually you'll end up with four attacks per round anyway, I, so you're fine. Uh, I can't do that. I, I'm thing. looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, okay, and then one. All right, damage. What you got? Uh, where's Scanlan? You're on deck, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. I zap him. I zap him for one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, 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 no! I empowered it. Full, full. It takes ten damage because I hit. All right, cool. Because I empowered the spell. That's right. All right, Boom. so 
As you pull down with the ray, it streaks down across the ceiling portion of the building, right into the kind of fleshy exposed part of its armor. Now it looks like it has this giant jagged scar on the side of its head where you can see muscle and sinew pulsing with each of its movements. You blast into it, you can see this dark and black portion of its uh, interior flesh is now charred and slight embers are beginning to percolate and uh, and burn on the outskirts of the impact wound. <clears throat> well done. You gonna stay where you are? Work. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scanlon, what you got? Okay, I'm going to, I know he'll get a hit on me, but I'm gonna run away from the guy behind me, run straight at the general, and just open out my arms in an outstretched big hug, and I'm like, come here, big guy, come here, and I give him a big hug, and upon touching him, I cast banishment on him and send him to another dimension. Nice! All right. <laughs> oh, that's such a good one. So, as you move, as you move away, uh, the Duragar is going to ma- attempt to make uh, uh, as a reaction to make an attack on you. Okay, it's all cool for Pike. Uh, that's going to be a thirteen for armor class. Does not hit. You, not even, you just hear it coming as you're walking, buddy. Got <laughs> under <laughs> <laughs> a war pick uh, for its a bit of advantage on its saving throw. What's the DC? DC? The DC on your spell? Well, uh, if I'm s- doing it through, through my own, yeah. cone, it's 19. Uh, I will say for this, you do not have it through your cone because you had your arms okay, open, you didn't right. specify. Oh, However, it still fails okay. its saving throw. Nice. The uh, the general, as you reach up, he has his war pick ready, peels back, pulls back its war pick as the flames <laughs> burst in, <laughs> and then <laughs> blinks out of existence. <laughs> nice move. Oh, he's gone! Oh, where did he go? I don't know. <laughs> How long does it last, by the way? It's a concentration spell. Okay. It's a concentration spell. All right. So, Scanlon Short Hawk, playing Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. Do I get a bonus? No. You did bonus action. Okay, I'm just going to uh, sing a little ditty, you know, uh, to Pike, just to give her a little inspiration. I'm just do some pelvic thrusting, <laughs> a little... That's a flute, by the way. Super impressive to play that way. His electric flute gives you a D8 inspiration dice, so you can you can add that to any attack you can roll, do saving throws, or any instrument. You're amazing. Sweet licks on your flute. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I forgot. I to drink my water. My uh, <laughs> all right. So, Keila. So, upon seeing this big thing crash in, and I'm like. Oh, yeah, I get really angry, but I just kind of analyze him, and I say, okay, <laughs> and then I go, Aggressive. Woof, woof, woof. and I turn into a rhinoceros. Ooh. Yes! Ooh. Okay, uh, I don't have a rhinoceros mini on me, so we'll use a bear for the time being, but we'll know it's a rhinoceros. Why don't you have a rhinoceros? Because I was not prepared for such Jesus things. Jesus, way to slack <laughs> off, Mercy. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna order a rhinoceros now, okay? Are you happy? <laughs> I'm going to go to uh, Toys R Us. Get the whole animal collection. You can actually buy them. You get the whole thing. All right, so you transform into a rhinoceros, now basically facing an armored beast with another armored beast. Uh huh. Yes. Kaiju right. battle. Yeah. <laughs> what you got? What you doing? I'm charging him. Make the yell. Okay. Activity in the breach. You leap down, go in for the attack. The, this Duragar already used its reaction, so it can't attack you. So if he fails to save, I knock him over. Uh, uh, that's plus seven, so 19. 19 does hit. Awesome. Uh, does save, though. It's not knocked over. A strength save? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Okay, but he... There's a big creature. He does, um, I do 2d8 of bludgeoning damage. Go for it. Plus five. Uh, seven, nine, 14 damage. 14 damage already. Do you have multi attack or did you get the one hit? The charge? Well, not charge. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the charge is one hit. Okay. But you slam into it, your horn gores. You can see, actually, you slam it into the side of the armor wound that Grog left, and then Tiberius pried open. Part of it gets pulled back, and you see a little a squick splatter of some sort of bloody splash as you're starting to actually pull apart its interior. Um, the horn is jagged in there, and it managed to shrug it off the ass point. You, you do a significant gore to its side. Good All right. Uh, now it's oh, its turn. Okay. No, no, no that's right. Keep All right. It. It's actually 15 damage. I always forget that it's like 15? Plus one to it. There you go. Yeah, don't forget that. You need to remember I that. I just realized that. Look at this. Look at, look at. All right. Uh, after taking the arrow wound and all everyone else attacking around it, it's going to try and get. 
a different situation. It's going to jump. It what? rears back and leaps into the air. Oh Jesus! No, it's not. Landing right on top oh, no! of no! Clorota no! and Stanley. Oh no! Oh no! He just jumped over. Wait, does he get a? Do we get a? You guys all get attacks on it as it jumps oh, away. Do we all get attacks? Yes, you do. Do I? Uh, no, you do not. So we get advantage, right? No. Did no, he take me with? No, he didn't take me. Okay. No, uh, no, actually, you are still in its hand, in its mouth. It carries you with it. Whoa! Nineteen. Uh, okay, so nineteen, you hit. Twenty-four. Hit. Twenty-six. Hit. And. Uh, I two. No, that's the three of you. Yes, that's it. So all you guys just roll damage for a basic attack. Come on, kill him before he gets to Twenty-four. I was right. So fourteen. Twenty-four damage. Um, 24 damage, damage, you said? 24 damage. Nice. Yeah. Was I close enough to him to get an attack? No, you weren't, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Uh, 11. 11, already. And Dang, 17. 17. Yeah. All right. Oh, so, as it pff, lands, uh, all of you guys have to make a strength or dex saving throw, your choice. Uh, for Percy, dex, uh, and Scanlan, and I'm rolling for Clorota. Clorota <laughs> fails. 20. It's okay, it's okay, Scanlan. Oh it's okay. God. It's okay, you can do this. Alright. Don't destroy the Android. 20. Device. 20, okay. <laughs> He's coming back from the other dimension. I oh, haven't rolled a nine. Okay. okay. Uh, the one hit the floor, or did you go again? No, I used the one that rolled on the floor. Alright, so you're fine. Chloro- Clorota is not prone. Dungeon Master. You're Does not. the roll on the floor count? Oh, man. What happened? I usually roll on the table. I usually like prefer to roll. But it's oh. even worse. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That'll learn you. You guys are knocked <laughs> prone onto the ground, and you all, you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage, plus 14 points of slashing damage. Just as it just lands on top of you. Yes, you take 28 points of damage as it crushes you and its claws sink into you. Clorota takes the same. Did it drag Percy through the I'll air? Die. Yep. Yes, it did. Wow. It did. Uh, my arms are my arms are still stuck in its mouth. Yeah, you're not knocked prone, but you do take 14 points of crushing damage as its mouth it's bites down on your arm again for free. That's fine. It's now going to make. Uh, it's going to actually release you, Percy. So you're you're there. And your arm might be a bit busted. It turns and makes a bite attack against Scanlan. As he does, I. Distract him. <laughs> with my with playing my charm as, as <laughs> That's the the charm makes? cutting words yeah. reaction. Okay, so okay. as your reaction, go ahead and do that. So roll the D eight. Six. Okay. Uh, he rolled a twenty seven. <laughs> you reduce it by seven. Roll a nineteen. Damn it. So even with the reduction, it's not enough. You're on the ground. Uh, and uh, it, it, it sinks its teeth right into you. You take, uh, let's see. These games keep getting better. You take 41 <gasps> points of piercing damage. Holy, Holy shit. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 No, no worries, I'm just at negative 36 now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep. Okay, so. That's a good idea. Wait, the how did that happen? That happened. <laughs> You're fine. He's, unconscious. He's unconscious. He's in bad shape, but yeah. we're gonna get him. Scanlan's looking rough. Scanlan is now being just thrashed around in the mouth of the creature. Yeah. His, le- his limp no arms more. and legs just woof, woof, woof in the air as it's kind of just running him around and across the air. You can see uh, strings of gnome blood are being flung across the room. Oh, oh. oh he's so little uh, though. He's so little. Pike, your turn. Okay, so time for a mass uh, for a cure wound. So I guess uh, let's see. You Where can't even you? see him right now. Yeah, you're gonna... If you want to, if you want to cure wounds, you have to touch him. To I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. So what? all right, what's right. your move? Can I just go? He's over there. Yeah, he's right in here. the mouth of the. She's thing. twenty-five speed. Okay, so you can move five squares. Okay. Did he get that speed boost? Uh, how close can I get to yeah. him? I can't see the lines. Do you have, the don't forget your boots, Pike. Oh, I have Spritzer's boots. Mm. I have Spritzer's boots. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use my sprinter's boots. Um, I can uh, 
While you wear these boots, you can use a bonus action and click the boots' heels together. If you do, the boots double your walking speed for one minute. So, so you can move ten them. squares. It okay. takes your bonus action. You okay, can do that. so then, I can't, I'm so sorry, I can't see the squares. So if I can get ten... So you can go there. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. There is a ledge there and he's blocking the way up. So nine, ten, make an acrobatics check to actually like jump and climb up onto the wall. Oh, oh my god! god. With disadvantage, because you have plate armor. armor. Right. Oh, but what about her? Roll again. What about Roll again. Roll again. Disadvantage, you roll twice oh. and take the lower. What about Five. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh. Can I can I cast Guided Strike, which adds 10 to, uh, when you make it? Hey, I, I, I gave, gave you a dice. He's got it. I gave you a dice. Oh, sorry. Which means you're, yeah, roll it. 10. Total of 10? Yeah. That's exactly what you need. Oh, yes! That was the baseline. You run up, yes. it takes all the strength that you can feel. You're going to be sore in the morning. All your muscles tense as you're pulling yourself okay. up. With all the inertia from the run, you parkour up to the top, land. Scalen's there, currently being flung around. You manage to reach up and grab him and get in a brief tug of war with the bull, with the bullet creature. Oh, hey, get away from him, man! As you cast Cure Wounds, go ahead and... So cure cast Cure Wounds, so does that heal... No. I was mask cure wounds or just doing cure wounds? I'll just do cure wounds. Okay. Okay. So, that's so at, uh, at what don't, level are you don't using? Don't shit out. I'm use <laughs> cast, what, cast whatever you can it's cast. One or multiple people. <laughs> can you can you do it at a higher level? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it at my highest level that I can cast, which is. Let's, let's not cheap out on scam. Fifth level would be. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'm Better play it safe and give you one d eight. So a creature you touch. Remember when I brought you back from the dead? Remember when my kiss healed you from death? Just throwing that out there. Which I think is eight. Yeah, so it's five D eight plus five. Five D eight plus five is how much you're healing him. You'll be alright. My spell attack bonus plus eight? You don't have to worry about the bonus of this, you're just touching him. Five D eight plus five. Five D eight plus five is what you're healing him, yes. Okay. All right. 15? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 15. Four. That's three. Four. I think you did four times, yeah. 18. 18? Plus five. Plus three. No? Okay. 23. Plus yeah, five. 23. 23. Uh, All right. So plus you five. That's that was plus, plus five. That is plus five. <laughs> Are you still unconscious? I'm... Yes. But now I'm only negative 11. Oh my Wait, what? Yeah, he got. Yeah, yeah. He got I've taken five. almost a hundred points of damage. No, no, no. no. You're, you're unconscious. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought you were no. Naked. How it works in this? This is a different. You have zero binder. and stay there. Right? Yeah, you go zero and you stay there. You're now up what? to twenty-three. Yeah, you don't go below oh. zero. You hit zero and you're there, making rolls to see if you die. Yeah. You only oh. have three chances. If you if you roll fail three times, you die. And if something hits you while you're on, while you're unconscious, so now it's, now you're it's an automatic fail. Now you're twenty-three. So now you're twenty-three hit points. Hey, I feel great, guys. <laughs> you're still in its mouth, being shook around. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is this ride? <laughs> this is crazy. All right, Pope, that's Pike. That's your turn. Okay, I can't do anything. Uh, right? going to get up. Come on, Crota, show us what you got. Crota looks pretty rough. What you got, man? Uh, rears back. Come on, you got now. to bring that mental power and that Come arcane on. magic. Let's do it. Uh, taking a you know. okay, taking a cue from the opening you left. Uh, Crota pulls back its hand. You see a familiar spark of bluish electrical energy as Clota reaches forward, unleashing a torrent of electrical arcane energy forward into the form of a lightning bolt, blasting across the bow of this giant creature. Uh, let's see. Uh, does does not make it saving throw. So that's. Thirty-two points of lightning damage. As the back of its armor is now seared, and you can see parts of its uh, armored flesh are kind of blackened and charred and slightly crimping. Um, Vax, you're up. Okay, uh, so I've got enough room to run up to its uh, anus, mm -hmm. which I'll do. <laughs> and uh, it's got plenty of people around, so that means I can sneak attack him. Okay, as you rush past, before you attack, yeah. Uh, this Durgar that was right by you, that is currently grown to a larger size, gets sure. a free swing at you. No thing, ain't no thing. Uh, that's going to be a 21 to hit. Okay, that hits. All right. With its war pike, it takes, or deals 14 points of damage to you. Who cares? I'm saving my gnome friend. Okay, All right. uh, here I go. Uh, 14 is a 25 to hit his butt. <clears throat> 25 hits. Okay. 
This is my keen dagger, a Vorpal Blade, 2 plus 7 is 9, that's just the 9. Where's a pencil? That's a pencil. And then we add my sneak attack damage, which is 6, 7, 10, 15, uh, 21, plus 9 is 30. All right, 30 nice. To the butt. To the butt. Specifically to the butt. All right, as you butt. rush up, you take a moment as it's thrashing about, and you can see what looks anatomy anatomy wise to be probably where it expels whatever it eats. Little hole. Yeah. yeah. yeah right so in you there. go ahead and just right in there. slash and eviscerate oh, there. How you like me now? Though. How you like me now? Even back there it's heavily armored. It yeah. takes but you have to you carve through armored and it, it you've definitely left a lasting impression Pucker on up, this baby. bullet. Pucker up. Hashtag armor <laughs> Hashtag armor <laughs> <laughs> Oh look what? Uh, oh, in the butt. This is D D in twenty fifteen people. Twenty fifteen. So that's the first attack, right? Do I get a right. second attack? The general also by the way appears as the concentration spell was lost, as you oh, were unconscious. I must have stopped concentrating for some reason. <laughs> However, uh, it is right in front of, it's like, huh, what the, huh, this is now in his face. So, second attack. Second attack. Uh, 12, this is 22. That hits. Okay, and that's a four plus 10, 10 points of fire base damage to the butt. Mm -hmm. All right. That'll worry. Preparation H. Hear how you want to do this. I'm like, I don't know if I want to hear Fire damage. All righty. Uh, that brings us <laughs> to <laughs> his turn. <laughs> the, general's the, general's the general's turn. Who now <laughs> is there from the bullet sees it, looks over and sees you. Um, <laughs> kind of sitting there with your bloody hand. It's flaming, may still flaming. Swings back and goes for your head. That is a 23 versus armor class? Uh, yeah, it's gonna hit. Okay. You armor take sucks. Uh, plus the fire damage. What are you at? Oof. I'm at thir uh, th uh, 39, I wanna say. 39, well you take 31 points of damage. All right. Uh, including the fire damage from the, the pike. It goes for its second attack against you. Oh! This thing sucks. Uh, that's gonna be a 22 versus armor class? That's gonna hit. That's a tank. One. You take... With the fire damage. That's going to be 21 points of damage. I'm out. Okay. Percy, oh, being pummeled so no. and pummeled again, oh, no. uh, loses you. Your gun falls from your hand as you slump to the ground. Your eyes roll back. Oh, unconsciousness and darkness. I'm dropping like flies. Taking you. Uh, that brings us to. Everybody knows Grog. <laughs> Me? Bah! How tall is the thing? Uh, it, tall? I'd say it's probably about. Mm, 20 feet tall? 15, 20 feet tall? Can I climb up on its back? Uh, it's not your size. It'd be Shit, really, boys. really, really tight pinning in there. Then I would like to run up to its right side and flank it. Over here? Yeah. Alright, so you run around. Uh, which you can do because you're a freaking barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go ahead. You're making your attacks? Yeah, go for it. Three strikes against it. 21. Yeah. Hits. Right. 21 definitely hits. Uh, 16 oh, plus God. 8 hits. Definitely hits. And oh, natural 20! Oh, 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 does that, that mean I get an extra? Double damage, it means double no, damage. No, it means oh, double, double damage. damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first, first strike. Kill him, kill him, kill him! Uh, 5, uh, 9, no, no, uh, 16. 16 damage? Yes. 10, 14, 20. 21. 21, thank you. Alright. Stay in school, kids. Stay yeah, school. I'll stay on the table. This is the critical now. So double the dice roll. 20. 20, thank you. Add. Come on, baby. 11, 15, plus 7, Oh, wait, no, you just no, would no. double. You double the dice and oh, then add the modifier. Oh, double the second one. Oh, double the second the one. one. So that's 40 on the last one. Nice. Okay. So, so that's 61. 61, 76. How do you want to do this, Grog? Oh, you killed him? Yes. yes. How do awesome. you want to do this, Grog? Uh, I would like to chop down into the fleshy bit, and after the I The fleshy bit's on the opposite side, by the way, so uh, you're, you're now at an unarmored yeah, side. Really. However, it's still holding Scanlan in its mouth, shaking oh. him around. So, how do you oh. want to finish it? Can I, can I get to its mouth at all? Uh, I could say for the flavor of this, yeah, you yeah, managed to, to just barely make it over here. I would like to swing through and catch the corner of its mouth, open its mouth wide, and then I'd like to reach in and with my teeth pull its fucking tongue out of its head <laughs> and start thrashing it side to side. All right, so, so, first you rush up with your axe using all of the aggression, you take it and swing it. Barely leaving you with a shade, oh. um, <laughs> you gash the side of its mouth and draw this giant wound open. As it does, you actually snap and cut through the tendons that cl clench the jaw, causing it to fall open and slack. Scanlan spills out of its mouth, hitting oh. the ground with a dull thud. 
uh, as its mouth is now open, it kind of rears back. Okay. You shake your head angrily as the froth is gathering at the corners <sighs> of your mouth. You reach, uh, you drop your axe from one hand, grab the jaw, reach in, bite down <gasps> on its giant meaty tongue. Using your hand at the back of it, you pull and yank and you feel all the muscle tearing and tensing before eventually it comes free and it's now dangling about 25, 30 pounds of, <laughs> of liquid, <laughs> uh, very, very wet, select <laughs> tongue meat. <laughs> With your third attack, how do you finish it? <laughs> what do you do after your biting gets tongue in your mouth? That's what I'm asking. That's a good point. Um, it's looking really rough, but you still need to get that final death blow. What are you doing with this, Grog? Rip him apart. Rip him. Brain him. Rip his yeah, I'm going to King Kong his jaw. I'm going to take the broken part at the top of his head and just pull yep. it apart. Yep. <laughs> okay, so you drop your axe entirely. The tongue's still dangling from your mouth. You reach and put one foot up into the bottom of the jaw yep. using your other hands. You push and push. You hear it crack and pull as it tenses and is trying to push down. It has no tension because the jaw was destroyed. You pull back and you hear a sickening snap as the armor plate buckles underneath where the neck joint would be on such a creature. Uh, you, its eyes kind of roll back for a second and it begins to slacken. As it does, you reach up with your fist and penetrate the bottom of where its brain would be with a sickening <laughs> sound. It goes entirely limp and collapses in the ground. And that's why you're on the team. Yeah. 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 And as it falls, I, the tongue that's hanging in my mouth, I look to one of the dwarves that's left and I go, Who's next? <laughs> and we're going to end it there for the night. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn, Damn, guys, well that. done. I'm, I'm sleeping. Oh, Jen, Percy's, Percy's dead. Hashtag sick Percy. Hashtag save Percy. Before, uh, save Percy. before we finish, I'd say go ahead and throw a heal up on him. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good plan. Okay. So. It's nasty, man. <laughs> you guys picked that, by the way. Oh, oh they seriously? Did? Yeah. You dicks. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> that, was Thanks, a, that was a chat room. Try decision. harder next time. Yeah. We'll be doing more of those as time goes on. Not all the time, but whenever I have the opportunity to put it in there, I'm going to start asking for you guys to help me figure out what to throw at these you adventures. You sadists. So. <laughs> yeah. We shouldn't call well the other option, should we, just in case you want to save them? Oh, no, they'll be they're coming back in. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, I feel that's, that's yeah. good. Um, so, hey. guys, we're, uh, we're going to be doing a Q&A. Yeah, yeah, for anyone yeah. who wants to stay over. Anyone who wants to stick around, the audience has a ton of questions for you guys. And for the audience, it's a sub-only Q&A. So if you've been wondering whether or not you should sub, let me give you, you some reasons sub. why. Mm. Number one, you can ask these guys questions in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, every 50 subs, we're giving away uh, tabletop promo kits that are like $250 worth of special stuff. Pretty and we'll ship that internationally. Doesn't matter, even in Antarctica. We want someone in Antarctica to do tabletop day. Do you know anyone? I don't. We had someone last year. Yeah. Well, shit, we gotta reach out then. I, well, they, they're, they're gone. gone. They were like the only people there. And I have gone. a friend. <laughs> there's nobody there left. They were the last bastion. Uh, well, somebody needs nice. to move to a, to Antarctica in the next few days and let us know, because then we, we can totally use we that. We also do a Minecraft server for subs only, but if you want in on that, there's no automated message for that server info. So just make sure and message the Geek and Sundry uh, account, and we'll get you that sub. Uh, IP address for the Minecraft server. Yeah. And what, I know we have more. There's lots more stuff. We do some other sub only chats throughout the week. Um, lots of emotes, other fun stuff. But we're going to go ahead and roll some videos while we get set up for the QA. Yep. And this was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, guys, hold on. I would like to challenge you guys to do a quick little donation drive for the charity that you guys support. Yeah, yeah, for A26LA. Uh, had it going up in the chat room. If you have the opportunity, you want to help support uh, these children getting. Uh, side educations and Pointed tutoring. Yeah. Um, well, you guys. Well, yeah, I know. Yes. Um, do, you, do you guys want to tell them about it just to get them psyched up for it? Because yeah. we can get that command yeah. going. Yeah, 826 LA, they're a nonprofit organization that helps uh, primarily with literacy and creative story children for children between the ages of like 5 and 18. Um, they, are, they have a really great young authors book that you can buy that's a collection of all of the kids book and you can also go and check out the time travel mark there's one in echo park and then there's also mm -hmm. one in marina del rey uh but you should just google 826 because there's i know there's one in seattle i know there's one in like atlanta new so york, there might san francisco. new york san francisco there might be an 826 in your city 826 and la probably right? 826 yes. la is who we're 
yeah. uh, raising money for. Uh, but yeah, all of the 826 <laughs> storefronts are a little bit different depending on where you go. Yeah. They're super cool. Guys, go please to the store. check it out. Awesome. It's, it's, it's a good, good group of people. What they do is fantastic. And uh, if you have the opportunity, please do go ahead and donate to the charity. Um, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in for the fourth episode of Critical Wall yeah. with the grand return of Pike, our cleric. Oh, who is yeah. fantastic and necessary. Glad to have you back. I'm sure everyone here is glad to have the healer back. Um, I am super happy. Yeah. I'm very happy today. I'm super, super happy. Especially <laughs> right today. now. And the surprise return of Laura. Yeah. So I'm glad you can make what it for the... What a time to join the game. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to take a little bit to set up for the Q&A. Those who can stay, feel free to. Those who can't, totally understand. We have kids and families to get to, but... Uh, those who can, we'll be here for the Q&A for the next oh, hour or so. One more thing before, oh, just so they know one more we're, thing. we're following through. We have the picture for you guys. Ah, yes. Yay! Yeah. 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 All right. So, Nyrith oh, cool. won this Nyrith. when we reached 1,000 subs, so I yep. think Pike is all that's left yep. of that. Pike's left to sign this player's oh, handbook. I haven't signed it. And then we've got oh, the picture. The picture. So we'll pass that around Fancy. while we're doing the You have uh, not. Setup. All right, we get that for you as well. All right, so do, do we have the gold marker? I know. I don't know. All right, cool. But yeah, guys, we're going to go ahead and set up for this. We'll see you in a little bit for the Q&A. Thank you again for watching. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. It's an awesome day of Critical Role. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Commercial break. Hey, nerds, I'm Will Wheaton. I know, right? And guess what? It is back. International Tabletop Day has returned this year on April 11th. What is that you say? What is Tabletop Day? Well, if you don't know, then shame on you. International Tabletop Day is a worldwide celebration dedicated to the tabletop games we love to play with the people we love, people we like, people we've never even met before. It doesn't matter. Last year we had over 3,000 registered events across seven continents and over 80 countries. That is amazing. But this year we're going to make it even bigger. Will Wheaton, how could we make it even bigger than last year? That's what she said. Start now. Trend hashtag Tabletop Day on Twitter because that was awesome. Broadcast your plans on the internet. Make a video, share pictures, start a blog, create a dating profile for other sexy gamers in your area. Whatever you want. Celebrate it in your own way. But we want to hear from you. Be sure to use hashtag Tabletop Day or at Tabletop Day to let us know. It is up to you, world. Visit TabletopDay.com to register your event or find one near you. You can also download exclusive content and check out some of our favorite games. We will be streaming our own live event here in Los Angeles for you to watch. And there will be more on that soon. You love tabletop games and we love you. So join us in the global celebration on April 11th. Play more games. Hey everybody, I'm Will Wheaton and I am coming to you semi-live from the Twitch TV set here at the Geek and Sundry stages in beautiful downtown Burbank, California. I am here to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about Tabletop's RPG show coming this June, but we're afraid to ask or have been asking for close to a year and I've been saying we'll tell you at some point in the future. You can consider this the big announcement. announcement. It was incredibly difficult to cast this show. We needed people who were very comfortable improvising, who had experience playing role-playing games, and who were available when we planned to shoot the show. It was surprisingly difficult to get a pool of people who fit all of those criteria and choose the most awesome among them. So, your cast playing in this wonderful show are Yuri Lowenthal, Laura Bailey, Hank Green, and Allison Hayslip. I'm really excited to have these people all together. They're all my friends. They are all wonderful storytellers, and they are going to be a tremendous party of adventurers. I'm only going to try to kill them a little bit. The most frequently asked question since I announced that there was going to be a tabletop RPG show is, Hey, Will Wheaton, why are you so awesome? The second most frequently asked question is, what system are you using to power this game? First and foremost, I needed a system that was going to support the way I play role-playing games, and that is telling a story collaboratively with a group of players with me as the GM. I looked at some very well-known systems like Dungeons and Dragons and Savage Worlds. I looked at systems that I love uh, like Fate Core and uh, I even looked at uh, the uh, True 20, a D20 modern system. And I really wanted to use something that was released by an independent publisher. I wanted to bring something to the forefront of the role-playing world that maybe not as many people are familiar with as 
audience I want them to be. But I want to play the way that I played when I was falling in love with role-playing games when I was a kid. I want to be able to sit around on a couch and some chairs with my friends, not have to worry about a map on a table in front of us, and just work together to use our imaginations to tell a story. But there's a system that I really love that's elegant, it's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, it's very easy to understand, and it really just gets out of the way when you want to tell a story together. And that is the adventure game engine that Green Ronin Publishing used to drive the Dragon Age tabletop role-playing game. I asked the developer three years ago to please make generic so that we could build a setting and put on top of it. And they said, yeah, actually, this is something we really want to do. And it's come together. We have been able to work together with Green Ronin to develop the fantasy adventure game engine. This is going to take a lot of the things you know from the Dragon Age RPG and put it all together to support our world, which I have had the best time creating. I sat down three months ago with some amazing writers and just started brainstorming about what kind of world we wanted to explore. But what I kept coming back to is, I love science fiction and I love fantasy. Why not put them together? Why not build a world that is inspired by the 1978 heavy metal movie and 1980s amazing Saturday morning cartoon show Thundar the Barbarian. I thought it would be great for characters to encounter goblinoid kind of creatures, and instead of them using crossbows, they're using laser rifles. I've got it all worked out. We have a huge team of writers that put all this together, that built an amazing codex that gave terrific logic to all of these uh, decisions that we made. But we're not gonna tell you what they are. You may discover some of them during the course of the season. So what is the name? of this incredible world. The title of our show is Titan's Grave, The Ashes of Volcana. And you can sort of come up with your own ideas about what those words mean. I know, but I'm not telling, because that's not how the Wheaton talks. Titan's Grave, The Ashes of Volcana, will premiere right here at geekandsundry.com on June 2nd. For those of you not in America, Titan's Grave, The Ashes of Volcana will premiere right here on Geek and Sundry on 2 June. So I hope that you're as excited about this as I am, and I hope that you will tune in and then watch us for 10 straight weeks of incredible high adventure storytelling. And until then, play more games. Hey guys, Ivan here, the host of Game the Game on Geek and Sundry's new Twitch channel. I'm here with Becca, Ify, and Hector to get you excited about International Tabletop Day. So International Tabletop Day is going to be on April 11th, and all of our friends at AEG have brought us an amazing edition of Love Letter in order to play with you today. That's right, nerds. It's Batman Love Letter. Now, Batman Love Letter is a game of logic, deduction, and risk in which you try to capture or hold the highest valued card in your hand by the end of the round. And in the meantime, we'll all be playing cards in order to eliminate each other. But whoever has the highest valued card at the end of the round will win a token. So, who will be the greatest detective in all of Gotham? It's gonna be Batman. Oh, no, 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 no. It'll be Poison Ivy. You guys both are wrong. It's going to be Bane. It's probably not gonna be Robin. <laughs> all right, now normally we would play until seven tokens, but for the purposes of this video, we'll play until three. Whoever gets three, is gonna win. Let's play. Great. Use so, out your cards, Becca. One to each. Burn the first? Burn the first. Burn the first. You have to burn a card before you even begin because there is a mystery card that isn't in play normally. So keep that in mind when you're playing. Burning a card? Who are we playing with? The Batman villain Firefly? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a flamethrower. Alright, fine. Just so you know, I'm doing a set at the comedy store and I need three friends to show up. So uh, what time. night is it? I'm busy that night. Uh, I, I didn't even give you the time yet. Hector, why don't you go first? <clears throat> Robin. <laughs> Robin. Robin. The man wonder. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna play Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got protection for my entire next round. Right. So every single time you play a card, normally it has an action that it's attached to it. So I'm playing Catwoman, who allows me to look at another player's hand. Poison Ivy. Noted. 
Now it's your turn. It's my turn, so I draw a card. I'm gonna hang on to that one, maybe. And I also play Catwoman. And I'm going to look at Bane's hand. That's terrible. You make fun of me, but you lack the understanding of my strategy. <laughs> I will play the Batman. I can't guess Robins because he has immunity, but I can guess Poison Ivy. If he can guess correctly, not only does he get a token, but she's eliminated from the round, and now there's only three of us available. So it's one step closer to victory. Not What's your guess? Happen. My guess is Two-Face. Incorrect. Robin. Thanks. Thanks, Batman. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm also going to play Batman. I'm going to guess that Poison Ivy has the Joker card. Incorrect. Ah, darn it. Nope. Jiminy Jillikers. All right. <laughs> now you have to do something terribly embarrassing, right? Or is that just house rules? Like maybe wear a Robin costume? Cool. Oh, Sounds good. Done. Oh, already doing it. Great. Figured so it out. great. Um, I have two cards, and I'm going to also play the Batman. <gasps> You've been picked on a lot, Poison Ivy. I've been picked on so much. Uh, and you played, you played a Batman. Get him, Batman. I'm gonna guess you've got a Poison Ivy. You're wrong! Ah! Ah! Right. No survivors! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Go ahead, Poison Ivy. If anyone's wondering why so many Batman cards are being drawn, it's because there are five in the deck. There's either one or two of all the other characters. Right. So I draw, and I will play myself, Poison Ivy. Huh. This card says, choose any player, including yourself, to discard his or her hand and draw a new card. Ivan, you look pretty confident. Discard. Discard. And draw right. a new hand. Add a two-face. Bang. Oh, it's time for me to draw. I have a hard time thinking that we're going to get anything out of you in that mask. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You'll see. What did he say? I think of something about seals. Did you need help opening a seal? I'll play the Batman. <laughs> And I will guess Becca again. She has the Harlequin! Incorrect. Ah. No Harlequin. Jeez, we're terrible at this game. We're yeah, really, really right. bad. My turn. I'm great at it. We'll have to know sooner or later. Hmm. He's in there. Or he's there. Not there, there. <gasps> Not there, there. There? There. Where? Okay. I'm going to play my own version of Bane. Mm, that's a terrible That was card. horrible. You don't have the mask. Myself and another player can secretly compare hands, and whichever hand is lowest is out. So I'm gunning for you, Poison Ivy, because you kissed me that one time, and then you, like, didn't want to hang out with me afterwards? Like, that was really mean. Yeah, so, I didn't even text I had ulterior ball. motives. All right. I'm not looking. Bad Aha! I'm not looking. Loyal Batman. I'm out of the game. You're <laughs> yes! I had myself again. Woo! Which means you have a higher numbered card. Yes, that is correct. Absolutely, five. higher than five. Good detective work, Batman. <laughs> I am the greatest Real genius, detective. this one. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right. This is the last card of the deck, which means after this, whoever has the highest card wins. Duh, Batman, we know. God. All right. So I'm playing Robin, Robin. <laughs> All right. That makes me think he has the Joker. Well, we'll find out, mm. won't we? What do you What do you got? I have myself! Bane! Boom! Harley Quinn beats Bane! And the Joker ah! beats Harley Quinn! Oh, Darn it. I got you, Joker! Take so, your token. I will take ah. my narcissistic token this that has my symbol on it. This is just what Batman needed, an ego boost. Yeah. Batman really? needed an ego boost. Really? Great. Robin! Oh, actually, yeah, I will just the cut the back. The Deb Show. You seem to live with a multi-billionaire, yet can't afford contacts. What's the deal with Wait, that? Back up, back up. No burn card, no burn card. Oh, great. Oh, no burn card, thank you. So, uh, since I won the last round, I get to play first, because I am the greatest detective. And I got a, a cat woman, which means I think I'm interested in Bane's hand. Okay. What you got, Bane? You got crap, is what he's got. Choose any player, including yourself, to discard his or her hand and draw a new card. Hector, burn your card. You got it, but it's Robin. And I'm not going to tell you again. All right. Uh, I had Batman, which Goodbye. is cool because he's the least value card in the game. So that's just going to help me out. So I'm just going to grab a new card. All right, I'm going to draw, draw a card. Oof, 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 such a good card. Mm. <laughs> who are you, you going to use it on, Bane? It seems probably like Batman. I'm going to do a Batman card. <laughs> Robin, do you have poison ivy? <laughs> No. All right. My turn is over. All right, it's my turn. Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, Carrie Kelly, 
John Blake, help me. Okay, here we go. My girl, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, bam! And I want to look at Bane's hand. Show me back here, buddy. Show me back here. What you got? I got this. Okay, good to know. Oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to just play my Ward Robin. You're welcome. Always Grant protecting me immunity. You. Batman, I'm going to guess that Bane has poison ivy. You're wrong! You'll never have poison ivy. I'll use Catwoman! To look at another player's hands. Pause for air. Uh, uh, uh. I will look at Poison Ivy's hand! Don't do it, Bane. Don't fall into that Venus fly trap. Get it? Because it's a trap. Because it's, it's a plant-based pun. Good job. Oh. There it is. There it is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Robin, Robin, go ahead. Okay, here we go. What's it gonna be? I'm gonna play Batman, and I'm gonna guess that Bane has a Batman card. You are wrong. For once, he doesn't have a Batman okay, card. Okay, fine. That's fine. I want to point out to the watchers. Hector looked at my hand. Oh, I did. That's true. And saw me play <laughs> I did do that. a card. He knew exactly which card was in my hand. That's right. And chose the wrong card. This is why you're the boy wonder and not Batman. I'd like to point out that my chest has made me very uncomfortable. Oh. And I'm clearly out of my element. And dressing me up as Robin was a good call, everybody. Good call, everyone. Good call, guys. Wow. I really thought that was game over for me. <laughs> I was wrong. Oh my god. Your annoying voice has really gotten into my head. <laughs> Oof. Oh. Uh, That's his greatest power. I also have the Batman. So we know he doesn't have a Batman. You know what it is. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Useless. So I'm going to guess that Bane has... Harley Quinn. You were wrong! Damn! I tried. There, all the clues are there. Just one missing element. I played Batman. I'm going to guess that Bane has Two-Face. You were wrong as well! He has the Joker then. Or something. Um, How could you throw that many Batmans at a single man and not get what he's got in his hand? He really did break you. He really did. He truly did. And now I'm Nightwing. Great, that's how long that took. I'm going to play <laughs> Two-Face and trade hands with Becca. Uh-oh. That's where it was. All right. Robin. It's my turn. Mm. Diddly fingers. If you guys Thank think you're going to win this, you don't know Dick Grayson, because that's my real name. I'm going to play... Bane. Bane kind of, it up. What, what's up? Who's gonna who's gonna compare? It's gonna be you, Batman. <gasps> oh. Let's see what you got, old chum. Oh, bye. You're out. <laughs> ah. Batman cards. Oh, so nothing, Batman's out. Batman's nothing makes me worst. happier than that. Oh my gosh. How's it feel? How's it feel to, to knock good. a man down from his tower? It feels great. Right. Okay. How's it feel for not giving me? Great for my back. All right. Uh, it's like a massage live. every What's morning. up, everyone? You got this camera right here in the middle, right? Hello! Awesome. Oh, hi. Hello! Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. These guys all being crazy players and kicking ass and occasionally getting knocked unconscious. Hey, Mom, really... can you put this in sub mode for us? Let's do sub mode. So you have to sub. Sub mode. Oh, Bye, everybody who's not a sub. Bye! Bye. They just can't ask questions. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, your word is not just be Laura, Laura had to, right. had to bugger out. So for, uh, Wait, is that a little okay. iPhone of you? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's an emoji. Now. You're weird. an emoji? It's weird. I just made it. You made it. It's a matter of time before they get <laughs> Alright, so how are we doing the questions? Are, are we just <laughs> picking as we go? You can, you can moderate yourself. Laura and right. Sam no. did leave. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately. Laura yeah. had to go to a thing and Sam had to go to a thing. Sam's got babies. Sam's thing is kids. Sam has two kids. Liam has two kids, but hey, he's smart for it. Wow, that's just a couple of things. Wow. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I am so sorry, everyone. He's, I mean, he's pretty good at dungeon mastering, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's our, pretty our good. Oh, yeah. someone asked what alignment we are. First question, uh, what alignment are our characters? Oh, um, we're all good. Chaotic good, I Chaotic good? Chaotic good. I'm, uh, Tiberius is chaotic good. Chaotic good. What was your first role-playing experience, everyone? I saw that go through. GURPS in high school. GURPS? GURPS. That's GURPS. hardcore. Yeah. Second edition of this Dragons in high school. Uh... This was my first, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, this guy just started. I okay. did uh, AD and D in high school, and I DM'd while playing, which is totally cheating. This is the first pure. Uh, pure <laughs> this is my this is my first uh, campaign. Also, that was a magic game. Yeah, I, I actually had Matt as my first AM way before, like, all this started, and then so I played a few other games, and then. Now I'm back to the OG master. Mm. I, I saw when and how did you all start playing together. The, the reason this started is because I directed Matt as <laughs> Leon Kennedy in Resident Evil 6. And every time he came in, he, he would say, Hey, you know, I, I play, I, you know, I'm running a game. You could come in and just do a one-off. And I was like, oh, I got babies. I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. And then finally, once for my birthday, I thought, I'm going to do a one-off. It'll be the only time we'll do it to see how it goes. Sam, uh, Scanlon and I do, did a podcast uh, together, and every week we would do some new thing. We're like, "What the fuck it? Let's play D and D." And we all did it, and everybody got snake bit, and it's been yeah. the best thing that ever happened to me, at least. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, our our character alignments do matter on how we play the characters. That's they do. Question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do def definitely yeah. matter. Uh, a couple quick questions, answers here. Uh, the conversion from Pathfinder to fourth to, to fifth edition was decided because, as we're going on to the show. And we have so many players, combat tends to get bogged down in a lot of floating modifiers in Pathfinder, and for large groups like this, it's difficult to keep it flowing and moving. I felt once I had taken a look at 5th edition that the combat system was a little more simplified and a little easier to make free form and just roll with it. So that was a much better decision. Plus, Dungeons & Dragons generally has a better name recognition than Pathfinder, so when you're putting a show out there, uh, it's probably easier to do with very minimal transition. It took a little bit of customizing, like for Percy's Gunslinger, uh, we just had to customize it. We made it ourselves. We sat down and... Took a day. Uh, took took a, day. a day. And we worked out some of the stuff we wanted to keep, some of the things that didn't break it, wanted to make it interesting, because it is it is a martial archetype for the fighter class, mm. so it does get, you know, the bonuses the fighter class does, so nothing's too overpowered about it other than just having custom, custom weapons and some cool grit-based abilities that we kind of transferred over from the Pathfinder. But it's interesting. It's a... It's a, it's a, it's a it's a, it's a good challenge to see how it works it out. Is, it's like working it. out. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. I've, I keep reading and finding things I'm not doing that can be more interesting. So, but um, you know, keeping your hand and firing into the mouth of a bullet. That, that was fun. That, <laughs> that felt great. Hey, uh, <laughs> Travis, dope. everybody's asking about. Where'd your you get your shirt? shirt. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think it's a website called Redbubble.com. Oh yeah. I just yeah. googled Grog, and there was there was that <laughs> Google Grog. <laughs> I needed it. Just Google I needed it right away. Right, right, that's right. And I'm also we'll saying, like, why did we switch from Pathfinder to Fifth Edition? Yeah, well, which I instead of second ago. Right, but yeah, the idea being that the reason we switched was it was easier for large scale combat, and the system was a little more simplified. And I felt for such a large party, it would be easier to do. Plus, character creation for any guests we have in the future. So that was the main reason. I love Pathfinder, but at this size, it's good. Answering an earlier question too, I saw someone ask a good party size, legitimately. My, my preference is between four and six players. Um, this works because they're amazing players and because we keep it very kind of free form and not getting bogged down in minutia too often. So, uh, but four to six players I think is a good sweet spot. Hmm. Uh, I see, does Keyleth have limitations on what animals she can transform into? Uh, yeah, for the most part I can only transform into beasts and I have to be under a certain challenge rating. So right now at my level, I can only turn into beasts that are a challenge rating of three or lower. Yeah, a third of your druid level, right? If, yeah, a third of my druid level, which is nine right now. Um, but for the most part, I can change into almost anything as long as it's under a challenge rating of three. Pike, how do you feel about Scanlan? Do you return his affection? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm on the fence about him. I mean, <laughs> he's really pretty great, but I, I don't know. I'm not really sold yet. You know, Pike, I feel like we haven't actually ever girl talked about this. I know, we never girl talked about it. <laughs> we should. I know, we should talk. I, I just, I, I really like him. I think he's really funny. Yeah. I really like, you know, the fact that he's a musician, but. That's hot. I don't know. I, I'm not really sold on him yet. I'm just concerned if he could treat you well. I know. I. You know what? He <laughs> really likes to. Got bad habits. Nothing yeah. Is gonna come from this. He likes to frequent brothels and things like that, which 
you know, I'd want to give him his freedom and his space, but I don't know if I'm into it. If I say it so you can understand it, what's the point, Tone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's asking if we'd like presents. I think we'd all like fan art. Fan yeah. art's awesome. Fan art's yeah. awesome. We yeah. love it. Yeah, immortalize our, our uh, shitheadedness. That'd be great. Oh, that's yeah. true. And a uh, couple people on there were asking about my ears. And I really like supporting small businesses. Um, and there is a store on Etsy called Tiny Tangerines. And she makes these by hand. Um, and makes like deer and bears. She makes a ton of stuff. That's so. really cute. Socrates asked what, oh, there's oh. the, well, we still got that little one. Socrates yeah. asked, uh, what was That's a cute. favorite moment before we started streaming the show? And our first game. Oh. Our first game was pretty amazing. Our first yeah. game was great. Um, I've yeah. got some good memories from that one. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, most of us yeah. couldn't, I, I, I was giggling uncontrollably. I couldn't believe we were doing it. <laughs> and just watching my friends, who I work with all the time, just dropping into character like that. There was no, oh, let's see, what will I do? What am I doing? I will move, I will roll that. Like Bailey, yeah, Bailey dropped into character from the get-go and yeah. was a ringer. Yeah. Um, but the, the moment I was thinking of was when Pike died. Pike died. Like died, died. Shortly before we, we switched from this. private to public and, uh, it was emotional. A couple of people started crying. I teared up. You know, we put yeah. two and a half years into this, and we're all very connected to it. it I'm not going to get into it, but I've had a you know hard couple of years personally. Everything's fine, but this was like therapy for me. And to see one of my friends go down was it yeah. was, 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 was fucking emotional. Yeah, I, I yeah. think yeah. a few people yeah. were crying. I, I think yeah, everyone I was, was crying. crying. I, was, I was crying. I was definitely crying. <laughs> I was like, no, I love doing this so much. I don't want to. I mean, when you spend that much time with people for yeah. over two and a half years, you get so attached and attached to the characters. Yeah, and yeah these char we know these characters almost as well as we know each other now. Yeah. 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 Really, uh, really factoids, yeah. the tower you made for us in Minecraft is awesome. Seriously, well done. I mean, look at the pictures. That's yeah. great. Ref, come on, really actually cool. go through it. Wait, we have a tower? Yeah, this Minecraft. guy built an entire tower for the group. And everyone no has a separate way! Room and stuff. On, they on built the us a castle grayskull? Essentially, on the, on the, on the, ca the Geek and Sundry Minecraft what? server. Yeah. To uh, answer... No. no. Wait, no, I did see that. No, it was what? huge. Sculpture? The over the of what? Yeah, of him. <laughs> Someone made a sculpture of, of no. no. Did you make it or somebody else? Huh? You make it? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, somebody else made oh. it for you. <laughs> do, we, do we have 50 bucks in the budget to go on eBay and get a Castle of Grayskull uh, set yes. to put on set somewhere? Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. do that. There you go. Okay. Uh, let's see, a couple yeah. quick questions. Uh, to answer a question, uh, there is an origin yeah. of Tiberius. <laughs> Uh, fully written. Um, I won't say it all right now, but uh, he comes from a political family, and he's there's there's a whole bunch of layers to him, and he he has a he has a thought of a thought out character. Um, I, I the buffoonery is half planned, um, and, uh, <laughs> and I mean we're uh, all really like deep thought out characters. Yeah, and and uh, and well, they, they, they asked if, if I actually like uh, a story for him. Uh, no. And he does have a thing uh, for this character named Alora. Right? Yeah, Arcanist yeah. Alora, the one that actually sent them on this mission. Yeah, uh, he has kind of. I have a thing. thing. She's super awesome, hot sorcerer. I think she's hot. She's pretty hot. Okay, yeah, she's super hot because of the fire. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the gunslinger class info. I actually posted on Twitter a few days ago. It's on my Dropbox. If you look through my Twitter. Uh, it's on there. Otherwise, we'll probably put it up on the website when all the website stuff is up there. I'm, I mean, I'm happy to release it now. Uh, I think the old's pretty balanced. It's fun. Uh, might have some tweaks down the road depending on how things play out, but uh, yeah, just go to my Twitter. You'll find it there. We're gonna get a, we're gonna have a website with all our like character histories and how yeah, we we're working, and like working on it. Yeah, it'll, it's a, like a lot of things right now. It's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked what kind of food would we like. Working on it like this. <laughs> Ooh, like Thai food. I like Indian. Indian's, Indian's good. Indian's, Indian's yeah. really good. I've really yeah. noticed. Let them know not to order food. No, no, no. Don't. don't. That's don't a terrible food. idea. Yeah, we just had a bunch of chicken. That's a terrible yeah. idea. Good. Oh, you mean like right now? Yeah, don't do it right yeah. now. You tell them what you want, all of a sudden I'll get a call. It's like, your food is on the way. <laughs> yeah, no, not right now, but maybe next week. Matt, you're going to Wizard World in Philly? Yeah. But we will not be joining because we don't oh, yes. own a private fucking plane. But I'll be there. <laughs> well, yeah. Marisha, Marisha, be there? Marisha will oh, be really? there. Yeah. Well, one of them. We'll Somebody asked something I'm not. like, what do we hope is the, the result of this show? I can't remember the wording, but I mean, obviously we're doing this because we, we love each other and we're having fun together, but I also hope, you know, that D&D &D has been, sort its entire history has been like, oh, this is this weird thing that guys do with dice in a room. I Anyone can do this. its I love video games. I work in video games, but 
D and D has changed my life. Mm-hmm. It is social. It is person to person. It is it is real because it's people in a room doing shit together, and that's kind of lacking a little bit in our world. And I, I would say find some friends. I mean, I, I love that there are sort of online tools to play with people across the country. But if you can find three or four people in your town to do this, I'd say do it. Do it. Because it's, yeah. do it's it. just really real. And yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, there's, do something, it. <laughs> there's something really amazing about the fact that we're all essentially kind of building and communally developing a story together. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's not that's something that not a whole lot of things can grant you and that we don't really get in today today's society much. Um, yeah, we're all kind of creating this is a thing and I, I think it's good that we're like hey this is socially acceptable it's like right. D&D's cool we yeah. should, everyone should play D&D and actually yes the, I, the IT crowd episode of D&D is one of the best on camera examples yeah. of a D&D True. game yeah, I think that is an it's awesome episode fucking hilarious and a great like truncated version of like this is kind of what the game is so yeah yes. good on you Cut to them weeping. So many questions going so quickly. I know. Grog owned the tavern. Uh, what do I, I think want a Grog shirt that says, do it. I, and the, like the kitty <laughs> shirts were an accident. The kid, this was not planned. Oh, yeah, our, yeah, our, our kitty shirts. Kitty what shirt. edition to start shirt. with? I would start with the most recent, because you know they're going to keep updating it over the years. Yeah. So just... Fifth is great. Fifth is a great entry yeah, it's point. It's really loose. Yeah. I, I feel like all of us felt like Pat, we were doing Pathfinder, and I, we fucking loved it, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it, but it was really intricate. And we were doing it every six or seven weeks when we were off air, so we felt like the rules were really complicated and we'd lose track of it. Um, we love doing it, obviously, but 5th edition is really you know fast and loose, and um, uh, I'd recommend that. And Travis just stuck his finger in my ear. He, he kind of does that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> he, he hits me in the nads a lot. <laughs> just uh, checks. This is a, uh, a homebrew campaign. Uh, I wrote it all just kind of for the hell of it and custom uh, don't really base it on anything existing so I feel I can play more in that world and I always hate the idea of in the middle of DMing having to go to a module or having to look for a rule that wasn't my own because I don't know it feels more detached there are modules that are great and I've run great modules but just for me personally with the pacing and the flow of the game I prefer to do homebrew so connected to that someone asked if you had any tips and I'd like to know the answer to this too because I'm running a game for my 8 year old son and his friends or I'm mm-hmm. about to start do you have any tips for new DMs Yes, uh, let's see, I could do like a whole panel on that. Uh, tips for new DMs. Pre- preparation is important. You want to like outline like cities, come up with ideas for NPCs that you think would be essential to, uh, to a story or like people that really run elements of the town. Simple notes can be like, they're this race, this is their disposition. If you have a particular voice you want to try for, make a note of like this kind of voice. So whenever you come back to them, you have a reminder and just kind of spend a lot of time building that structure, but you don't have to be too detailed. Always leave room to play in the world, because you never know what your players are going to do. And be prepared to improv. So I prefer lo- loose preparation, and then just kind of rolling where the players take you. Um, Although you wrote a monologue for, for Clarence, right? Because that was very intricate. I mean, we were all just... We were ready to clap. Yeah, there's no way yeah. you really yeah. well, thought that, that well, fly. There are certain elements. Maybe. Like Part of the notes I take is, uh, for certain NPCs, I'll write down key information that they know. And depending on how you ask them, what you say to them, and what you try and extract from them, they might give you some of the information, they might not, if you coerce them or intimidate them, or if they're willing to give up the information, I have all that written down. And so for that information today, you guys were asking him, and since you allied with with Clarence, um, he was willing to discuss with you. So I had all that pre-written, but it, depending on how much you said was how what you guys asked. Do you have sort of random encounters ready in case we're like, ah, fuck it, I don't want to go down into the dungeon. I want to go back up and beat up some dwarves. Do you have, like, shit kind of ready? Yep. I have uh, have a stack of different creature and encounters already pre-built based on what you guys may encounter. Hmm. Tonight was an example of players being able to pick what happened. Um... But uh, but also it's one of those things where depending, I, I don't know where you guys are going to go. I, I present a story, I present an idea of a general through line, but how you guys go from point A to point B, that's entirely up to you. And sometimes that can be a very long meandering line, sometimes it can be a direct ray. So Yeah, there was a question, but how much do you improvise, and when is it appropriate to improvise? Uh, <laughs> a lot all and always. Yeah. Yeah. Not always, yeah. yeah. Um, the answer is yes. I've had, yes. I've had whole games where I've prepared a session and none of it happened because people just went in an entire, you know, right, wrong direction. Not wrong, but like a different direction. And so the whole game was just me pulling everything out of my ass. Like that time we walked through the back door of the Thieves Guild? 
That was fun. Yeah, yeah. there was that. Uh, We're like, hey, what's up, Thieves Guild? What's up? Yeah. Somebody, somebody asked. Right in. Uh, right in. Uh, <laughs> Donkey Kong the Pikachu. What? <laughs> Somebody asked me what my favorite Smash Brothers character is. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Somebody asked how uh, how we picked the ki- the character class that we picked hmm. when we first started this game, and I said, "Hey, it's my birthday. I want to play a game." <laughs> right. Uh, Laura really likes Rogues as well, but I made sure that I, as fast as I fucking she could, was Rogues. She was pissed. So she, yeah, yeah, she, she plays Rogue uh, in like Dragon Age and everything. It's just a favorite class of hers, so I knew I got it out there. Also, the reason that we're twins is because Laura and I have the exact same birthday, May 28th. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, I know that. Mm-hmm. I know that. That's why that's why that's why that's why twins. I yeah. know. That's cool. I, didn't, I knew, I came in late to the game, and there were only a couple options left, and I'd never played. So I picked Gnome because I was like, oh, that's funny. And then Cleric, I didn't really realize what a Cleric was and how sort of kind of detailed it can be if you've never played. Yeah. Or important to the game. So when I started, I was like, well, shit, this is a little tougher than I thought it would be. But um, it's been awesome. I love love being a Cleric. I'm so glad we pulled you in. Me too, man. Me too. Um. Oh, also, someone asked, who is Pike's deity? And it's uh, Saren Ray, the goddess of uh, healing and redemption, yeah. among other things. Which is a carryover from actually from Pathfinder. Uh, fifth edition has its own, you know, suggested. There's never like a definitive pantheon, but uh, they have the D and D pantheon. But we're carrying over Pathfinder deities that were prominent in the campaign up to this certain point. Because why the hell not? I'm not going to make our change of deity. That'd be weird. Travis, how did you pick your character? What? Oh, um. I asked what the biggest playable character was, I think. <laughs> and went with one that liked to fight, drink, and fight. <laughs> one of the greatest pleasures for me, I mean, I'm obviously a huge nerdlinger, and this is just me reliving high school, but um, when I, I was talking to Sam about starting all this and saying, hey, let's get together, it's what I want to do for my birthday. And we pulled Travis in. Travis is a fucking titan. Look at him. He's not the stereotypical D and D player, and he was the snake fit as the rest of us. Play Dungeons and Dragons, please. Play Dungeons and Dragons. It was so it'll, good. It's the best. It'll make you so happy. What about you, Keyleth? Um, I remember at the time I had a, we were playing another campaign, and I had a, like a rogue assassin, yeah, that you were in with me, um, and I had a a kind of assassin character who was super seductress and you know really high charisma. And I remember when I joined this game, I didn't really know any of you guys really all that well, and I was kind of like new to this world. So I ended up going with a kind of druid, and I kind of deliberately made her introvert in a weird way to kind of reflect my new coming to the group. But yeah. I was like, oh, it'll be like, I can be quiet. And so Keyleth has a really low charisma, which is, but. I kind of spin it in like a, she's naive and doesn't really know, and that's why she says things like, but Clarence, (laughs) (laughs) you're just special, because she's naive and, you know, kind of quiet, and so she was just different than anything I've played before, Um, but I I really love being a druid. Druids are great. I I played a lot in school. I, ha- I I other than Matt, I probably had the most experience playing playing D and D and playing role playing games. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, genius. No, no sure. uh, and so I I was really excited by the Gunslinger and Pathfinder just because it was something I hadn't done before. So it was the I found it the most interesting and unusual. But I was not. I I felt and I also felt it was like a, a hole within the group that could be filled very well. The, the Dugginator keeps asking you, Matt, how you brought the party together the first day of play. Okay, so the Hang first... Hang on, wait, we haven't heard Tiberius' story as yeah. a okay. sorcerer. Huh? And then we oh. can answer that question. Uh, what should we call it? Um, I, when this was going on, I uh, asked Matt if there was a caster yet, like, uh, you know, any glass cannons, and he said no. So I w- then debated, you know, between a, a wizard and sorcerer, and when we went over, like, what the different mechanics and how... A wizard and a sorcerer works. Uh, I was more drawn to, to that end, and I'm a huge RPG guy. Uh, You're so entertaining like, when you play this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to piggyback a, a quick question to seal off the Tiberius thing, he uh, somebody asked uh, if any of our voice acting influences our characters. Mm. Um, Tiberius, absolutely. Uh, I uh, played uh, Elminster Armar in uh, the Neverwinter MMO. Um, 
which is the D&D MMO. Um, and when we started this, I essentially just kind of made him, I, I'm essentially doing Elminster, but <laughs> I made him super bumbly and silly. Yeah. Uh, no, someone asked how we, how the group, yeah. yeah. So we got together, yeah. first session essentially was in a, uh, a swamp town named Stilben, and the group at the time had, for their own separate reasons, been in this town needing money and uh, had kind of come together as a mercenary group out of necessity. And so the first session was them having known each other from, from a circumstance they all ended up helping out an individual in the city. Long story short, they had a small rapport and knew at least each other were useful and needed cash. And there was a job board in the town. And so the first session was them being hired uh, to look into a conspiracy within this, this uh, swamp port town of Stilben. And uh, that was their first real adventure together. And when that finished, they uh, they kept going from there. Uh, oh, troll penis story. Troll penis. Troll penis. Story. <laughs> story. Troll penis. That's oh, fair. I know a lot we of you guys keep back. asking me like that. Other away, questions. Sure. Troll dick. There was a um, there was a battle, a uh, subterranean battle that involved the party sneaking upon <laughs> a group of two trolls that were around a fire. And uh, <laughs> the idea to work past this came to Tiberius to uh, transform himself visually into a female troll so he could Bugs Bunny them. Hey, boys! You know that thing. Um, not knowing the temperament of trolls, especially ones that are deep underground and don't get to see female trolls very often, they immediately just got extremely aggressive, and he found himself almost between a, <laughs> a rock and a hard place. Um, I was getting raped by trolls. Um, so he, the party then descended upon these trolls, and in the middle of the battle... Uh, at numerous times, I believe Percy at once and yeah. Laura and the other both took specific shots at each troll's dick, rolled a <laughs> good shot with enough damage to blow them off. Not being a troll, they regenerate. Um, but it was still a good effect, and uh, when the battle was over, it was decided by the party to at least take one as a trophy and place it in the bag of holding. Which uh, then, it was decided by me, thank uh, you. By Grog, and yeah. as such, it stayed for a while until it was used as an implement of distraction in another encounter, I believe. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. So that, uh, that, that was where the troll deck came from. Jake, Almost spit roasting. <laughs> Jake Boudreau asked, what's it like playing for three hours in front of 2,500 people? Uh, I think our games have gotten a little bit better only because when we played privately, there were sometimes lulls. We weren't sure what to do. We would go off to the bathroom. We would take a break. But now there's a little bit of element of theater to it. Just a yeah. sprinkle of it. And it kind of gooses the energy up. Uh, I'm doing the same way. thing for the record. <laughs> 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 I keep saying this one. For the 11 year old Sadie, the son of Odin shall have that cookie. So, there. Aww. Aww. That's sweet. There you go. There, you go. <laughs> uh, there is one bag of holding between the group, and Grog always has it. And, uh. <laughs> Troll the troll dick in the bullet tongue. The bullet tongue. There are many things that go into the bag. It has all gone in the bag. Is there still a cow yeah. in the bag? Dork no, the ox. Dork the ox. Dork the ox is. is Probably not. That's when we first learned its <laughs> limitations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why does Dork. Why does Scanlan have so many awesome spells? Uh, Bards in Fifth Edition have one of the options they can choose. Oh, that they can, as they level up, choose a couple of spells from any spellcasting class, which is great and a boon that Bards kind of needed to be more combat effective. And you can choose the School of Lore or the School of Combat. I think for the for the Bard, he chose the School of Lore, which allows you even more spells from other classes to boost your repertoire. So uh, he became a fucking amazing Bard. Also. Sam Regal did a lot of acapella in college. And <laughs> he did. He, did. he, did. he yeah. really did. Yeah. He helped write uh, several seasons of The Voice. Yes. Which was all about acapella. So Sam is sort of a, a ringer for the bard class. Yeah, it kind of oh, had yeah. to happen that way. Can Marissa do her dwarf impersonation? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yordy, 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 yordy. Someone asked if, uh, if Grog could keep uh, one of his women in the bag of holding. You can't put living things in the bag of holding. As we've learned. As we've, we've learned. You can. With Dork the Ox. They just die. die. There's apparently no <laughs> air. It's There's like no a air. magical air. vacuum. Dork the Ox did not survive. Are you talking yes. vampire clan? One giant dead ox came out of the bag. Uh, question? Yeah. <laughs> Someone keeps around. asking if any of us have uh, hirelings or henchmen, and the simple answer to that is no. 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 That's not true. Just drink it. Oh, no. That's at, not true. At, at, our, at, at our keep. Yeah, we do. We have oh, our keep. Oh, yes, that's we do. Right. Yes, we that's do. new, right? Yeah, we yeah. battled we, we, Yeah, we have a keep back in... in right uh, before we started. Yeah, the game before we came here. Yeah. yeah after, after they saved the kingdom of Iman, the uh, the sovereign Uriel Taldori III, as part of his gift to the group for 
essentially saving his family and the uh, the, the city itself had a keep constructed for them. Uh, it took about six months or so. The keep was finished, and then the party's first session in the session uh, was them finding who they were going to hire to take care of the keep for them. It was like one episode of The Sims. Kind of. Mm. It, was, <laughs> um, it, was, it was great, too, because Gro- Grog's whole idea of making them to see who would be the better hire was to break a pull cue and be like, yes. who fight. survives? Make them fight. It was pretty great. It does. For Tone 17, I played a modified Malkavian and a Smeti, if you can believe such a thing, which was badass. Oh my god. See? The stuff that you got is not. We've been playing for two and a half years. Wait, what? So I want to know how long we've been Two and a half years. Oh, my god. Really? Can you about your podcast with the recording of the very first one? Oh, yeah. If you want, um, if you want, Sam, Sam and I, uh, it's kind of languishing but we have a podcast together called all work no play it's amazing we both have we're both parents we have kids so you know we have no time to do anything we don't have time to take a shit and uh the first or second episode the first episode is about us playing the first game and there's audio from the first game it's amazing again go to itunes or where or or to all work no play on pod bean and uh, you'll hear about two minutes of us dealing with a puzzle that uh, Matt threw at us. It was timed. It was no. yeah. It was a yeah. time. There was an hourglass going off. <laughs> it was us discovering D and D really for the first time. It's so pretty cool. Check it out. All work, no play. All one word. Actually, one of my favorite stories that I tell all the time is about you from our first game. Because if you remember, I didn't play. Right. I just kind yeah. of helped Matt help you guys. It was like a D and D minion. I remember. Yeah. And I remember I was helping you, and I remember you were like, so. If I just wanted to like go up and punch those guards, <laughs> I could do that. And I was like, yeah. Well, you would go up, you would punch them, and then Matt would tell you like how to do that. And then I, I, you went like this. You were like, <laughs> computing. Yeah, and you were like, so we can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like realization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah we can. On we can. <laughs> Talison yeah. on game one was actually not Percy. He was a Dragonborn Paladin. I was a Dragonborn and Paladin. You fucking blew our minds. We we're like, what do yeah. I do? Can I do damage points to stop this uh, puzzle? There was the this tunnel with all these no. moving parts. We thought we were going to be crushed. The recording. And he was a Dragonborn for the first episode. It's in the recording on the All Work No Play podcast. And he just breathed ice on this water-based uh, uh, sort of contraptions contraption and froze it and everyone was like you can do that you can't just roll dice and hit it and that's when we kind of understood oh it's whatever the fuck that was you such that was such yeah. a good game for like learning the, the basic mechanics yeah. it was such a well put together game. Matt Matt does uh, control the music while we play yes I have playlists there are much more broad playlists before unfortunately on the stream we have to use only approved royalty free music so it took me a while to figure it out previous I do miss to this those Madonna songs I know I know <laughs> although, although I used to play a lot of Bush so it was good. Hey, yeah. would that count as fan art? If like fans made us music, yeah, could we then use that? Hey, Shit, yeah. oh, come on now. Hey. Yeah, he's yeah. nodding. Some consent forms. Yeah. 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 Some consent forms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of your characters died. Any music people's out there? Anybody music? Any music people? What's the question? One of your characters died. Anything atmospheric? Ah, yeah. Don't add. Don't answer that. No, no, it's an important. Ignore it. No, no, it's important. Someone's asking if we die, would we roll in a new character? And, and plus, like, we just started the show, so part of us were wondering, like, what if we die the second episode? What happened? We, like, we've recorded this opening for the show that's coming. So here, here's how I run the world. I feel that one of the problems in some RPGs is that death becomes flippant when magic allows you to completely undo it. In my campaigns, certain powerful spells, like Greater Restoration, Resurrection, things like that, are a challenge. Meaning you can definitely undo death but a lot of it is based on your capabilities as a spellcaster, your attachment to the people that you've been traveling with, and so whenever, if whenever a character does die, uh, a resurrection can be attempted, but it is a challenge, which means there is a possibility of it failing, in which place, case if the resurrection fails, the soul is lost, the character is permanently dead. The player then, they can leave and never come back if they want to, but they have the option to create a new character and be reintroduced to the campaign like <laughs> half a level lower than the rest. So, oh, when, so when Pike died, we had a, many, all of us, many series of dice rolls to do, and it was very story based. Yeah, people and were asking how she came back. Yeah, I mean, like, we, we, luckily we were in a big city, there was a huge temple, there were very wise clerics who, who were good at bringing people back, but still, we all had to roll. Yeah, like close. There was three rounds where we had to roll. Like, you might have fudged the numbers. I don't know. But we were all still scared. <laughs> and uh, 
we had to all, m the majority of us had to have good roles three times in a row, and yep, Scanlan stage, had to the put... The tears a, of three women in the room. Tears, really Scanlan had to put a, had to kiss her on the head, he put a figure that he carved of her, it was very yeah. elaborate. This one was majorly in tears. Laura was like hyperventilating. Yeah. And when that was going on, I remember, I, when that went off, I, being still Tiberius, I was like in half character, but in half not. And I was not crying. I was like, <laughs> like the whole time. And then as soon as she sprung back to life, because the cleric breathed in her first breath. After the, that, yeah. the, we luckily, because I know it was a tight roll. It was a very uh, tight roll. And it, was, it was a DC of fourteen on the final roll, and uh, because Scanlan put brought out this figure of her that he had carved for her like a, two months beforehand as a gift, sits it down and kisses her on the forehead, and it was the kind of the final connection point, And uh, he needed fourteen. He rolled a 12, but because he, uh, there's a plus two modifier to the skill yes. check being a bard, and that was what they needed, it just made it to bard. It's and a basic, basic possibility. Someone's asking if we drink while playing, and the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just water in those tankers. Oh. Done. Coffee. Mm. So um, you almost failed the great restoration thing. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't have I, didn't it. I almost did. No, no, no. Yeah. I was saying, I, when, 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 uh, when she came so back stressful. to life is, is when Tiberius, I was, I was like, oh my god, it's, she's okay. I think was, also having, when, I, I think because with magic and everything like that, just bringing somebody back to life so easily, since we don't have that as much as maybe other games, the, it, it's heightened. So every yeah, time someone stage. gets hurt, we're all... I think now, after having that death, all of us are like, where are you at? Where are you at? Or where are you going? Yeah. Well, where, where are you I going? wish I could You're turn to hurt. Sam, but yeah. he's not here right now. We're yeah. all so stressed out now, which is, which is, um, it's kind of, it's cool. Mortality is a real, a real thing you have to deal with, and up until Pike's death, it was kind of a, a thing people weren't considering. Yeah. It just happened so, so suddenly. Um, one I see keep coming up since we started is how, how would we, uh, react to life if we were our characters? I don't know, or differently from our characters. I wouldn't stab my children when they frustrate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in a padded room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I feel like everyone tries to make decisions in the game that their character would make in real life because that's yeah, kind of the that's point. I mean, we like we like I said, I take into consideration that I have shitty charisma whenever I open my mouth. You know, and I feel like we all try and take into consideration our background and our alignment because that's. I, I, you know. I feel significantly more badass than my character. To right. Be yeah. Frank. <laughs> I, I, I kind of actually. Kind I, of, I, I feel uh, I, Tiberius is just me with magic. <laughs> so yeah. that's how I feel. Grog was easy. He makes bad decisions, which is just all that I do. Normally. Yeah. So. <clears throat> someone, two quick things. Oh, go ahead. So, saying, uh, Pike died when they were fighting what's called a treachery demon or a uh, uh, Glabrezu. Uh, which had basically infiltrated uh, the king, the, uh, the the sovereign Uriel, and the uh, the city of Iman. And when it revealed its final form, it got one lucky critical hit on Pike when she was too close, and just instantly took her out. Um, that's how she died. Someone's asking if they can s <laughs> send us equipment we need for the show. Zach. Yeah, they can. What do you need? I will put it on the wish list. There you go. It's on the wish list. There's a wish list? <laughs> there there a wish list? list? I didn't know there was one, but now there is. Someone says... There's a castle Grayskull on there. There you how, go. Yeah, we've got a castle Grayskull. How do we feel about Team demi Human and inspiring them to play D&D for the first time? I think the number one reason we all want to do this is because we love each other and we love this game. The second thing is we all knew, like, kind of felt like we're going to make Dungeons and Dragons cool again and make it... <laughs> try at least. And try. <laughs> and make it open for anyone to do. There's no reason not to do this. If, you know, if there's someone you know who doesn't understand it, don't worry about it. Just find some friends and you know, connect with them. Yeah, I find one of the difficult things is explaining to, to somebody who has never played an RPG or, or a game of D&D &D at all, been like, what... How does it work? What is it? And it's hard to explain, so if anything, I like... Now we have an example to show. You know, other than the IT crowd episode or the uh, uh, the community episode, which are both great examples for quick little succinct things. We have the power to bring one guest player in for one session. Oh, we bring that's in. easy. Just Tom Hanks, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mazes and Madness. Just, just, yeah. I was going to say, uh, Vin, Vin Diesel. Amazing. He lives for the shit. Vin Diesel's good. He likes uh, to play. I, from top of my list is Stephen Colbert because I know he also. Oh, does. that would be amazing. Uh, I, got, I got the weird thing. 
Here's Sauce. Oh, I would love. I would love to see Joss Whedon do this. I admit, I would like to see Joss Whedon play D&D. That'd be interesting. Guys, we might be. That might be issue. Yeah. yeah that would okay, be I'm throwing that one out there. I mean, Felicia. Tom Hanks is, isn't? Oh, Felicia. Felicia yeah, 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 yeah. Got some <laughs> but he's also a super fucking busy okay. man. Um, yeah. Yo, guys, yes. tweet at Tom Hanks and come and play with us. I'm all gonna break my neck. Twitter, guys. Right now. To the critical role, Hanks. See if we can make a trend. Um, uh, that would be great. That'd be hilarious. Yep. What about Dan Harmon, just so I can get fired? Can we do that? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hard, Hardwick used to play D&D with Patton Oswalt in the mid-2000s. I can't even imagine what those games were Actually, like. I'd love to, like, uh, Amy Poehler, I'd love to have, have one of those. Or yeah, some like, Tina, that. that would be... She's a partner on Legendary. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love, I would love to her, her Tina. Tina Someone yeah. keeps asking about awesome. Troy. I don't know if Troy Baker is ready. ready. <laughs> no, he's... Is he ready? I don't think he's ready for this jelly. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys think he's ready for this jelly? I don't think I don't he's, know. Ready for he's ready for this jelly. Whenever it comes to a conversation, Troy always gives that look of like, all right. You can see him swimming in like yeah. the I- I- infinity of... <laughs> yeah. like, That's not cool. He has some preconceived yeah. notions that My need to be overcome. My scars are cooler than you. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever once once we get him like a proper plus two enchanted scarf, we I think we'll, uh, we'll yeah. Plus two. Grog, <laughs> Grog and Vex. Grog and Vex. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm I'm here to Grog annoy Vex by smacking her bear around, and she's that here to tell me not to kill that's myself. Nice. Don't jump into the crevasse. It's a thousand feet Try deep. Try bigger and spikes. Distance, Dad. dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Here's actually a question I like. I saw it a couple times. How did you guys get involved in streaming for Geek and Sundry? Uh, Virgin Sacrifice. The best way I know that happened was <laughs> we've been playing for a while. I mean, you know, we all work in, in the industry, and uh, people begin to hear about John our voiceover D and D games. So weirdly, like I'd come into sessions with directors I've never worked with before. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, you're the guy that runs that D and D game. Like, how did that happen? How is that my my thing? I'm cool with it. Like, heck yeah, my little high school self was like, I, I'm okay with being known about that." Um, but then over time, eventually, Geek and Sundry contacted us. Um, they should have heard about it. Um, they called me in for a meeting, and we spent a number of months trying to figure out what format we were going to try. If we wanted to do it like multi-camera filmed canned episodes, and then eventually the Twitch possibility came up. And we're like, no, this is a much better uh, format for us. And that's kind of how it happened. Are, yeah. are you kosher with me? You took this film. There's a video of you breaking the news to us that Geek and Sundry came to you about it. Are you kosher with me sharing that video? Yeah, I don't see why not. All right, I'll find a way to put it uh, through, it, through my Twitter. So just keep your eye on my Twitter. Yeah. Wait, what are you sharing? Yeah. There was a video that Orion took when, when Matt told us about oh. Geek and Sundry coming to him. And us all sort of toasting and laughing and... Reacting. Giggling like idiots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same, why does D&D Pathfinder make you so much more attached to the characters than a regular RPG? If you mean like a video game RPG? Uh, I mean, you get attached either way, but with this, because you're so much more fluid with how you can influence the world and the character and the way the character reacts to the world and how it can influence it is so much more, uh, I don't personal. know, personal. I guess we have a good way of putting it. It's just that much more involving, and you invest so much into that at- atmosphere. And a lot of that depends on the group. Some people just like to do dungeon crawls and kill and get loot and experience, and that's totally cool too. Um, but you know, for for me at least, I I like them both for different reasons. Yeah. I still play the crap out of video game RPGs. <laughs> Someone asked if, given the chance, would we like to do a live uh, game at a convention like Acquisition Inc. Which I'd like to do, although there's nine of us, so that'd be kind of a little tricky. Maybe asking you guys to do that. Oh, good. Oh, good. Then yes. As long as as long as you're handling the tech, I think we'd be fine with that. I'd like to do it. It seems. Maybe asking if you guys are going to go through that hellhole. Yeah. Can we get a jib? I like crane shots. <laughs> a helicopter, a helicopter. Put it on the wish list. Put it on the wish list. How many of you, aside from Matt, have run a game really cool. D or another RPG? Um, oh, you, you are in high watch. school. I ran a D and D game. I ran a Rifts game for a little while. Rifts, yes. Uh, I ran a cyberpunk game for a little while. Really? Yeah. Yes. And. The last two months, I have been helping my eight-year-old son and two of his friends from school create characters. And about two, and I wouldn't have done this 
if Matt had not forced this shit into my life. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have done this, but I'm about to start running a game for my son, the half-elf druid, and his two Ooh, friends, woo! the, the yeah. dragonborn uh, fighter and the dragonborn rogue. What if they die? Nice. That's just how sh the cookie crumbles, motherfucker. Oh, man, yeah. you are teaching life lessons. You gotta get yeah. lessons. Hey, Goldfish yeah. and then D&D. &D. Uh, 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 I, I ran a Rifts game uh, as well in high school. Uh, and then uh, uh, I ran a game of, of Vampire the Masquerade. Of uh, course and you was did. In a bunch of them. And then, of course uh, you did. A, a couple rounds of Paranoia and Paranoia. Hole. Because that's Hole, funny. Yep. Hole was amazing. Which you gave me books for. Yeah, I gave you a birthday, hole, which was that. awesome. I was a part of a uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer tabletop RPG for a while. Nice. Yeah, That's awesome. it's actually quite fun. I was a pyromancer. This is cool. Uh, somebody asked a fun one. They asked uh, if we play. What are which? What's our favorite video game? Just <coughs> enjoy what's our favorite video game? Yeah. Oh, that's a hard question. Is it? There's so many. Okay, uh, well, we can skip it. Metal Probably. Gear, Dragon Age. Uh, Probably Portal. Portal or Dragon Age. Portal's yeah. great. Castlevania. Baldur's Symphony Gate. of the Night. I played till I had blisters Symphony on my thumbs. Symphony of the Night. Yeah, dude. Symphony of the Night. Oh my what god. What is a map? Borderlands Two, and I'm happy. <laughs> Journey <Borderlands>. Wimps. <laughs> pool, pool of Radiance on my Commodore 64. Yeah. Oh shit. Nice. Baldur's oh, Gate, which Baldur's I played Gate. again on my iPad a year or two ago. Yep. Hell yeah. Yeah. Somebody. Uh, at, oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying. I'm, I'm, yeah. Somebody asked I how we paranoia. focus in the room with the sexual magnetism that is Scanlan Shorthalt. <laughs> oh, man. It's tough, man. I don't know. It's I tough, wear a cod tough. piece. I wear a cod piece that keeps everything in check. I'm heavily <laughs> sedated most of the game okay. just for that reason. Otherwise, uh, the clothes would just come I right just off. I just let myself get a gigantic boner every every week. Yeah, just to set my chub the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone play League? Uh, generally, um, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. We're playing Heroes of the Storm more now. Yeah, I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. I like all kinds of games. Uh, Final I, dope. I definitely would say if I had to pick one RPG, because I'm a big RPG guy, I love Chrono Cross. That'd be my favorite game. Chrono Cross I've played, Chrono Cross. I played that Ooh. more than I had Chrono Trigger, which is way too many times. Dragon so, Age so. Race slash Class. Uh, Ash, anybody that plays? Uh, oh, Elf oh, Road. Human Fighter. Yeah. Oh, is the mage. Travis, mage. stupid question. Elf Thor, Odin, Sun, or Hulk in a knockdown drag out? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Type zero also, damn Contra it. Contractually, Thor, realistically, <laughs> Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I am Thor. I can't say any other guy. Kind of Hulk's thing. on a scaling power level. You can, he, he just gets too mad. And yeah, let's all over. just be real. That's <laughs> yeah, Hulk. Tried New Final uh, Fantasy yet? Uh, Chocolate and, Sweets a bunch of times has asked, would you guys consider cosplay for the games? Well, oh, technically. The game. well, I mean, technically, we, we kinda, already did. We have to. You'll see. Maybe it, next yeah. week. Maybe. Next week? He's trying the best he can. We have an intro coming up some point soon. Um, halfway done. Halfway done. <laughs> that we all shot <coughs> loosely in character <laughs> costumes inspired by everyone's characters. So you'll be able to see that soon. Zach Eubanks, ladies and gentlemen. If anyone would like to make us awesome. costumes. Yes. One man. Zach is the man, man of a, a million. The Tempest. A million arms. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that noise. I think it would be kind of hard for me to play cosplay. The game in cosplay because I have probably the most armor now. You do, yeah. You were the most. I armor. have more armor now, though. That's a cool question. Like, come, 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 if you had to switch characters, allowed. Matt, if you had to switch like characters, and which play a character, which one, which one would you, which one would you be? Oh, if like, you had to trade places with one of us, yeah. If, like, if you would like switch Ooh. characters. Matt included. Question was for everyone. If you guys could switch characters with anyone, who would you switch? Oh, someone I, else. I would. I would probably switch with Liam, or with. With Travis, I Tiberius would be mine. I'd take Tiberius. Scanlan, I would be Scanlan. I would be Scanlan. Bards, yeah, man, Bards are my favorite class. I'd be probably either Scanlan or Pike. I'd be Trinket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> Why are you peeing on everything? I love, yeah, Bards, Bards and clerics are great. I, I'd definitely be Grog. Grog, just the complete opposite. Favorite of MMORPG what I can do. is a. Uh, I'm a WoW player on occasion. I haven't no, played in Warcraft. ages. Yeah, for the horde. For the horde. For the horde. Uh, player wants to play a lizard folk monk. What's my opinion about the idea? That's fine. I mean, a player can play whatever they want to, as long as you, as the DM, want it in your campaign. Just make sure they have more to their character beside I'm a lizard monk. You know, have a good reason why they train as a monk. If they make a cool personality behind it, work it into the social structure of their lizard folk people, and see whether the monks would be shunned or accepted. Are they an outcast of the society? You know, think of those ideas. Make a cool character based on the story. Uh, from a fighting standpoint, that'd be cool. I mean, I used to play a, a 
<laughs> Lizard Monk in uh, Runes of Kunark back in the LDQ days. Oh, man. That was a while back. <laughs> Someone asked when Trinket came into the mix. Day one. Day one. Day one. Day she one. had that shit, like, down. No. She knew she wanted a pet bear. She's she so hasn't funny. died yet. Well, she hasn't died. It's amazing no. this thing has not died. Amazing. It doesn't yeah. die because she's died so many times. She spent all of her character focus in, in having a pet from combat and then never puts it into combat because she doesn't want it to get killed. Die. And it's fucking hilarious. We put it in, Je in Jeopardy situations before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah. Every time she goes, never again. And I'm like, all right, well. <laughs> it's it's it. No, the day that bear dies, it's going to get ugly. It's going to oh. be bad. It's, it's, so it's going to change her. Bear character is going to change. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I had, shift. So I had much um, black to wear. Duganator asked me a super detailed question, so I don't want to blow over it because it was awesome. He asked me um, how my path has gone and my personal Aramente journey and how working with the group has helped and slowed it down. Um, for So for the Arashari and for Keyless journey, it's kind of expected to take her maybe 10, maybe 20 years. It takes her like a the Aramente is expected to take a long time, and part of it is her kind of proving herself a hero. So she kind of ended up tagging along with this motley crew in order to kind of help her so she's not doing it alone. So it's a good thing that she's tagging along. But she also has to deal with sometimes the moral dilemma of maybe choices that she might not normally make if she wasn't with the group that she has to go with. So, yeah, I see two questions I want to address. Yeah, one is what what is each of our favorite kill? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that was right. Good one. And then the second one is how did what's the story behind the super high, high intensity, intensity team? <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. Let's start with the kills, uh, and then we'll get well, to the shit. Okay. Yeah. My favorite kill. I, I finished off a blue dragon we faced. Um, we all chipped away at this dragon, uh, uh, someone who had been uh, disguising himself as a human for a long time, and then we came to their little secret cubby hole and they revealed themselves. We chipped away and chipped away, and then at, at the end I sort of parkour ran up a wall and shoved the daggers into its neck and just slid down its entire body and finished it. That's my favorite kill. Nice. I like My favorite kill is uh, actually Until today. when Pike kicked the bucket, and that moment all of us realized what happened, and there was an instant shift in real emotion. Yeah. Where whatever the hell, whoever, the, I don't remember who we were fighting, because I went and like, I fucking cast this, and I fucked, and everyone was just, just kill this thing, because we all cared so much in like a real life situation, where like, we just wanted this, we hated this thing, like, with real emotion, and we just slaughtered it, and we had to say it. Demon, the demon possessed royal family was yeah. my favorite when they that were like the same thing. Yeah, that was that was that was my favorite fight too. Yeah. Just using the light. Also, we were shooting. I was getting to shoot holes in the yeah. glass. Yeah, the, the entire throne room had a glass dome over top, but because the the, um, the family had been possessed by these shades, these shadow uh, entities, it was all covered, and the, they were able to force these spirits out of the physical bodies without killing them by being able to tear off the cloth or shoot holes in it to allow sunlight in and use that as part of the battle tactic. It worked yeah, out that really was, cool. That yeah, was it was fun. fun. My favorite kill wasn't even an enemy. It was when Scanlan summoned that pony when we were facing those five withers. <laughs> oh, oh, right. He summoned this oh, pony and then I turned and abruptly cut its fucking head off and reached in and grabbed its organs and smeared its gore all over myself and started <laughs> screaming. Wow. Wow. And Mercer was like, Okay. <laughs> what, what, the fight into, ended there. Roll, roll intimidation, intimidation. Yeah. with a bonus. Yeah, uh, you, using the a fight. <laughs> but you're a pony for intimidation. Yeah, it, it was, was amazing. amazing. It worked. I think uh, one of my favorite Keyleth moments. God, it wasn't God, a so, kill, so but we were when we were in the crazy like Michael Jackson Neverland <laughs> Ranch uh, sorcerer dude's plane of existence. The Dread Emperor. The Dread Emperor. Emperor. Yeah, yeah, when we were in his plane of existence, and we. I encountered that big tree rock monster, and I just happened to take a command plants, and he happened to be a plant monster, so it just worked out perfectly, and I was just like, we don't want to fight you! Back back down! And avoided an entire oh, battle. Awesome. Getting the magic carpet was also pretty badass. Oh, that yeah. Was, that, was, that, was, that was a good another, story. Another fabulous moment that, the, that you guys have to know about is we had to get into a tower. We wanted to get into a tower at one point, and there was a very intelligent sort of um, right-hand man to whoever owned the tower. Yeah. And Scanlan just started fast-talking, which is his defining characteristic. 
took his finger and he put it right here as a mustache and said, Hi, I'm Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Burt Reynolds. <laughs> and he um, rolled, he either Scanlon rolled a 20 I think or it was his a natural. dude rolled a 1. He rolled a natural 20 on and his... And you weren't expecting it to no, work in all. any way, shape, or form and you went, Okay. <laughs> also, Mr. Reynolds? <laughs> yeah, Burt Reynolds was just announced that he's going to be at Philly Wizard World with us, so we could theoretically tell you him have, that story. Yes. Oh, well, I have to. Well, my, like, I, uh, Burt Reynolds would be a dream guest. Yes. I have a whole history. Yeah, yeah. Burt Reynolds. <laughs> having, <laughs> him and Tom Hanks. You have to play on a bear's game carpet. Man. I have a whole family history of Burt Reynolds, so yes, let me hurt. <laughs> it's weird. Um, <laughs> I've only had one kill. Uh, but... It was what? And it, it was, was awesome. a dragon. Yeah, dragon yeah. slayer. It was a white... But the thing that I... Probably the, the whole um, battle with with the family that was sort of possessed when I actually died. That was actually one probably one of my favorite battles. Maybe not after I died. What's... Prior to. But um, the when I hmm. got to keep, finish off the dragon... Was that on Christmas? The dragon? Yeah. Yes. The Christmas that dragon. night was so Christmas amazing dragon. because we had... Um, we made it a winter festival, mm -hmm. and so we all came in our pajamas, and yeah. um, it was it was kind of it was close to Christmas. That's why it was a winter festival. And so it was like our little Christmas our, party, yeah, our holiday episode. That was sad yes. for me because he it was, was my there. idea, but I had health problems at the time, and I had to oh, bow so out, and I was very, very, very sad. It was very Which sad. Made it this year's. I made it for the following year. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we had a whole little thing. It was really nice. Yeah, it was really nice. I would cool. love to play D&D &D with Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Heck yeah. So you guys can tweet at her, see if you can get her to agree. The shits. <laughs> How do we become the shits? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, the, par <laughs> the party uh, had run into a, uh, a, a de-bearded, actually, a shaven dwarf named Grimthorn who uh, wanted to represent them for what is occasionally a roving, uh, brawling guild, essentially. These, like, underground... Yeah fighting rings that happen around the world at different points throughout the year. They may come up again. We'll see. Um, but they had to think of a team name. And Scanlan <laughs> recommended that super high intensity team. Which <laughs> stuck for a while. And so the group name, against the better judgment of, I think, a lot of the group, the Cubans, beca especially. became the Shits. Yeah. So their name for a while was the Shits. They were announced as the Shits in the ring when they won the tournament. That, that was when the pony was cut in half. <laughs> That's was right. To intimidate the opposing team and gave Scanlan's them Scanlan's idea also. Tiberius and Keyleth were not happy. Um, yeah. Shits stuck for a while until eventually they got they got rid of the Shits as all of a sudden they were about to go to the the Winter Festival uh, parade in their honor for saving the entire city of Iman and the Sovereign Uriel said, what should we announce you as? And it was decided not to announce you guys in front of the city at your parade as the Shits. I was super into it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and instead, still love, still love the shit. <laughs> instead, the name became Vox Machina. So, if you've heard them say that, uh, that's the official team name they've created for themselves as a group. With, with credit to Sam as well, uh, which was much vote, credit to vo Sam. Voted down was also the Brotherhood of the Sisterhood, which I was a huge fan of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I really wanted it to be the Brotherhood, the brotherhood of the Sisterhood. Of the sisterhood. But the Vox Machina sounded thing? cooler. The Brotherhood of the Sisterhood of the Order, or something like that. No, it was... Yeah. The it, Order of the Brotherhood, the brotherhood of the Sisterhood. The Brotherhood of the Sisterhood. Sisterhood is what it was. So Tiberius <laughs> recognizes that the Vox Machina slash Brotherhood of the Sisterhood. Largo yeah. Sensei keeps asking, what are your most cathartic voice acting experiences? I'm going to guess Wait, for Ashley that's the, the Last of Us, since that's so fucking heart ripped out of your chest. Um, Probably, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. G Gollum was pretty... Uh, sad for me because he's a miserable bastard. Also, Angel for Wolverine and the X Men. Wait, does cathartic mean sad? Wrong? Well, it just so means get emotionally your fucking demons out and just mm. get, you know chew it up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mine's old. Mine's really old. It's probably either either monster or paranoia agent. I'm gonna go that far mm. back. Paranoia agent. Yeah, I think all fate, the way back. <laughs> fate Zero for me had a moment that was pretty intense emotionally that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, Knuckles the Echidna and Sonic. Was <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Boom, yo. Yeah. Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom. Is it infamous? What's that? Infamous, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, infamous. Pretty, pretty fucking good. sad. Yeah. Brothers. Brotherly brotherly love. I'd say for me, it's, it was doing Type Zero. Uh, not not so much the uh, actual lines, because I had a lot of fun. And I mean, I don't know if that's cathartic, but. Uh, Completing an actual real life dream goal. Uh, uh, the last I've said I've said this a, a couple times before, but uh, the last day I, I was recording the like the last stuff, I was literally crying on the way home because 
I finally got to level myself up, and this thing ended up, and it was really cool. That's right. Matt, who are you in Fancy Row? Uh, I am Kuritsugu. Kuritsugu Amiya. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, he's the kind of as for dark per- assassin uh, I saw a question about Percy's home <laughs> and his family Percy has a really really big family that I don't mention in the video and he has not been home yet and I, he, he has no interest in going home yet because that's terrifying so we have not dealt with that yeah that's going to be interesting when that comes around Matt Every- what's under the freaking lake what's under the freaking lake Matt yeah what's under the lake uh, Matt? you were told yeah you were told oh, it's right. a big aboleth it's a giant. A- oh, that's right. I did write it down. In which Abba. you encountered one yeah, wait, wait. underground. It was that yes. creature that that would that I would exude the slime into Remember, the water, I and if it touched you, you, you could only breathe one. water and couldn't breathe air. <laughs> Remember, because I was like, uh, I'm gonna be. Remember, I was you, like, I'm gonna be crafty and turn into a shark, and then I started immediately drowning. Mm, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, how horse. do you keep players from getting OP, Matt? <laughs> make the monsters more powerful. <laughs> behind, the, behind the scenes, I'm always constantly uh, up his ass trying to make Tiberius as OP as possible, and he's always stopping me a lot. That's so ba- balance is important. Really good. Um, I mean, I, the characters, everyone here, they have really good characters that have a lot of cool abilities, but they also have a lot of challenges that come at them that make them not only use those abilities, but also monsters can have cool abilities too. We're actually on really 89. Powerful. You said Stephen King plays Wait, D&D. Wait, what? Yes, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Whoa. Is that true? What? Brachion, we're going to wait for your answer. How do you yeah, guys that true? Are you no. sure? Let's get him in here. I love that. Like, that's like saying. The group's <laughs> worst decision in D&D was <laughs> the dragon, I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, Grog. Grog. Grog Listen, Russian. there was a shitload of gold. Bro. Bro. Yeah, yeah, but you were. You were. Gold out of oh, and he started hoarding all the gold. We still don't know yeah. that. A lot of stupid he he might have been an ally. I got to balance might have killed you guys someone out. That's what you do. For like, you're safe. For like, no, you were still freaking out. Like a month later, you were right. feeling really bad. Well, I did. Look, I feel like it was a good decision. But to be fair, it's the only time I've ever had a player rage loot before. Yeah, You went into a rage and used that to just loot more quicker, and then the dragon revealed itself, and you looked at it. Get you get you it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you guys take care of this. That was That's so Grog. Um, somebody keeps uh. asking, and we'll do a show of hands here, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Oh, come on. Um, what do you mean? Oh, that's you ten, tough. What do you prefer? Ten seconds to think about it, and what? then I'll... It's like never... Star Trek or Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. They're asking the question. They're asking the question. Come on. That's come on. tough. Lord of the Rings. I don't know. Fucking Lord of the Rings. Know. There you go. There's the answer. I want that there, too. Oh man! Oh my God! Lord of the Rings, but I see Game of Thrones. I on love the side. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Of course we, yeah. Lord of the Rings. We all, we all. We have wouldn't have Game there. of Thrones without Lord of the That's Rings. Correct. That's the thing. Or maybe That's possibly, possibly like, not Dungeons and Dragons it, without Lord of the Rings. This is true. It's the OG. I don't know. <laughs> the OG. OG. Said that. that just came out of your mouth. <laughs> Please let's leave it alone. <laughs> the OG. Moving on. That's the OG. Uh, what is it? Star Trek what do so we much. have over here? Well, who was the old gnome that Grog saved in his intro video? <laughs> Pike's daddy. That would be, no, that was my great-great-grandfather. Your great-great-grandfather. Right. Yes, That's great-great-grandfather Will Hand. Will Helm. Hand? Will Hand. 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 Will Grog has an intelligence plus six. He's going to get an Everybody, <laughs> everybody, if you could choose whatever fantasy world to live in, what would it be? Marvel. Ooh. I would Marvel. live in the uh, the uh, uh, next generation world universe. Uh, you have me at Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. In humans and all sorts of. If you could live in Marvel, would you live in? If you couldn't live in that world as a superhero, just as a normal person. Right. Not in New York. <laughs> Anybody that lives in New York in the Marvel yeah, Universe is just stupid. Like, idiot. rent's gotta be a dollar. Terrible bit. idea. I'd say Mist. Oh! Because then I can just write my own worlds to infinity from there. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Or Amber as well. <laughs> I was gonna say, Lord, I was gonna say, Lord, of, the say Lord of the Rings. I, maybe Rivendell. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say Final Fantasy X. Grey Havens. <gasps> if you're gonna do Lord of the Rings, do Grey Havens, because you're far enough away from Mordor where it's generally not gonna be a problem. <laughs> I wanna be one of the Fellowship. Ah, yeah, fair enough. Ashley Johnson lived in a Marvel she universe did. already, right? That's, that's true. Correct. Well, See, and it was a big true. hassle. Sort of. It was a big hassle. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> before, before the stream, our D&D really sessions... Really high insurance rates. Yeah. Before the stream, our D&D sessions would happen once every month to month and a half. More like a month and a half. Why is Matt uh, Scarlet Witch? I'm down with it. Because uh, <laughs> I alter reality. Okay. Power that's makes true. sense. Very nice. Um, yeah, but yeah, our sessions used to be once every month to month and a half, and they would be about six to eight hours... Um, but the problem is we play certain frequently every session have to like remind everyone what happened and it was hard to schedule 
Part of the reason we're even doing this show is because it's technically work, which allows those of us who have families and children more an excuse to come more often. So, uh, so yeah. Goo one seven R Casey keeps asking, "What's your favorite nerdy T-shirt you own?" Mine is one that says Mordor World Tour. It looks like a rock and roll T-shirt that says Mordor World Tour. That's cool. Favorite Lord of the Rings. I've got a Sons of Anarchy Doctor Who t-shirt that I'm a really big fan of. I'll wear it next week. I don't cool. know what I would pick. I've got a, I've mm-hmm. got like a, like a army kind of soldiery looking t-shirt that's a Shinra, like Shinra Corp, Shinra Shoulder yeah, t-shirt. That's, that's actually cool. the one I was going to say. It's my favorite shirt. Really? Yeah. 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 I like your displacer kitty you got. Displacer kitty's kind of cool. I like, I, adorable. Kitty. I like your, your shine on me shirt. Oh god. If, if you guys haven't watched, uh, <laughs> Uh, Chris Dane Owens on YouTube. Chris Dane Owens, Shine On Me. It's a music yes. video. Watch it. Watch it. Chris Dane Owens, <laughs> Shine, <laughs> or Shine On Me, YouTube. Do I love it. that you own the shirt from it. I bought a shirt from it because it was that amazing. So I had to. Oh, did anyone tell Pike that uh, Scanlan killed the Naga for her? Mm. I don't think someone's done that yet. Yeah. 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 I don't know that's going to happen in the game. I don't know if I know. You saw it, right? You saw it on the stream, but I saw it. Me, Ashley saw it, but Pike did not hear about it yet. Who knows? That could be the. The, the thing, thing that seals the deal. <laughs> I'll be like, you killed a Naga? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> uh, this Any question. betrayals in the game? Not, no, not really. yeah. no betrayals, disagreements, and uh, occasional... Yeah. Trippings and beatdowns. And stealing of uh, flying carpets. I actually did <laughs> step... I kind of did hurt Liam one game. Or, 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 uh, Vax. Was the game we played together? Yeah, we did because it, just the two of us mm. one night. We were there were some of the girls changing in a room. Oh yeah. And <laughs> that's, that's right. right. Oh, that's um, I was very curious yeah. to Vax see you naked curious. that night, but that's kind of fallen on the wayside. Vax was very curious to see what a gnome looked like. Naked. Never, never seen it before. <laughs> so you did a little peeping. Why stuff? wouldn't I want to expand well, my horizon? Like, yes. So he rolled stealth. So he, he would. That. So he rolled stealth and he did and he saw and whatever. And then when I came back out and I found out about it, but I good. It was compact. I s- I s- <laughs> it was just a small, small human, yeah. and I think I stepped on your foot and gave you some damage. Maybe a hit point. Yep. Yeah, a yeah. hit point or two. It was, you earned it. Mm-hmm. I earned it. Uh, somebody, uh, Seagull Blaster. No, asked, Bax didn't spy on Bax. Asked, Sorry, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I asked uh, uh, Tiberius said something about a pale stone and what it is, um, and this is a, somebody asked a different question that's just kind of going to answer both. Um, I and everybody else wrote uh, backstories for Matthew uh, to essentially give him so he can construct our universe. Um, and uh, Tiberius's particular quest is looking for particular artifacts um, that essentially I made him like a molder where like nobody nobody believes in the city that these things exist except him so he the truth is out there kind of thing. Uh, and so I made up these uh, five different artifacts that do different things. And I don't know what they do until I might maybe find them if I do. And he, it's up to him, to Matt, to you know determine what they are. If they are anything, you know, they might be nothing. I don't know. I've found one item so far, and it's awesome. And all of us have given him uh, bits and pieces, and that's how he constructs our story with with things that you throw in there yourself. Yeah, and, and each player, like all their storylines, work into the world. Um, not all of them will happen immediately, of course. Some stories will. Some people have had personal encounters and story encounters already. Some are yet to occur, and there will be points throughout the campaign where the party will probably have to move and individually deal with each person's story to some extent. Uh, they've had a, a little bit with each person. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've touched a little bit. Uh, yeah, a like little bit. Sand. In Iman, we've seen Vex and Vex's we, father. Vex, Vex and I ran into our father again for the first time in many years. It was a little frosty. He had a new family. Yeah, have a little Just little, little half sister. Matt, do you have a favorite voice, and does it hurt your voice to do the gnarly monster voices? Um, if you do it for an extended period of time, it can be kind of shitty. I don't know how you do this new one. Breathing in. Uh, and that's in we're singing, man. It is in we're singing. Yeah. Actually, it's funny. I've, I've a bunch of my NPCs that I've done since high school have ended up turning into. Characters I booked. Like, yeah. I'll go into an audition and be like, "I'll go ahead and do Natibe Curious from my second campaign," and then I'll end up doing that character. Aloth in the Pillars is uh, a character I NPC'd back in high school. 
That's yeah. they, they still haven't heard my favorite voice from this campaign yet, because we haven't gone back to the city yet. Oh, Gilmore? Gilmore. Hi, Gilmore. 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 Yeah, yeah, Gilmore. Yes. Gilmore is a wonderful magician who owns a shop <laughs> in... Uh, oh, is that the fancy Yes, video? in the city of mm-hmm. Iman, and he's got a big friggin' crush on me and wants me. Yeah. Wants me, and someday you and I will actualize we'll that. We'll get the role play that. Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. What do we think is taking over the hive mind? I don't know, something we're going to... What do you guys think is taking over the hive mind? I try, well, we I try not to make it... Obviously some bugs. I have a really good like one. Or whatever. I think I, ha- I might have an idea. Yeah, you had a vision that we don't even know about yet, right? Well... Taking yeah, those mushrooms, having those more. visions. Yeah. Taking those mushrooms. Someone asked, <laughs> how do game devs visions. find us for acting it's work? Legit song. They, we all audition. Hundreds of people audition for every role in Los Angeles, and we all just try. Um, today, I worked on a superhero uh, game, and uh, the guy who was directing me for voiceover said, hey, what's the word you doing for the rest of the day? And I said, well, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go do that. Do you know about that D&D show that a couple of us are doing? He's like, yeah, I heard about that. And uh, the, the guy who had written the game went, yeah, yeah, I've watched every episode. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Watching. Hello. Not. Someone wants to hear Gilmore's voice. I think we should save should that for, let's let's save wait for the game. to actually meet Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, we can't give it away. Yeah, yeah. that was Gilmore's uh, a fun one. Gilmore's awesome. Gilmore is very Broadway. <laughs> he is, he's very uh, not the gargoyle. No, no, I I could, I could see him being a character in a John Waters film. Oh my god, yeah, uh, totally. Yep. Oh my god, give him a pencil thin mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what's. Uh, I know I'm trying to catch up. Greater overall motivations. That Rings. that may or may not be That's secret fair. depending on the character. So, Which uh, is, yeah. what is each person's favorite D and D monster? A dead one. Mm-hmm. A dead one. Yeah. I liked it when Grog got it on with a what was it a nymph? What? In the oh. sky. Yeah. Yeah, you don't sky. know, man. I went through the Grog portal, handled my nymph business like a champ. In the, in, the the in the air. I don't kiss and tell. Nobody knows. I got. Well, what, I got what we were supposed to a get. A nymph came could have out. attacked us, but Grog looked her in the eye and she liked what she Slater saw. With that and then he disappeared gun. for a little while, and then he came back, and he was in a really good mood. So I flashed her the look, man. She was mine. What can I tell you? I like the little green gelatinous cubes. Mm. I think mm. they're fun. And then if Those you make them fun. right, you can just make them out of Jello and eat them when you're done, and that's. <laughs> I don't want to answer that question necessarily because I might be using them in the campaign at some point. <laughs> which one? Uh, nothing. Oh, which one? Um, oh, so but, that means we haven't used them yet. But overall, I I mean, I just I'm love the Jurassic because it's like the game ender. It's the Godzilla. It's the it's the, the one DM's move when he's like, I'm done with this campaign. Hey, guys, you're going to fight a Jurassic. Either you're all going to die or you're going to beat it, and you beat the game. So the Jurassic has always been fun. I've always been fascinated. He's the final and, boss. And fascinated with, with, the, with the mind players. And you're fucking throwing... Yeah, those are cool. An yeah. army of them ass. Yeah. Because they're dangerous. Yeah, they're terrible. And they're so outside of the norm. And hey, you stealthed up and pretty much killed one in one round today. Yeah. That was insane. I always like I, when when the, the, the mud on the face and the stab of the got fucking back of the head. I was like, oh, Black ops that entire spirit. That, that whole thing. I'm proud of the I'm proud of the night. I know, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Grog and Scanlan have no bastard children that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> that you know. Or that you can prove. <laughs> out other stream D and D games like roleplay hosted by Itme JP. No. 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 Maybe we will though. I won't. Everyone play Dungeons and Dragons. My favorite NPC character Sorry. <laughs> is um was a, a little butler who I think became our butler. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's the, the cutest little thing oh, you will right. ever see. Oh, and oh, I think oh, now he works at... Um, oh, he works for us now. Yep. You guys hired him and he's currently helping keep your keep in good What's shape. his name? The old fellow, right? Are you going to pee? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I'll go look at the, look at the list again. Yeah, I have so many NPCs. I, I have a hard time putting them cutest little thing ever did see. But, uh... Uh, Gro- Grog's Flatland Intelligence. Anything like that happened before? Uh, that was the first of that type of situation. Yeah. Um, I went unconscious once because I fell. Well, how far did I fall? Wow, you fell. Oh, that was That's a crazy true. one, too. Yeah, they, they, were, they were fighting in another underground cavern, and at the very, very top of this giant, like, 170 foot ceiling, which they had all kind of floated up to, and uh, I was ready to put a rope anchor in. Toro the bull. 
Yeah, and the first number of Hulk you guys ever encountered ended up pushing Grog out of the hole, yeah, bull rushing him. Person. Had the rope tapped around, tapped around his waist, but unfortunately Grog weighs about 600 pounds. Rope snapped, and he took enough damage to go from full health to unconscious and bleeding out in one round. Because he, like, he confused bad. you, right? And you just, like, Harry carried off yep. the hole. I was going to dodge and be all awesome and then yeah. say, like, Ole or some shit, and then I was just out. Just out. That was when I was a spider tiger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I, I cast spider climb on myself, <laughs> and I was in tiger form, so I was spider climbing all over. And the place. that's also one of my favorite risky rolls, which was after that happened. Yes. Uh, Tiberius, you pushed the Umber Hulk out onto the ground or through the hole. It fell. I had this amazing spell with Pathfinder called uh, Aquasphere, uh, Aquas Orb, and like you can it's like kind of broken. capture like a large creatures. I, I literally can water then like a sphere and then carry this dude and drop them down this. Th it was amazing. I miss it so much. Continue the story. Are we seeing to do this show? So, as, essentially, uh, Tiberius decided because Grog was unconscious and the, the creature was down there, all of them were show. stuck 170 feet up in this little hive, no. essentially. <laughs> Tiberius said, fuck it. He jumped out of the hole, swan dove down, and cast Featherfall on himself the last minute. Had to make a concentration check because all the wind rushing past and having to cast a spell while falling is a very difficult thing. Uh, he had about a 40% uh, chance of success, 60% chance of instant death. And yep. he made the roll. Yeah, I love risking moments like that yeah. so much. I love them. It was pretty. It was pretty legit. Yeah, and I did it again and held that fucker. Oh, that, that was intense. Yeah, it was good. I'm wondering when we're gonna face a beholder. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nasty. That's that's my favorite. <laughs> what are those D and D monster? With, like all the eyes. The eye stalks yeah, and like the, the big eyes. They're like they're like a big floating You'll head see when with you get a there. giant eye, <laughs> and then they've got tentacles with eyes on the end of them, and each eyeball does like a different. Ray of effect. Oh a no! Beholder? Nasty. A beholder. Yeah. yeah, that's bad business. You know what that is too? Yeah. They're nasty. <laughs> bad yeah. news They're bears? super awesome. One of these days we're gonna fight one. Oh, one probably of these days. They're, they're really a bad signature off. character of Dungeons and Dragons. They represent the ending. What made yeah. the dwarves get bigger today in the battle? That's actually an ability of the Duragar. Viagra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they they can summon through uh, through sheer force of will and just the way they've been essentially bred over time. They can. Increase their form for a short time to increase their damage, and uh, be just a general asshole. So, it's an ability the Duragar have. Long lost son. Nope. I'm gonna guess that none of us have been to Sweden. I have. No. I've been. Have been, been My dad was from Sweden. Awesome. That's awesome. I've been. Uh, I've been to Gutberg. That's not surprising. i have not, but I would like to go. You're very yeah, pale and blonde. That makes yeah. sense. What? Pale and blonde. Oh yeah. 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 Have you been? Never been. Okay. It's beautiful. I went to. I, I went. There. I spent two weeks in Gutberg, Sweden, on business years ago. And uh, it was gorgeous. Food was amazing. Nothing like walking down the street and seeing a giant gothic stone structure with an archway and a gargoyle perched, and you walk in and it's a 7 Eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's wow. pretty wow. hilarious. So all the architecture there is old, but it's been repurposed, so it's great. If you had to choose, <laughs> would you pick to receive an extra level or Matt's hair? God damn it. <laughs> Matt's hair! Matt's hair! Matt's hair! Oh, you can't get hair like this without uniforms. Uh, <laughs> nah. Nah. My God. I'm going to shave my head one of these days. Shave his head and he can't out. DM anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd wither. It's like Samson. I would just like, I would, I would like become this little raisin. I'd be David Tennant. The beholder the, strikes for them. Season two. Mo. Mo. End of Mo. 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 <laughs> uh. Let's see. Uh, what next questions we got up there? It is 11.38, by the way. Yeah. What is the most outrageous and unexpected thing to come from a natural 20? That was, that was Scanlan as Probably Burt Reynolds. Probably the... Yeah, yeah Scanlan as Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Mm, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll take about Let's five more five minutes of questions. Five question, yeah. think, So... Uh, about five, ten more minutes of questions and we probably got to take off. How long will you be off. doing this show? Uh, 30 right years. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering we've been playing for two and a half years and everyone's level nine, we can keep going for quite some time. Whether or not we continue past that means either we do a new campaign or we go into like epic or mythic levels. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You know? I mean, I love to keep playing for as long as people want to play, but also people get busy, life changes, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm, I'm in for the long haul as much as everyone else is. Matt, multiple people are asking what the music is that we're hearing on the show. The music you're hearing on the show is a combination of uh, a gentleman named Kevin McLeod, who has a website called in, uh, Incompetech, which he produces really amazing royalty-free musical tracks. I've used them for many web series for many years, and he's very talented. And I contacted him and asked him for permission to use another stream. He's like, yeah, no, anything on Twitch, go for it. Uh, and the other half uh, are a lot of soundscapes I use from a company called Plate Mail Games, which make great custom RPG 
soundscapes and uh, some tracks that are just like creepy and you know, dwarf cityscapes and dark forest tonight. It's, it's a great, great resource. So uh, those are my two big ones for this Twitch stream. We, and yes, we did roll for our starting stats. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, uh, 46 dropped the lowest range as desired. So it was a powerful campaign, but yeah. What was the most nail-biting moment the group has seen? It was Pike's death. Pike yeah. dying. Pike's death, yeah. Pike dying. Um, ever preferred being the DM, or do you like mixing up and being kids? I never get a chance to play games, really. It's kind of one of those always a DM, never a bride. You want to play, <laughs> play with my kid? Yeah. <laughs> want to make an evil character and murder them all? You're going to regret it immediately. Make them just cry. Listen, dude. that's the game! Suck that, it up! Yeah. I'm turning it into mazes and monsters. Is that why you play so much War Machine? Is because for once you don't have to be responsible for... Uh... Probably. Okay. Um, I, I, I occasionally... I got to play a game of Diaspora for a while with Philip Eisner, the guy who wrote Event Horizon. And so playing oh, a, a sci-fi kind of you know, horror-based uh, universe with him running it was great, but that was very brief. Matt, can you give us any teasers of things to come? No. <laughs> you want to we'll see as they happen, man. That's part of the fun, the mystery of it all. I know it's coming. I got stuff planned for years. It's gonna be fun. Do you have any advice to get into voice acting? Uh, uh, learn act, study act. acting, act. go to where the work is, keep act. acting in anything, act. in, in yeah. fucking anything. Act. Stage, especially. Go to where the work is. Act. Oh, and act. Act. Yes. Let's see. Study act. What age did you play your act. first tabletop Study RPG act. game? It was, <laughs> for me, it was second edition of and Dragons, and it was freshman year of high school. Yeah, GURPS 13. Uh, I was uh, yeah, 13 years old, GURPS. Favorite tabletop games? Not D&D? Get Hulk Hogan. Not, that's not D&D? Mansions of Madness. Oh, Mansions of Madness is great. Is is, ma yes. is MTG is Magic the Gathering a tabletop? Is that considered tabletop? Yeah. Clue. It's, it's, a, a, card, it's a card building, like deck building game. M magic. Um, yeah. Uh, War Machine. War, War, War Machine. War Machine's War really Machine. fun. I love I'm War a Machine. Crix player. She's Crix. It's awesome. I'm not off. I'm just uh, starting. I know. You're lost. Retribution. I'm yeah. Circle of Orbis. Yeah, yeah. Words. For my pups. Do you um, guys? <laughs> what's the <laughs> star question? <laughs> <laughs> we play with Scanlan. Of course we do. <laughs> I said, do you ever think about sexuality while playing, besides Grog, of course? I'm like, Scanlan does, yeah, and I'm sure have, other people have. It's hard not to think about it with Sam. You know, yeah, we just pay easy. for it. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to release more background information of your campaign? Yes, actually. You are? We are? I'm, On the it's, wiki? I, time has been, you know, hard, but I'm, I'm trudging through what I'm going to make essentially is a video recap of the previous two and a half years of the oh, campaign. Wow. I'm going to narrate it. What? It's going to be very simple. It's going to be just informational with like maybe occasional slides of stuff in the background, but I'm working on a video kind of like your guys' intros uh, that'll be wow. a synopsis of the story up Whoa. until the stream starts. Animation? So. That's awesome, also, man. I will destroy you. <laughs> I will fucking stab you. If, if you want, it's, it's not much, but I have a Vine account uh, that's under the name Voice of O'Brien, Voice of O'Brien, and I took a lot of Vine videos from our private game, so it's not a yeah. ton, but you'll see us acting like shit stuff. That's yeah. seven, no seconds at seven seconds at a time. Seven seconds at a time, yeah. I think I still have the video of you trying to woo the nymph lady. That Try. was a good video. <laughs> Try. It's basically actually, just you flirting with my boyfriend. I have some video of the tarot, <laughs> the tarot game and a couple uh, others. Yeah. I know, it's like, things. Matt is now a nymph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, sat there and... Go. Hey, man, I've had to flirt with quite a few of these people as characters. It's Here's a good interesting. One. Who's, your favorite, who's your favorite NPC that you've brought to life for us? Oh, yeah. that's a tough one. It's been a lot of good ones. I really enjoyed Grimthorn, the dwarf that was... Okay. Uh, Carota. Is is he yeah, Carota's great. He was the one, that, uh, he was the one, the one-eyed dwarf that was shaved that was getting uh, you guys into the fighting ring. Yeah. He was fun. I'm enjoying uh, Balgus as well. Ball he's, he's a good one. Ball Ball good. Ball sack. Um, Ball sack. I just love dwarves. I, uh... Do we have nicknames for all of our the NPCs? Yep. You know, I really enjoy Arcanist Alora Visorin. So yeah. do I. She's an awesome... Yeah, she's, a she's an awesome, powerful, elven headstrong woman. elven sorceress who is, who, who is part of a, a... Not a secret, but like a very powerful circle of, of magic practitioners around the world, an awesome member of the Council of Tal'Dori. She's a, one of the largest allies that this group has had for a lot of their big adventure arcs, and I love playing her. She's great. Yes. Grog, have you ever thrown a, a gnome as an attack? The very first time we played, I picked up Sam and chucked him across a room that was full yeah. of trap. That's right. And it worked. Oh, God, it was it didn't was actually awesome. What character type would I play if I ever got a chance to play? I would probably be a bard. 
I want to make a bard that actually or like conducts the battle, meaning hmm. like sits there and watches the fight, and you know is conducting. Like music happens when other people attack. Like you know, cymbals go off and drum beats, and all of his abilities are tied to music. So he's actually like conducting the battle like a symphony. That's what I want to make. That's cool. That's badass. One day. <laughs> Would you ever play an evil character? Right. My contingency plan: if I get killed, I don't know about evil, but you won't be as as nice as Max. Is. Evil characters have to be discussed with the DM. I'm iffy on the evil character unless they have a good reason and a personality that isn't going to completely derail the campaign. If you're doing an evil campaign, that's fine. But if you're building a character that is going to inherently be a troll and basically diminish everybody else's good time in the story, it becomes a problem. Yeah. So, but as long it's as you. Internet, though, man. I know. <laughs> if you roll, if, if you make a cool, interesting evil character that can be evil, but still like, like a good example would be in Baldur's Gate, uh, Edwin. Edwin. What, what if one of your guests that came on for one night would they be allowed to be? Yeah, yeah they'd be allowed to. Yeah, because if they fuck may not survive, they might assault them. Tiberius, Tiberius might not like we'll kill them. That. I don't know about I don't know <laughs> about evil, but if I have to come back, I might be a lot more selfish. Oh shit! Ain't it cool? News tabletop columnist offering to DM a game for me. I may have to hit you up on that sometime, because that'd be awesome. He deserves uh, a break. Uh, <laughs> it's not work anymore. I can't I read. I make notes and audio files. I, um, you do? I do. As a reminder, in case I forget. Jarvis. Uh, <laughs> well, I have notes next to every NPC, like an accent or dialect that I chose for them, a general texture, kind of like what you'd see for breakdowns for a character you're auditioning for. Yeah. I basically make that for each NPC to remind me of what I've done. And if it's a particular weird voice that I don't know if I could replicate in the future, after the session I'll go and do a little audio file of me doing the voice so I can go back to it later. You're a freaking nature, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Good question. There's a lot that goes no. into it. I think Matt, just to put it into perspective for everyone in the chat room, I think Matt probably spends close to eight hours at least on, like, each time before we play. Or I guess, well, at least we used to... For, for a big session, I'd spend as much time preparing as we did. Play. I'll put it that way. I spend as much time preparing as we play. So, if, like for these sessions, I'm spending about three hours a week preparing for three to four hours a week, and uh, for old sessions, it was bigger. Someone yeah. asks, "What was the reaction to discovering you had a magic flying carpet?" Which you can see if you go to Matt's YouTube channel. There's oh, a video yes. that yeah. Ashley made of us playing, and you see our reactions. Didn't to that like very yeah. who was no. it? Was it you or or Va uh, was it Vex that tried to float down? With the carpet, and then we realized it was magic. <laughs> yeah, on yes. it but we tried to guys. just use it like a parachute. Yeah, it was a crumbling tower. It was it was Alora's tower. You guys went into realized that mm -hmm. she was missing because the tower had been attacked, <laughs> right. yeah, and right. uh, you set off essentially the defense system of her arcane tower, which caused it to crumble into a tiny pearl. Tiberius jumped out the window and just cast Featherfall. Yeah, and just kind of glided away. You turned into an <laughs> eagle and grabbed the gnomes, the and the rest of the I party the had to try and rapidly Fell. escape a crumbling tower that was compacting onto itself. Yeah. I, I think it was mainly the twins. <sighs> yeah, in the tower. Yeah. Yeah, Grog almost died once. I just bumble for him. No, I, I, yeah, I, I fell from a gray... <laughs> you fall a lot, but when you yeah. fall on something, that, that thing is fucked. Toast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're getting winding down here because we got to leave here shortly, guys. Uh, two more questions. Three more questions. Closing messages before Done. you guys go. Oh yeah, all right. So closing we'll do a couple, couple more questions, and then we'll go to closing questions. Uh, who wants to pick? Who wants to pick? Let's make it a magic three. Let's do a good one. Make it good. Three, good. three questions. Make them quick. Um, do any, uh, let's see. <laughs> no I know you're waiting for a good one. <laughs> How much does Grog weigh? Grog weighs approximately six hundred pounds. Yeah, you decide. Just, just under seven hundred. Yeah. So he's kind of rough. Uh, it's all muscle, bitch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> muscle and brains. <laughs> muscle and wang. Let's see. 500 pounds and 100 pound weight. Are you considering <laughs> running a game for fans of the, of the stream? <laughs> uh, actually, I've run a couple games at conventions for some groups. I had like a couple of uh, sessions I ran, actually in conjunction with Wizards. They sent stuff out for us. And for charity. And for charity, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We've, yeah. we've yeah. done some charity D&D games out here in L.A. Um, so we've done them before. I'd consider it if, if there was time available and a venue that allowed it. So if it does happen, we'll definitely announce it here. Best item in your inventory? That's what magic item is, man. Oh, yeah. do we need to say that? I'm just blanking. No. Um, it's hard to read one. this quickly. <laughs> you guys have some good questions. I'm branching into applesauce. Um, I <laughs> don't, me too. Um... um. Do you realize how lucky you all are to have such a nice group of friends? Yes. yes. Very much so. Yes. 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 
the let's world is cold and unfeeling. Let's close hey. it on yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. I love these aware. guys. And I like, I like to think that, that this is, because there are so many good people out there in the world, and we were lucky enough to find us, us, each other through weird circumstances, and there are so many good people in the world out there. Don't close yourself off to it. You'd be surprised how many <laughs> awesome you can take the woman have. in the back to tie her boot. <laughs> I'm... I'm multitasking. <laughs> no, that's the question we ended on. That's the question we have to end on. I've just been tightening my laces while I've been kicking it back here. Yeah. All right, I'm going right, to so squeeze in here really quick. Get anybody in. And, 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 so, uh, and this. It would be awesome if we had an ad. Okay. Awesome. So I have some thank yous I want to call out while you guys are here. I figured they'd appreciate me calling them out the most while you guys were on screen. Uh, cause they like you guys for some reason. Aww. Aww. So Thanks these are all people that have sent us stuff off Amazon. Oh, to wow. Help make the, to help make the studio better. So oh, my God. Cool. Daniel Denny. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Denny. Danielle. Thank you so much, Daniel. Danielle. Bradley Dewman. D- yeah, what do you, yeah. you know? Dowman. Like, Dowman. Bradley Dowman. Do we know what Dewman? they sent us? Can you tell uh, us some of the things they sent? I have. I. I. Was it matter? Well, I mean, they're like they had. They thing. had. Uh, well, new microphones for that station and lights. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, wow. We controllers. Uh, Brad. I mean, there's stuff all thank over you. the place. It's amazing. Actually, and other so stuff cool. for tech that we needed that we didn't have. Um, wow. Shane M. Russell said, thanks for all your hard work and everything you were doing. Oh, Thank you, Shane. Uh, Ty thanks. Alblinger. Uh, Tyler. Timothy thanks, B. Tom. Hudson. Timothy. Timothy. Timothy B. Hudson. He went nuts. Timothy Whoa. B. Hudson. Timothy! Uh, Triple threat. Cathal T. Just close to an HJ, buddy. Cathal. Cathal. Yeah, that's nice. rad. Louis Ar... Chuleta, Archuleta. Louis Archuleta. Louis Archuleta. Archuleta. Yes. Thank you. Steve Chua. Steve. Uh, here's a little Steve. something to help oh, you guys Steve. out. Thank you so much. Oh, Another Steve. one from Steve Chua. Here's a little something to help you guys out. And I know there's more coming in. This is what we've got so far. Thanks, everybody. Um, That's so cool, guys. Thank you. And they also have asked uh, that a couple of you guys come on Honesty Hour sometime. What is that? Honesty Hour. Um, yeah, it's a like show I do. Like. It's a show I do on Monday nights where it's 100% no holds barred. Uh, I will answer any question that they ask. What? I would wow. love to do that. Okay. What? That sounds totally like a horrifying idea. idea. Okay. <laughs> they've asked specifically for Ashley, they've asked for Matt, they've yes. asked... Actually, I think it, everyone has been asked Monday at one night? point in time. Oh, okay. nope. So I would say, like, okay. maybe I'll have you guys oh, once Wait, when is we'll Honesty Hour? Yeah. It's usually Monday nights from 9 wow. to... Whenever the Phoenix. fuck, yeah, like it went to 1:30 a.m. the other night. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> don't, like, do don't, don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Let's try. Let's. It's only for subscribers. It's not. It's not that bad, because they ask really great questions. A lot of them have been about like how have you gotten through certain aspects of depression or have, what kind of thing you know like. Well, that's good. That uh, one I it's pretty inspiring. How, how many times have you been hitting the nuts in your life? Uh, I could say twice. Twice, two times. And I could tell you, and I would probably explain how it happened yeah. and what I did. Uh, that it's for, just story time. For honesty. Sometimes the questions get a little inappropriate, <laughs> but that's okay. But that's fine. But like for the most part, like the audience here has been so awesome, and yeah. they're all like yeah. super intelligent with great questions. I'd be down. I'd totally be down. Wait, is this non-compliant? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I got the non-compliant tattoo this week, actually. Nice. Yeah, I saw your picture. That's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Hey! We have a comic book show on Tuesdays. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Real talk with Zach. But thank you guys so much for doing this. Yeah, uh, the subscribers really wanted to do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. Yeah. And we will, uh, you know, come back next. Yeah. Yeah! Right next week. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 Tomorrow, if you guys are at WonderCon, are any of you guys going to be at WonderCon? Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. I'll be there Anybody Saturday. Saturday? I'm sadly not going to be there. I will be there tomorrow from 12.30 to 1 for a meet and greet, which I'm going to pretend is an autograph signing, and I'm going to bring my own pictures. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! We're going to have fun with it. So uh, going in costume. Beck and I are going in costume, and then Hector and Ify will be at 4.00. And then Hector and if you're doing a Q and A or no a trivia game that night on the stage for Geek and Sundry and stuff like that, so Geek and Sundry will be there. You guys should stop yeah. by. Thanks for all those greater than threes, guys. Yeah, that's, that's less, than, less, than less than three. You're greater than, less than three, three too. Less than, or three. You're less than three. The computer, the story behind that is during the charity drive. 
we had a robot read off all the donation messages. Less than three. And the robot three. would say, and less when they made a heart, three. it would say, we, you know, less than three. It's so beautiful. So we turned that into we a thing. less than three, you. <laughs> wow, that fucks me up every time you do that. Cool. I forgot Thanks, guys. <laughs> I forgot you you offline. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs>